oranges. Oh shit, let me turn off my light. Alright guys, I am back. I was getting Comcasted earlier. If it ever gets to the point where I'm dropping ten times more frames than I'm encoding, I will probably just kill the stream and come uh, back at the earliest availability. We are gonna see it this game. I like this. Orange I like this. Why do I? So good, so good when they have a jungler, and they're gonna have it here. Invoker's gonna be. Oh up. shit! I love how Why am I hearing the game? Why am I hearing the commentators and shit? They take it away from LG. Is it for me? They're like, yeah, is it my? Is it bleeding through my headset? Last game, so let's make it ourselves. Is it me? Let me see if I mute Skype if it solves it. We're gonna see it from one of them. Yeah, telekinesis can set up zone strikes if you want to go in that direction. With the Chaos Knight and Lashrak picked up, they could run a very powerful dual lane mid. They could even look to try late. From LGD occasionally, it's in Dota. they will run offensive tri lanes and look to dive heroes like it's in Shakers, Dota. A squishy Rubik. Look at our design. But I don't They're have on very squishy. the audio channel. I think oh, I we do, talked I about guess. Earthshaker or earlier do I? today. I think he might be a. Okay, there we go. Problem solved. But yeah, what I think I'm gonna do is um, I'm not gonna go in a super like professional try to cast it. I'll treat it more like a viewing party, which is how I watch a lot of the tournaments, where I just kind of casually comment on stuff as it happens. Um, are you still alive, Rodney? Uh, am I still alive or what? Awake, alive. Yeah, he's alive. Yeah, I ish. Okay. I mean, I'm gonna pass out soon, but I'll be. I'll offer a, a little tidbit every now and then. Oranges yeah. Turn to ban. Okay. <sighs> like, cause I definitely need sleep to be able to wake up in time for oh, yeah. the the cast. Yeah. Yep. All right. So yeah. this is actually. I mean, I... Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. No, no. If I sleep like right now, I can get eight hours. But go sleep then. Go sleep. Uh, go to sleep. You have to stay up gone. like thirteen or fourteen. Keep the ball rolling, bro. Go to sleep. I'm 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 gonna sleep to this game. Like I'll I'll fall asleep, I'll fall asleep to the game if I, if I watch a game. <laughs> no, no, I'll fall, I'll fall asleep quicker if I watch a game. Go well, listen to. Unfortunately, cast. unfortunately for Rodney over here, it looks like there is a morphling with strike chaos Saints. It's gonna be probably pretty high action from LGD. So it's gonna be. Yo, Ian, how do you think are they gonna run the lanes with um, more? Last I don't end. think they've really committed to anything completely yet, but I get the feeling that it's going to be like a supporty Lashrak. Um, he'll probably be around the Chaos Knight. A lot of people see like the Chaos Knight Lina, Chaos Knight AA, Chaos Knight etc etc strategies, but Chaos Knight synergizes really well with Lashrak, surprisingly. Because it lines up his... Synergizes with anybody that Yeah, he synergizes with a lot of things, really. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say that they aren't really committed to anything yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if they went like Morphling mid against Invoker. It's a pretty nice matchup. Um, Depending on what the invoker does, um, the the Chinese, let's try to avoid using racial slurs like gook, uh, they like to do their quas wex invokers, and I think that they're going to pick... Represent, bro. Rep fucking zen. <laughs> they pick up a Queen of Pain, and I don't know if they're going to offlane that. It's a it's a possibility, because Queen of Pain crushes a lot of 1v1s offlane. Like, if they stick a Beastmaster up against a Queen of Pain, Beastmaster's going to be in Frown Town Central. But they're obviously looking to try lane if they picked up a Beastmaster. They could maybe go for... I have a feeling we're going to see more fling mid. I do too. I think it'll be more fling mid versus a queen or versus an Invoker with an offlane Queen of Pain. And then they'll probably pick up something to go with the Rubik Enchantress. What if they put Invoker on the side lane and they get a, uh, and they get a hard carry for uh, the short lane? They could go that route, but... Windrunner at oh, your they pick a Windrunner. Or not. They, uh, Windrunner can do a lot of different things, though. Like, the way that Orange has done this is not as overt. Disruptor. Like, they could lane this a handful, but Disruptor pick up. Oh, God. So it'll probably be a Disruptor, Lashrak, Chaos Knight. I have no idea how strong that tri lane is, actually. I have a feeling Orange is uh, betting on the early game, and... Uh... LGD is just going for the late game setup. Well, the like thing with CK Orange, though, is that they scale really well, too. Like, Invoker obviously just... He, he, he scales relatively well, and um, obviously when BKBs come out, it kind of sucks, but at the same time, he's not a hero that gets crushed by BKBs because he does a lot of things. Um, Queen of Pain, obviously, very, very strong hero for the early game, mid game, even late game if you can farm up a Sheep. Windrunner obviously scales well, and, and as a support, Rubik is just very, very powerful throughout the entire game. Uh, but the thing is, LGD's late game is also really good. They have Chaos Knight, a very strong and balanced hero, along with Morphling, very strong and balanced. The Shrak is long, black, and strong. He's pretty good. Um, Disruptor, I don't see enough really, but they do a lot of a lot of people do like these wombo combo disruptor strategies. But I I don't know how effective Example, it is. Example: Cole. Yeah, Cole. Like when they get like a Naga or something, they always try to just wombo combo. And we're just gonna use Cole. Luminous's camera because I'm lazy. Prepare for battle. And, uh, that way Holy I shit, can't be pinned that's for a lot of... 
Yeah, pulling the regen is really sick on Morphling, I didn't know. Yeah, that's um, almost everyone when they stick a Morphling mid these days, specifically, they pull regen on them. Um, this game, we'll see if he goes mid, but it's because if you mor if you pull regen and you morph down, you're by far the most, like, you're strong throughout the entire game. Because one of the things that happens when, you, when you're when you playing a morph down Morphling is in a lot of matchups, god, there's so many branches you could build, like, a house with them, but, uh, if you, if you pull the regen and he starts the Wraith Band, you're literally never weak. Morphling's starting base damage is actually not that phenomenal. If you look right now, he has, what, plus 6, plus 3, plus 9, 10, 11. And that's with Morph Down. And his base damage is, like, still, you know, meh. But now he hits for 69 fucking damage because they've pulled on him and he's Morph Down. But this means that they're not going to stick an offlane Morphling. They're going to try lane with the Morphling, maybe? Stick Beastmaster bottom. No, they're gonna they're gonna go mid with the morphling. This is what I thought they were gonna do. I thought it was gonna be morphling against an invoker, but it's gonna be morphling on Quap for sure. I think we can see a smoke on the enchanter, so they're definitely playing, uh, planning on playing really aggressively. A lot on of the enchantresses and chens just start with the smoke too, just because they're like unaccounted for. League of Legends strategies, etc. Best strategies. So double damage for the cast knight. I like cast knight's item build. Uh, I sometimes go for this if I don't want to go for an urn. Also, he's going to be up against uh, a lane where he's going to get harassed a bit by the Windrunner and the Rubik. So this is pretty smart. I'm actually a bigger fan of... Well, both teams have laned this relatively well. Uh, the offlane on bottom is going to suck massive dicks for the Beastmaster. Uh, well, it won't suck that bad. It's just going to be... Uh, it's. I think it's slightly favored for... The Invoker, obviously. Like, I would always rather be the Invoker than the Beastmaster. But I've seen that go a number of ways. I've seen the Beastmaster get nothing. I've also seen the Beastmaster get relatively good fun, depending on the game and the players and how much Enchantress has a presence. It looks like Enchantress dominates a creep really early and just beelines the lane, though, so... It looks like CK is going to get free farm. Yeah, it should be a free farm CK, or relatively so. It's, he's going to be a little bit contested, but not so much so that it's going to significantly slow him down. It's just going to hurt him ever so slightly. I would bet on him not missing 10 last hits. Yeah. Like, that lane is so good. Look, like, uh, Windrunner and Rubik can do anything in that lane. Like, oh, yeah. absolutely. Look at them. See, he missed one. Fucking batty. What a noob. And this is something I almost never see. Um, I want to... I actually want to ask someone if this is good or bad, but... Ring of, a ki or Ring of Basilius on Invoker. That's, yeah, that's kill one's not bad. But one of the I've reasons, never seen it before. I've never seen that before either. But one of the reasons I'm assuming that he's doing this is because, uh, like, Chinese teams and a lot of teams seem this one. But Chinese teams and, and American teams and European teams, they all really value the Ring of Basilius in push lineups. This is probably, maybe he wants to, like, uh, do stuff with Enchantress to Towers, maybe? I don't know. But overall, I, I, have, uh, I honestly think that any team needs, like, a Ring of Basilius. Like, a lot of people yes, undervalue exactly. it. exactly. And then there's no and other one who's going to, there's no other person who's who, going to pick who it Who can up. get it and have it like use at best it be maybe it would be like a windrunner or enchantress who aren't going to want to pick that up because they're not going to have the money so i guess this makes sense this will help them at any rate that's the other team i mean the additional armor that he has is going to be really nice as well as the minor mana regeneration he's pretty much crushing the beastmaster so far beastmaster is keeping up somewhat well in terms of last hits but if he's like he's like almost out of regen we'll see I'm if he decides really to really happy before. go ahead I'm 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 really happy that I'm seeing more and more QW invokers. Well, this is the uh, in this Chinese tournament. Do. Like they they only do this. Like I've actually I, never I really seen like a Chinese this, go cause... Exhort. I've never seen it. Why aren't you playing uh, Exhort, Dahlia? Why can't you play it? Why can't I play it? Yeah. Oh, I learned it at a time when QW was the most popular build, and that's how I learned it. No, no, no. I mean, why seen. aren't you playing Exhort? What do you mean? You oh, this might be bad sword. for me. No, he's... Because I'm bad at it? Well, <laughs> it requires too much coordination yet? from teammates, and I also need voice chat to yeah, make some strikes happen. to make it work, yeah. Oh, or, or like, pinging. But Morse code... Oh, also, it's, it's a lot easier to die. Um, yeah, it is. You don't have as nearly as much life, you can't oh. go invisible. You can't tornado. Yeah, it, you can't. It's like, it's, it's life, tornado, no early access to Ghost Oh shit, Lock. we're gonna see and a Beastmaster get first blood. Oh, this is where he yeah, gets the clap. Bam, that's a clap, clap, clap. And Invoker's- Oh! <laughs> Enchantress will have to get it now. Yeah. 
That missed tornado didn't obviously fuck up the kill, but it fucks up his ability to get first blood. I still think his decision making there was fine. The Beastmaster was fogged, and he threw the tornado up for a very specific reason. If Beastmaster decides he wants to go up, then uh, he has the ability to like get back into the lane. He can cut the tree if he has the ability to do so. He didn't have a tango there, but if he did, he could cut that tree and run out. So basically, Beastmaster has two options. He either runs up or he runs down. And if you, if you throw the tornado down and he goes up, you're like shit out of luck. If you, th if you throw the tornado up and he goes down, it's fine. You're still going to kill him. So I think that was still good decision making from Invoker. And we'll see if Mushi wants to bust out his famous Ethereal Blade Queen of Pain. What the fuck? I, I've never seen that done before. But I don't know. Oh, is, are they going to stack? No, they're not stacking the Ancients. He's not stacking with his boar. I don't know why the Chinese don't do that. Like, this isn't the first time I've seen this, where they just don't stack with their boar. Methinks you wanted that. Ah, oh, miss. Done from the track. I consider boar stacking to be so critical. But so far, it looks like, um... Morphling is crushing mid. For the fact that he has 86 damage, whereas Queen of Pain has... 69! In fact, Queen of Pain has... Well, she's obviously crowing a bottle right now. Probably has brown boots in the courier, too. Oh, no, she's going for a Null Talisman. This is smart. I like it. I think she is somewhat forced into the Null Talisman, just based on the fact that she needs to not be outclassed in base damage by, like, 20. And this is the thing. Morph down Morphlings, when you pull, when you pull supplies, are just so, so strong. This is cute with Enchantress. Oh, I like this build. I like this guy's build. I've never done it before on Disruptor, but it, it makes sense. 1-1-1 one, one, one on Disruptor. Uh, I'd say that would probably be the best way to go about it. I also yeah, like those, how... the spells are too good. Um, we'll see what he does. I, I'm gonna see if he maxes his glimpse first. I feel like glimpse just gets exponentially better between levels one and two, but then it sort of drops off a little bit. At least that's how I feel. Just because the difference between 600 range and 1,000 range is highly pronounced. Whereas I feel like kinetic field is much better on a disruptor. The four second sting where he logs them off, that's too good. Uh, I guess. I mean, that's usually what you pick him for, though. Is just, you know obviously his. Connect field ult combo, but I don't know. I feel like skilling disruptor haste. can depend a bit on the game. Radiance middle that is a haste is pickup. Ooh, it's just, no, he's not gonna go on it. And what Morphling does here, he's out of mana, so he just replicates Queen of Pain, goes back to the well, finishes a killer, gets a TP, or buys another TP rather, but then just reoccupies his illusion, so he's back to full. And this is like one of the hardest things to play against, but usually I don't see the Morphlings at their ultimates level 6. He's doing it for a very specific reason, it's not bad at all. He also probably realizes the enemies aren't going to try to kill him. And as I say this, Rubik meanders down to potentially try to kill him. But it's going to be hard, it's going to be really hard for them to try to kill a Morphling. I think he only warded. Oh, he's just That's counter warding, it. doing a little bit of counter warding. Oh, Chaos Knight tries to throw down on... Went under, but gets pulled out of range. So Chaos Knight doesn't have absolute free farm, like I thought he would, or like he might rather. I actually said. That I he think would. he's been messing up last heads. Like well, that sometimes, lane. like sometimes, like like this isn't a lane that's completely free, because he's up against two six hundred range uh, supports. Not really Are supports, we, but uh, no, this should be this should be a kill. Oh one, yeah, no, one! No, no. Oh, he got. Fucked. Oh my god, they fucked up. Oh no, no, he didn't fuck. He didn't fuck up. He just got fucked. Like on a scale of one to four, that stun was a one. No, 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 no. I mean on uh, the Lashak stun, they didn't have communication. Like that was so bad. The Lashak stun, like yeah. completely. Uh, uh, Zao8 is uh, making some Nikes. <laughs> Steam boots? <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, no, that's not what they were. What were they called in Han? The, the Zoom boots? Uh, they were called Steam boots, then Marchers, then, or no, then Ghost Marchers, then Marchers, and then there were Steam boots that were the treads. Oh, what were, well, no, no, the, the Zoom boots. What were they called? The one that, the Han only ones. Ghost Marchers, Marchers, the face. Oh, the, you mean the fucking Striders? The speed points. Striders. Striders, there we go, yeah. Run fast Striders. boots. I thought that's what you meant. So why did I pause? Lag spike 10 seconds is translation. There's a lag spike. But they're going to be resuming right away. Um, so yeah, someone in chat pointed out that the Lashrak has picked up a couple of the last hits, as has the Disruptor. 
I would imagine that a, a handful of those, though, have just been from the pull. It's not really like them splitting farm. I actually would imagine almost all of them are from the pulls. But worth noting is that the Windrunner is still getting adequate experience, and the Rubik isn't getting fucked that hard. He's getting a little bit fucked. He's probably going to check for top rune here. And they've stacked two heroes? No, not two heroes. It was just uh, Morphling trying to replicate Queen Pain, not quite working out. He blinked in just to kill that. Oh, he's checking for top rune, but little does he know there's a Rubik there. Rubik's going to kill it? No, Rubik didn't kill it! He got greedy, trying to take it. Huh. That's why he used telekinesis. Also, he came into line of sight just like within 200 range of the rune. That's just another thing. And still, Beastmaster's not stacking up these Ancients. He has his roar though, he needs to look for a roar. But he's gonna get destroyed by Enchantress here, if he's not cautious. And it looks like he's not being uh, cautious so, enough. Aww. He's trying to do his roar. He's trying to. They can all see it. And he decides that he's dead anyway, so doesn't his roar. And that is an unfortunate spot to be. However, he's picked up adequate experience in a couple of last hits in this lane, so he's, he's probably pretty happy. As expected, though, Winter is trashing it, and this is where that ring of Vasilis comes into play. I was just about to say, uh, Beastmaster surprisingly, surprisingly got 17 CS, but then I realized he died twice, giving first blood in this kill right here. Yeah, so that he died for those. Looks like Disruptor's going for the max glimpse, and this is really, this is really fucking annoying as a trialing to play against. Because it means that you have to constantly be aware of like where you were six seconds ago. So like if you're standing here and your creep wave is about to die, you can't just back away. Because an 1800 range glimpse is enough to fuck you pretty badly. They may even be able to get a kill here if they wanted to. And like they're fishing for it. Oh no, he decided not to. Oh, Invoker TPs! He gets two people! He gets two with the Tornado EMP! Oh, the EMP hits three! Oh no, this this isn't the fight they want. Oh man, that is a lot of TPs and not a lot of mana for the Dire. And Lashrak, no! Nice. He actually picked the kill up. He's taking is he gonna pick two? No, he's not gonna get two. He was, he uh, was running that way so that everyone else could get away though. He was taking the bullet. And he picked the kill. Like, Chaos Knight picks up a bottle. Bad. Um, I'm not explicitly against the bottle line. Oh! Oh, Morphling, bit of a miscalculation, just short of the mana that he needed to actually get that kill. But I'm not I'm not too against the bottle on CK. I actually do it sometimes, mostly if I'm in this exact situation where I'm in a really, really aggressive ground. But I, again, oh, I wow, they they glimpsed the uh, Invoker back. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah, they didn't realize that either. But he got his yeah, thing like, off. Yeah, I was like, wait, where's the Invoker in that fight? Yeah, he got his thing off. It was like, oh, you should only like, follow up with you know near max movement speed Invoker with Cold oh. Snap and, like, oh. dead. But that that glimpse was really good from the disruptor. Like it could have gone way worse, I think. Yeah, that was pretty well played. Radiant structures are fortified. Mm, Beastmaster's build is not bad at all. Um, I'm I'm actually interested in seeing. Like I I actually don't see this though ever, where someone opts to um to get three points in their call of the wild without either getting a point inner beast or max inner axes. Now he gets the point inner beast as I say it. One point inner beast is just so good. It gets you 18 attack speed at level one. Obviously he doesn't want that when he's in a lane like this. Unless you're in like the middle lane. Because it pushes out the lane, which can be desirable in mid lane, so you can check for runes and such. But in an off lane it can fuck him over kind of hard. Last thing he wants to do is be fighting an invoker at his tower. Both teams have some pretty aggressive lane wards up. Denied. This Chaos Knight has to be pretty scary. Now the fact that they have a Morphling means that Chaos Knight is probably just going to be looking to bam bam on people all game, as opposed to just uh, farm in the mid game, whereas Silar on the Morphling will probably look to farm. This is the item build you almost always see when people are going for an F blade. so I'm going to assume that Silar is going to go for F blade. However, he is Chinese. Um, Chinese, not big fans of their F blades. they'd rather rice up. Well, we can probably see a uh, Lincolns as well. Oh, Bushi. Oh my god, that's so lucky. Mm, yeah, she's making a big play for the thing. She might have died, but... Radiance middle tower is under attack. And this is this has to be kind of annoying. Without any vision, they know that there's a Queen of Pain that has an invis. And they know Queen of Pain has an ult, and they know she has that combo. And that combo can just erase everyone if they miss position, and... Oh, they dust! They dust for it! Oh, that was smart. That was a, that was a good kind of bait. 
but it just so happened the Queen of Pain was standing in a good position. And that completely eliminates the usefulness of her, because it looks like Beastmaster uses Nature Aurora to kill him. Yeah. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. The two teams Radiant's I see that do go Athlet on Morph are DK and LGD. I'm um, Zenith does sometimes, but most Chinese Dyer's teams just don't. Like, the Chinese have specific ways of playing heroes. Like, they play Chaos Knight as, like, a ganky hero, sometimes it's a little bit supporty. Oh, he had enough mana for a uh, surge after he wanted, but opted not to. Oh, oh, barely! Barely 59 HP. Just barely. I played pubs with that invoker. <laughs> Man, that has to that has to really suck. He just like I was wondering if he was just going to like save his wand charges or if he was gonna if it, what he was gonna do there. And he wanted, but like right before getting EMP'd. It was like the worst time to have wanted. So he wanted and instantly lost all of the mana that he got from it. And that that just sucks. Shit sucks, bro. Disruptor is going for that urn. This is really smart. He opts to finish his wand first. Is he gonna throw him onto the high ground? No. Why didn't he do it? Chinese don't like doing it. I don't know. <laughs> like, but this is the second fucking, time I see it. Fucking Chinese Dota. There was no reason to do it. There was a centaur there. Yeah, but it would have been extra style. What is he points. gonna do? What? Yeah, nah, no, he could have actually got in a way. No, no, he, Doibs, do you understand? You throw, you th Doibs, you look, Doibs, you throw him onto the high ground where you how, don't have- How, how, how do you get him away when he has a TP and you throw him up to a hill? Doibs. I don't know. Doibs. He would have died to the Impetus, like, instantly. No, oh. Doibs, Doibs, you throw him on the high I'm ground, you throw him on the high ground where you don't have line of sight on him, and he has the high I'm ground no advantage. Holy shit, Max Glance. No, but you do have the line of sight because you're on the high ground as well as the Enchantress. Yeah, if they, weren't, they weren't off the high ground, they'd have to walk up. Angle it, then find it. Enchantress them. was on the high ground. Yeah, I'm gonna take the middle he ground wasn't. and say that he would have died either either way, throwing him on or not. Yeah, that's. It was, it was a hundred percent chance for him not. It was a hundred percent chance for him to die if they didn't. But it wasn't a hundred percent chance. He so possibly could have gotten. I think he would have died either way, one hundred percent. Hey. Yeah, but if can he, he would have thrown him, him on the high ground, ground, that would have been styling. Like, yeah, it would have been extra style points. So I would have yeah, probably gone pendant. You know, I'm gonna, buy, I'm, gonna buy a pendant. I'm gonna buy a pendant for the first team that throws someone on the high ground as a Rubik. You're gonna do what? No, actually I won't. I don't want to commit to that. Let's see if Morphling decides to pick up his Ghost Scepter. Now, I've seen a lot of super early Ethblades. Like, when Barney goes for his Ethblade, he gets it real early because he's a good player. But uh, this Styler guy is probably just not on my level. Hey, uh, can we talk? Oh. Can we talk about this disruptor scope? Yeah, sure. Luminous so, so he o he opted for the max glimpse first, yeah. which I don't usually see, but I think it's a really great choice, especially in this um, against their heroes. Like a lot of them are really good escape artists. You got Invoker max speed. You got Windworm. You got Queen of Pain, and uh, like that that max glimpse really made the difference to grab that quad back in for that kill. Yes, yeah. so and on top weird. lane, they got the Windrunner just because of that glimpse. You know, I've seen it done this way a couple of times, but one of the ways that I like seeing it done is like the two to three points glimpse, usually just two. But I can see why he did it this game, because obviously that really shuts down a lot of escape Dyer's mechanisms of the enemy team has. Yeah, dude. Yeah, like, that invoker still has to be afraid. Like, usually, when I'm on invoker, cross wicks, face boot, um, force staff, I'm pretty much safe against, like, pretty much almost anything. But that glimpse, man, like, even if I force staff, even if I run like a hyena, that, that shit's gonna get me, man. I think every fight's gonna be like a 4v5 from now on, just because of, uh... The they disruptor. smoke up here, they smoke up, do they have a roar? Oh, they have a roar, this is gonna be a dangerous smoke, and they're gonna get a pick from this. I'm willing to bat that invoker. And that is a dead invoker. I, yeah, that's... And, oh, we're on TPs, but it's a bit dangerous. And someone just got someone sent back. Yeah, that was when I just got sent back. All of a sudden, this becomes very awkward for Queen of Pain. She picks up the Beastmaster, but she's gonna die for it. And Enchantress may go down. She might get away though. I think she's gonna go away. Where's strong. Is the Shuffler gonna die? Oh yeah. All right, the Shuffler is fucked. The Imp penis hit him for 177 fear. Ooh, are they gonna get the Morphling? Now, Morphling is pretty hard to bring down, but they probably would. No, he has a wand! He has a wand! 
He's gonna use it. No, he's not gonna use it. He doesn't need to. Morphling, very hard. You have here to chance come. to miss with Impetus on the hub. If you throw on the high ground, I didn't know that. Beastmaster now has his greater bore. And a bit of a whiff on the tornado EMP. The tornado has to actually hit someone. Invoker may was may as well have just EMP'd himself. He's doing the scale build that pretty much everyone does when they do this, where they get three points into quads and then they just go into Wex. It's pretty hard uh, to push. How many gears do you have then? 192. Big money. Mm -hmm. Big, big Twitch money. And some action on top, but no kill. And more Barney, you play more a lot. He decides not to go for the Lincolns. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. Um. When you go for uh, a Neth Blade, do you always go like Ghost Scepter first or Eagle Song? Because I've seen uh, morphs go for either Eagle Song or uh, Ghost. You're supposed to go Ghost first. I it gives you like the stats ghost. is really good. Yeah, because it gives you what, like, plus really good it gives you like plus seven to all stats. So if you were to morph that all into mm -hmm. agility, it could be like getting a fourteen agility item. Whereas the Eagle Song is twenty five, but farming up to an individual is kind of hard. You also get a pretty good amount of utility from the Ghost Scepter. Like if everyone blows all their spells on you. Which a lot of people will do since you can just morph up and they, you know, they they try to kill you before. Um, if they blow up their spells on you, then you can just go up there and try to morph up. So it is that a, makes a lot of sense. I even I forgot that uh, go up to give six stats or seven stats. No, uh, that's kind of that glimpse is doing a morph. That one. glimpse is apps. That was like a very very good counter pick to the lineup. I didn't even consider how good that was against all of the enemy heroes. And what does Rubik have? Rubik has, is a great hero. Rubik has Chaos Ball. He's doing the build that you see sometimes, um, where he decides to just get one point in his telekinesis and then max out his null field. Which I think is a pretty decent build. Because a lot of the time when he's telekinesising, uh, it's not going to matter whether or not he gets like an extra, you know, three quarters Dyer's of a second. Bottom tower is under attack. More planes just going to farm up. You know, I really didn't think he was going to go to the Lincolns this game. I really didn't. I guess one of the nice things about I going, the item, going one of the item builds, that, or the item build that he went, uh, is that you don't actually commit too hard to anything if you're going for this build and you're thinking about the Ghost Scepter. But this means that they're going to take a, or they're going to try to take probably a pretty long game. Um, but it makes so much sense. Like, there is a Rubik with the Lickneses. There is a Windrunner with Shackle Shot. There is Impetus. I, I mean. The Lincoln Sphere is a great pack for this game. This is a solid item in general. I'm actually very surprised that the Disruptor has opted to finish his Arcanes before his Urn, and there's his Urn. So, uh, I'm a big fan of just getting that Urn up ASAP on some hero. Urn is such a critical item, and Chaos Knight's going to be going for that BKB. He has his drums, he has his wand. Mm, Chaos Knight Illusion from Morphling is going to get sent. Oh, oh, sad Morphling just got picked off bottom. <laughs> I was watching the illusion. It was pretty cool. Watch Luminous. He's doing a great job. Inside of him. And this fight should be going in the favor of Dyer heavily. The glimpse may have actually helped the Queen of Pain there. I'm pretty sure she was going to get away either way. Oh! No, she'll, she'll just make into more trees. She's fine. And Rubik with Wild Axe. Surprisingly, I've never seen this, but. I guess that's because I don't watch enough games. Rubik has stolen Strength Morph. So how's, how's the gold graph? How's the gold graph? That is a very good question. It looks like it's been fairly back and forth until very recently in which the Dyer's pulled ahead. In terms of experience, it still can go either way. It's actually a relatively close game overall at the moment. And they got the EMP off on the Morphling. That'll probably be enough to force him to get Arcane. Maybe he'll opt to go back soon. Mm, no, he has a bottle and Perseverance. Point of Pain has a robe of the Magi, so maybe she's going to be looking for an Oblivion Staff into an Orchid, or uh, she could do a couple of things. <laughs> robe of the Magi has like eight items. Like, you can build it up with like eight items. <sighs> I'm thinking he's going. Uh, actually, it could be a Veil or it could be an Orchid, I don't know. Yeah, uh... Veil would be interesting to see. I don't think... Eh? Yeah, he's going for the Orchid. I figured it would be the Orchid. Mm. But still... 
I usually don't really see attack. Treads Orchid that often on Club. So what are they? What, yeah. what the fuck are they doing with Roshan? <laughs> it's more of a Storm Spirit build, but it can be used as an alternative to Sheep if you're lacking DPS. It's fairly decent against Orchid. Which they are. Too. Which they are because they don't have any like right-click carries except for like Co-op-ish, but only if she builds DPS and. I guess like Orchid's like kind of like her midway between sheep and a DPS item, you know? Yeah, especially That's... in the mid game because I mean, I guess as the game goes on, they get more items. Queen of Pain, Windrunner, and Chantress, and Invoke can kind of right click, but right now. Oh, oh they shit. find him! They catch him with their pants out the Rosh pit! Those are really well placed oh, against nearly everyone. That's this, fight, this fight is in the Radiance hands right now. Dyer's gonna try to back off, they're gonna get picks. Is he gonna glimpse? Oh! Warfling comes in, but oh, he's not strong enough! Oh, this was a big fuck up, huge miscommunication. Almost a complete team wipe. Chaos Knight's the only one who makes it out. God and, damn. Out and all of a sudden, they were just delivered a low HP Roche. And this has all of a sudden just become absolutely awful for the Dire. That was a huge, huge, huge team fight. Oh my god, they're gonna get a tier 1 too. Is this gonna be 15 1 for LGD? Is this gonna be their first game that they lost? Uh oh. Yeah, that one fight, wow. And that gold, that golden experience graph just shot graph, yeah. up. Complete straight shot up. Are they gonna take T2 as well? Oh, oh. I, uh, uh. It's tough to say. I think that it may be, it may be intelligent. If they engage off. here, they might uh, lose because they don't have more, so... Well, they still have that roar, and Beastmaster does his mech now. And the Shrapter's there. Yeah, they decided to disengage. I'd be surprised if Beastmaster didn't pick up a mana boot. Right after that mech. I feel yeah. like he doesn't have the mana to support it, plus they're against a QW invoker, and that'll really help. I feel like if you're going Weep. for the mech into Pyth or something on uh, Beastmaster, you almost have to get mana boots because, I mean, you throw your axes, you shoot a roar, and you pop your mech, and bam, you're no mana. It's your entire mana pool. He, he's pretty much guaranteed to get mana boots. Like, and if he gets, I, if I would he gets CMP'd, multiple mana he, he can't do anything. There you have the mana boots up on uh, Disruptor. Uh, Lesh actually picks up a medallion. Not something yeah. I see every day on Yeah, he used it on uh, Rush like four times. I tried mentioning it, but you were talking. Haha. Uh -huh. Well, that may have been he why they decided to go for and... oh, yeah. and As funny as this, I'm pretty sure Disruptor has more experience than Chaos Knight. Yeah, he's out leveling them. Someone points out in chat. Radiant structures are fortified. That was a good pickoff, but it might cost more than his life. I think he'll... No, he's fucked. Oh, he barely walks away! That is huge. He also had a replica. Oh, it's a roar. But is Morph gonna get picked off here? Oh, Queen of Pain? Oh, not quite enough. Oh, she uses the ult yes. and it barely picks him off. He's dead. I, I think Enchantress is gonna get away from this. And this seems like it just went the Radiance favor once again. CK's gonna die again. Oh, wow. Looks like it's a complete wipe. I do wow. That is a reality rip, Rubik. Did Rubik buy back? Rubik bought back, this right? Is... I think he did. This is the second looks... triple kill for uh, Queen of Pain. Yeah, he did wow. pick, uh, he did buy back. He got picked off at the start. And that is a gem now for Windrunner. She probably had that that last fight. And Queen of Pain with her completed Orchid and an Aegis and 1700 gold in the bank. And this game feels like it was completely... 2000 gold. Not necessarily thrown, but they fucked up heavily. I mean, looking at the gold graph that Luminous just brought up, it looks like within a span of about a minute, it shot 4k <laughs> from the dire to the radiant, but it's still anyone's game. LGD fucked up really bad at that Roshan, pulling him out at first, not knowing what to do. They they weren't certain if they're gonna go for it or not. They pulled him out. Yeah. Uh, the word spotted that, and then they just all died at the Roshan. That was a really really bad fight. For now them. this Enchantress is getting she's 200 gold off of her axe. Once she gets that, she can actually right click for a significant amount of damage, and then all of a sudden you go from having no right click. To having an Enchantress of the Nags, a Queen of Pain with an Orchid, and a Windrunner, presumably building towards Force Staff, with an Invoker who is uh, not too close to his sheep, but he'll get it eventually. Unless he has it on the Quarry or something, which I don't think he does. Morphling's uh, still farming really, really well. Yeah, but he has I like the beginning of the tournament. So? I like the beginning of the tournament, nobody actually supported LGD. I remember their first game, they had like. 
a hundred. Uh, Under a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Oh. No, no, I know. Top and then top everybody top bought fallen. the Fennec. Yeah. Got it. You gotta follow the bandwagon, dog. Ready goes for an aggressive smoke. I assume that Enchantress just delivered Axe, and she did. And oh man, this is a fucked chaos night. Oh, chaos night. I hope you're ready to get dicked, son. Use your penis, you dumb whore. Ooh, he pops his ultimate. Are they just gonna back off? Okay. It was a smoke for They're a chaos knight. It's a smoke for a chaos knight. Well, look at that. Smoke for a chaos knight ultimate, though. That's actually fair. I mean, that ultimate has a pretty fucking long cooldown. 140 seconds. Chaos knight still 1600 off that BKB. Smoke's 12 minutes, though. This is true. But hey, man. It wasn't worth it. Well, what's gonna happen if the game goes on for like 20 more minutes? Mm -hmm. LGD is just gonna stomp. What's LG, once LGG gets BKB on the Chaos Knight, it's, it's gonna be really bad for Orange, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if they got a BKB up on Morphling soon, too. Just because uh, the rating team gets cock blocked like, pretty hard by BKBs. <laughs> Heroes like Rubik, Queen of Pain, Invoker, uh, Windrunner even. And, and <laughs> Everyone! Enchantress, Impetus. too, since Enchantress can't orb. That's actually huge. Uh, the fact that, it, oh, Chaos Knight does have his BKB. But Dyer's blocking orb down. effects like Impetus attack. and, uh, well, not really Vipers isn't as hurt as, as badly, but Impetus is one of the most important orb effects that gets shut down by BKB. Oh, Windrunner gets... Oh, she'll be fine. No. They decide not to engage. But once BKBs come up, the game looks a lot harder for Orange. So they're gonna try to push so the Orange they have now. Uh, There's a Orange has to win. Like, they have to wax them. Oh, that's the stackle. Oh man, really chaotic fights so far, but look There's at this BKB, BKB Chaos Knight. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it totally turned the fight around, like, Vegas. wow. As this happens, Enchantress is throwing out a lot of really big auto attacks. Oh, but now she's in a weird spot. Oh boy. Oh, Enchantress, I hope you moved up before this battle. Oh, she barely makes that. How she many has times? West. Uh, oh, they fucked this up too many times. Okay, oh, that's wins. A, and that's a triple kill for Morphling. And I think this game is all of a sudden... Uh, it's LGD's game to lose now. There's a gem on the ground, if I'm not mistaken. The trees. Oh man, Leshrac's building towards the BKB as well. Like, this is looking bad. Yeah, once he gets that, he's gonna... I'm surprised how late he got the tranquils this game, but... Once he gets that, it's just gonna be so hard. I would, again, not be surprised at all if Morphling went for BKB either. Like, having that link to uh... BKB makes it hard to kill, but... I think a BKB first on Morphling would have been much better in this game. I think so as well. Well, it would not have facilitated his farming uh, as much. So. Still, this, uh, they lost so many fights because no one had a BKB. I think it's there. And now, well. like, mm. one BKB just turned that fight around, like, a lot. Once they finally get the rest of their BKBs, the fights are going to be very easy for them to win. But also of note is that the, the Radiant is getting a lot closer to their Sheeps. Like, they're basically 2,000 off a sheep on Quap and 2,000 off a sheep on Invoker. At the rate they're going, four minutes from now they're going to have their sheeps, and that'll be like their second timing, so to say. If they can't win a fight when they get those, they're fucked. But if they can So win why a fight, are they using the courier? Yeah, high ground vision to counter work. I assume there's like a gem on the courier. No, Disruptor had it. Yasha. Wow, he's not going for yeah, BKB. There, there, yeah, yeah, no, there's a gem on the choir. That's what they were. Yeah, see, that's what they were doing. They just flew the gemmed choir over the hill so they could see. And yeah, he's going for a Manta. Wow. Thoughts? What if he's going for Sanji Yasha? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what if he dis? What if uh? What if Invoker disassembles his force staff for a Rotavados? You can't can, you can can disassemble force staff. You know you can't. By disassemble, obviously, I mean sell it and just buy a staff and wizard read. Poor man, <laughs> poor man, disassemble. <laughs> it's about as likely as the song, Oh, well, but what if, what if he actually goes Sanjinyasha? He won't. Are you gonna eat up your words and everything you said? What is he not gonna go? go to so. If he went Sanjinyasha, he's playing for a million dollars. Yeah, dude, he's not gonna go SNY <laughs> for a million dollars. <laughs> Imagine if, like, say LGD is gonna win, like it's gonna be the third third game out of a best of five, and they're already up two, and they're about to win, and they go SNY and more playing. You know how much, you know how long it'll be before, like, just, just. Oh my God, I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, yeah. If you yeah. win SNY third game, and they win with it, it's gonna be like, oh, I guess SNY is the thing. I'm more playing now. 
<laughs> for the next year. People with build us in one. Yeah, my oh my when, god. Yeah. Hey, also, throwing this out here from yesterday, when I was playing with the Riki, it did turn out that uh, What's-His-Face trapped him into his death with the war trap. I just didn't even realize it. He got mega fucked. He was trapped by the wards on top of, I believe, like an axe or something, and got killed immediately. I was pretty sure that he didn't get trapped, but no, I was wrong. But that was so frustrating game because Wizard Invoker's uh, uh, going for um, Lincoln. the sheep stick as well. <laughs> no, just kidding. Of course he's going to be yeah, that's, that's, really, that's understandable. He needs a sheep. Yep, yeah. They're so close to them now. So there are the, three uh, sheeps. Like, this is that four minutes from now timing that I was talking about where uh, they just need to get that sheep out on Queen of Pain and they need to get that sheep out on Invoker. And Queen of Pain really has to buy an item. I'm wondering when Enchantress will go next, and I don't usually see games go on much longer than her axe pick up. And everyone is getting ready for the fight on the top lane. What are you sitting on, Stylus? If they fight right now, that's such a bad idea. Wow. Orph has a buyout, I believe. Yeah, he has a buyout. If Orange choose to fight right here, that's so bad because they don't have their sheeps yeah, yet. They're and they're so. Their oh, sheeps. Queen of Pain has her sheep. Invoker so that's why is there's 200 gold short. I think they're gonna back out now. Oh my god. Shortest lift of all time. No, they're not gonna back off. Look. Oh my god. All they're, teams they're are relatively uh, blind, but this hawk will give a little bit of vision. However, it is nighttime. And it's hawk on hawk on hawk! Both teams have their hawks. No, hawk gets put down. It's a sad day for Beastmaster when you gotta kill your own like that. Is it trader hawk? Oh my god, Orange don't know what to do. Like, they tried to engage, they went back. They decided to engage again because Squap got her uh, sheep stick, but then they backed off. As far as Morphling has died four times, but it's hard for him to They're having like miscommunication. Yeah. He really big dicks on some of these team fights. I don't think he's gonna sit on the Austrian BKB. I would, I'd almost hope that he did, but I'm almost certain he'll just go Manta. I feel like LGD uh, didn't really practice that much because they they went like 14 and 0 and felt cocky and stuff. Maybe. I so think their communication, teams... like, uh, nah, bro, they're fucking Asian. All they like, do I'm pretty sure these teams though are like completely like know what they're doing. Yeah, and yeah, like, but and they probably uh, like they, they know that if they go home, they're gonna get like beaten by their masters for failing to win a million dollars. <laughs> like, it's either this or making the Nikes, and they're gonna choose this every time. Some uh, some player on Orange said if they win, if uh, his team wins the million dollars, he's gonna go back to Malaysia and uh, propose to his girlfriend, and he looks like he's like nineteen. Boy will, boy will she be surprised. Like, she didn't hear that on... What? Well, maybe she lives in abject poverty and is trying to find food as opposed to Dyer's watching her <laughs> husbando play Dota. Is that, is that what it is? Husbando? Oh, yeah. You, you have to deal with, with, like, a Mexican They're gonna smoke accent. up here, I think. And they're gonna try to go for Rosh. They have... They have the, uh... Thing, but this is gonna be obvious. No, oh, they're trying to make it obvious. They the medallion. This disruptor is no. a miss, Lord. <laughs> he missed like so many hits. Which that was like game breaking. Like a support got picked off because they missed ten times in a row at the <laughs> rush pit. That's what I'm always afraid of whenever I like can ward it there. It's like the worst feeling when you miss uphill so many times. Beastmaster decides to save a clutch 25 mana. And as this happens, Invoker's just farming up. He has a replica, doesn't he? Oh, he doesn't. Wow. Not a pause. Dumb chinks are pausing the game again. PC hang? PC hang? Why do you have to do it with like a Chinese accent? Okay, Asian. You racist fuck. Buybacks already on a lot of uh, heroes. Awkward silence. I'm drawing the PC hang. What? Uh. 
these stupid fucking Asians make their ex oh, I'm sorry, these these Chinese Dota teams they they use their stupid fucking excuses on uh you know, like playing uh overseas or whatever. Like, you know, when they're in China or whatever playing, they're like, Oh we're lagging, my PC's hanging itself and uh and then all of a sudden they're playing on a fucking LAN. So they don't have this bullshit excuse. They just need to suck it up and lose to Team America for once. Ready, okay. Team America? I don't I don't see it an American team winning. Are you kidding? I'm seeing complexity just taking the games. You you bet against complexity. Uh the sarcasm. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna see if the Ursa Warrior can solo Rosh or not. Now we get the feeling he didn't actually want to murder his own Ursa Warrior, considering that they were using that for line of sight within the Rosh pit. So maybe a bit of a fuck up by Enchantress there, but he sends another one in, we'll see if this one was gonna die like its brother. This has to be demoralizing for the Ursa Warrior, he's just watched his friend die. Or maybe he didn't, maybe he walked in and he's like, what is this Roshan doing? Is You're a great friend? fucking commentator, talking about fucking Ursa's emotions. Is he a friend or is he a foe? And as this happens, it looks like Lashrak is being murdered on top. Just barely you kill anyone in seven seconds. And again, we're gonna check back in on the Ursa. And him and Ross are just gonna look the other way. What is he talking about? He's talking about the Ursa warrior and Roshan. Enchantress, uh, controlled creep. We're gonna watch these two creeps. Oh, this is awkward for the, uh, Morphling. Suddenly, whole enemy team. And he's like, well, better get the fuck out. And we're just gonna watch Ursa. And he's like, okay, I'm done. Goodbye, Rosh. And Rosh is like, goodbye, friend. And he's like, I'm gonna live a long and happy life. No! And he just dies. He falls down on the stairs. The Dark Troll Warlord, not even gonna resummon skeletons on his corpse. Just gonna awkwardly meander into the river. We're gonna watch the Dark Troll Warlord now. There's actually action going on, man. You might wanna, like. No, no, it's fine. The Dark Troll Warlord, just gonna sit in the river. This is Asian Micro. I saw the Chaos Knight Illusions, I wanted to check in, make sure he didn't ult. Oh, get back the Warlord creep. There's a big line of sight trap. Now, killing these trees actually does make it really, really easy to posture around the Rosh Pit. As weird as that sounds, but being able to stand on this hill and just attack people in the cliff means Disruptor can walk and throw a trap on the pit, do a lot of cute shit. It's daytime now, so the Hawk has a lot more vision. Yeah, oh, look at that. Morphling picked up the BKB. No, oh, Morphling did pick up the BKB. I'm really surprised that he didn't finish a Manta, but this makes sense, I guess. I just didn't think he would do it. Whoever called that one was right. Yeah, shut. Oh, yeah. Oh. Why did he pick the Asho? Uh, I don't know. It's a pretty cost effective item. I mean, it gives you a bit of agility, a bit of attack speed. More importantly, the movement speed is really nice. Probably felt like uh, he didn't have enough damage. Well, Yasha is regarded as the swiftest weapon ever created. Please, please get Sanjin Yasha. And uh, Black King Bar is pretty good too. I mean, it's a powerful staff in view with the strength of giants. So. God, I want to see a Sanjin Yasha so bad. I somehow feel like you won't in this entire tournament, but. I wonder if they got any Sanjin Yasha during the prelims. Oh, if they smoke up! The enemy team has no idea that they have smoked, but they're awkwardly standing on this hill. This is one of those five-man on five-man ganks, but they've been spotted! They've been spotted by the Hawk! They know. And SURPRISE, BITCH! GET FUCKING WARD! They picked one off, they can now rush on. But there are buyouts. Ouch. Enchantress. Oh, they this, go back. Yep. This answers the age-old question of what you buy on Enchantress once you finish your axe. You buy yourself buy back into the game. They would have instantly went for Rosh if uh, Enchantress didn't buy out. Yeah, with three BKBs up Double though, damage. things are gonna get weird. The Ford Spirit doesn't want to die like then a bitch like the Ursa Warrior. <gasps> I feel like a the next team fight. Oh, Force Spirit, you can win this fight! You gotta start hitting him! Oh, the boar. 
The board drops Jesus. dead. Oh my god. The board drops dead. Okay, good. Uh, I feel like the next fight's gonna be totally in favor favor of LGD. Their be. BKBs. Oh, that's a big one though. They've just chained disabling this guy. Is he gonna? No, he's number four still. Up oh, here come the BKBs. Lots of yellow heroes. Oh, win or run. Oh, you're no Canyon. You can't get away. Or can you glimpse? Oh, big mis big miscommunication on the glimpse. Again. Oh, they've dominated one of the Chaos Knight illusions. Enchantress can enchant illusions, and this Chaos Knight illusion hits really hard. Did she really? Yeah, she did. That's actually really funny. <laughs> Counter to Chaos Knight Enchantress with the uh, refresh orb. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Make your own team in Chaos Knights. You don't need anyone. Chaos Knight is building towards his heart. He has a Reaver. Now, he could go for a Satanic, but if he did that, his team would beat him mercilessly for throwing the game. <laughs> He's got crits uh, on crits I... on crits. He's fighting the raid boss. Looks like Xiaoyi wants to get in there, sucking Rosh's dick a little bit. Oh, he's... Free and contested Roshan. Yeah, this is over. Right here, this is when the game's over. This is when LGD decides to just dick slap Orange. Now, they have their BKBs and such. Hey, what if what if they buy Sanji and Yasha just to make fun of uh, Orange? Oh boy, uh, you have high hopes for S and Y, don't you? Oh yeah, I do. I've seen uh, Snake King do Spirit Breaker S and Y yesterday. He went like twenty and two. Boy, when you pick a serious hero like Spirit Breaker, you gotta get serious items to back it up. And it looks like Beastmaster <laughs> just picked up an axe too, which is actually pretty solid on Beastmaster. I mean, it gives you uh, better range and more importantly, it reduces the cooldown, so you can have your ult up during every single small engagement. No really big items have been picked up since by uh, the Radiant here. They've been sitting on top of their sheeps for a while now, and they're just saving bio gold. Looks like Windrunner is also building towards the Sheep of Iran. Once they get the triple sheep, they'll be in slightly better shape, except the game will probably be over because they're totally fucked, but... God, that Rubik's so fucking poor. Yeah, I mean, he has a four staff, I guess, and... More 43 minutes in the game, 4, More importantly, bullets. though, he has... Uh, this is the big one, though. Is that he has Strength Morph, so he's... He's so oh. much stronger than he had, than, than a super poor, like, Rubik. He's not a free kill. He could have 190 more HP if he steals it again, but it's not worth going out of your way to do. Especially at this point in the game where the engagements will be so decisive. There's a smoke on him. And, and Morphling finishes his Manta. I like how uh, Lemis looks at the items tab and like... Uh, LGD is full of items and branches and everything and uh, they all have six items and when they look at orange there's like... Like a lot these, of slots. Yeah, yeah, all these missing slots. <laughs> They're poor. It's like one team has a bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are looking to get really aggressive with his haste, but he realizes he's all alone. These guys are not the best hero to solo kill other heroes with. But at this I'm point, it's going to be really good because everyone on. Um, okay, so Radiant relies a lot on their magic damage to bring people down, but there are BKBs out and everyone is tanky. The Morphling can potentially have like 5,000 HP in a fight. The Lestrac has 1,600 HP in a BKB. The Beastmaster has 1,800 HP and a Cloak. And the Chaos Knight has 2,400 HP and a BKB. So it's going to be so hard to kill anyone right now. Orange is basically hoping on a premature BKB or uh, anything like that that like... They're baiting with the Morphling the right now, through. but this is fairly obvious, and they're just, they're just hoping a little bit. Uh, they smoke, they're all just standing behind Morphling. Disruptor is going a little bit deep to place a lane ward. Not really a lane ward, but more a ward to spot out anyone that's going to use that route to come and Radiant try to stop them. Tower is under attack. And this is where the bait gets somewhat awkward, is there's no one here, but they just opt to let the tower go down, which is smart. They realize everyone is missing on the map. Radiance As this happens, Queen of Pain tucks and doesn't freeze on top, and she gets a BKB of her own. But it's not going to be as impactful as BKBs from the Dire will be. Oh, oh there's Are they a man. Are they just gonna back up? Oh god. Fuck. Okay. No Sanji Dash at this game. But we're gonna see one. There's a DC right now. For I Radiant. believe. Or is that a DC? That doesn't appear to be a DC. No. Who is that in the pool? 
There's a Chaos Knight illusion that was stolen and is now diving the pool. <laughs> oh He's God, just sending not... back that CK illusion to heal. Put him in the zero armor, that might hurt for Rubik. Yes, it may hurt, but having the additional strength is going to be more valuable than having like the five armor that you would have normally. He could also buy an ultimate orb. But he's just going to get erased when he gets uh, clicked. But having 1300 HP is much nicer than having 900 HP and a handful of armor. Especially against the enemy team. True to the way of the Chinese, Morphling, not even looking at the athletics, we're going to go for the 6 slot game. And this is a dead That's a really interesting. Yeah. Oh no! What were you saying? Those four stars oh, no. up. I was saying he was dead. Looks like he's dead. D E D dead. <laughs> and this is a sad one runner. She loses a gem. Enchantress is now going to be mega sad. And oh, here comes Mushi. Oh, sorry, Mushi. Every single hero is fucking yellow. You gonna throw down an ult before you die? You dumb bitch. Okay. He, he blinks away. Looks like uh, Mushi only comfortable playing Ethereal Blade Claw. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Next game, call against Zenith. Big money game. Next game, are you implying that Orange can't win this? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see Orange winning this in a, like in a million years. Like if you give them a thousand chances right now. Mushi decided to so. spew his sonic wave all over yellow heroes. Dumb whore. And if we look at hero level, I'm willing to bet that it's gonna be kinda sad. Don't then. Wow, Mushi has kept up really well in terms of levels. Well, he has 18,000 18, net worth, so... I guess he's only died Just four times, and he's actually farming rather well. Holy yeah, shit, I mean, he's the par top farmer. Yeah, it's on par with uh, Morphling. Wow, that's actually incredibly surprising to me. He is really, really Invisibility. fun. He was on par with Morphling, but Morphling did something, bought something, I don't Experience know what happened. Experience is actually dead, even. And yeah, but there's still no way LTD can win this. Even too. Uh, I would say there's no way. Is If the game goes on ultra late, some of the things that have affected the game thus far are less relevant. Like, the fact okay. that their BKB is up becomes... It becomes a thing, but as the BKBs decrease in their duration, they start to become 5 second BKBs. And then, uh, Radiant has more heroes okay. that scale better. Like, Disruptor and Lashrak are going to drop off somewhat hard. You're looking at, at it the wrong way. I mean, we're 15 minutes in the game. Orange has no carries. But uh, we're 50 minutes in the game, are you kidding me? Yeah, I said 50. Oh, yeah, sorry, you were speaking European. Alright, it looks like KSA is... Oh, he's not going to get picked at all here. He's actually just going to clown slap people. And that is a sad Queen of Pain. And that's a pretty big issue, the fact that a lot of the farm is centered on the Queen of Pain for the Radiant as well. So as I was saying, 15 minutes in the game, two hard carries on the other team. There is no way Orange can win this. They, they were based on the early game and mid game to win this, but it obviously didn't work for them. Yeah, I felt like if they took it super late, they would have had a chance. Just because of how a game operates, like super late, where it's like, oh, you get a team wipe, you know, even if it's an un unlikely team wipe, you can still win. But right now they're looking pretty, pretty well and fucked. There's no way they can defend this Rax, and they may have time to get a double Rax. Oh, Mushi? Nah, he's oh, gonna get oh no, he gets, is he gonna get away? He's gonna get away. What a well-measured escape from Mushi, all part of the plan. They kinda... Hmm. LGD forced the picks on orange, on the picking phase, just because LGD picked up uh, Morphling and Chaos Knight right off the bat. So that just forced orange for a mid-game to then early to mid-game uh, strategy. That obviously didn't work for them out, so... Chaos Knight and Morphling 2 are just super solid picks because they don't exactly conflict with each other at all. Both yeah, but they force. Oh man, force that, actually, that actually really fucked the Chaos Knight illusions right there. Getting your illusions attacked like that really hurts, but he has 3,000 HP on him. That's There's good. the GG. Yeah. Chaos Knight was having a really rough game for a while, but luckily Chaos Knight doesn't actually need items to aim away down there anymore. Tell him, man. BKB, Chaos Knight 16. But that heart... So, so annoying. 
<laughs> yeah, we're just fucking around a little bit with his win round. My gratitude. Nah, I think he was so dumb. That, that hero is like a six slot item with two slots. BKB, or BK, oh, three slots. Tread, BKB, and a heart is like a six slot, like normal carry. It's like that retarded. I like the gold grab If you put an arm ladder on him, that's story, oh, story of the game, like really even game up until maybe 15 minutes in or 20 minutes. And then a little bit of lead for Dire, and then massive pull away from the Radiant in a very short span of time at the Rosh Pit. Radiant just kind of held onto their lead, and then BAM! Fucking crashed. It was a very good game, though. That was a sad game. Hmm? Both teams played pretty well, I think. Is Cole ah. next? Cole's next, yeah. There should be a 10 minute break, though. <laughs> Even more. Is it? Probably, yeah. Hmm. Well, guys, I have to go poop, so I will be back in just a bit. By just a bit, I mean it may be a little. What's the time right now? I do not know. Time for you to watch. 1208, 1208, I don't know. I need you out, actually, open. Microsoft what? Word poop time. Wow, okay. Calicot? No, they didn't. Oh, Kelcott saying that they had the game, that Orange had it. God, that's so wrong. So, Alia, how, how tired are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Pretty tired. I don't know, but... You really want to watch <sighs> Cole? I mean... I'd like to, but... I mean, I don't know how I'm going to wake up if... That's gonna happen. I was like, go, go to sleep. You gotta keep this going. Yeah, no. Nah. Ow. You're you're not gonna get in a lot of hours of sleep. You're probably gonna have like three or four, just yeah. because the Cole versus Zenith games are not gonna be like a two zero. I'm hoping to see like Cole two one them. Just because it would be more interesting. Right, I'm gonna hang up the call. Aww. This is gonna keep me up. Um, well, I mean, I need to. You said I need to sleep, right? Yeah. Anyway, so I'm just gonna fall asleep to the call game, and then it'll be easier if I'm not talking to anyone on Skype. So. Good night, Ali. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So it's just me, Barney's pooping. Orange, the game was lost at the picking phase when they didn't, they didn't pick anything for a late game. LGD did like a great, great thing. Like uh, they they got Morphling and CK, and that just forced uh, Orange to pick a mid, uh, an early to mid game strategy, just because they got the hardest carries in the game. And like if they picked AM, AM would totally get fucked by uh, CK. So they didn't really have anything to do. They just had to win early to mid game. It would have been nice to see more pushing heroes like an Enigma. But that game was lost at the picking phase in my opinion. Well shit. Morph's not that broken, and none of those ears are broken. Oh, 
Why don't anybody say anything about my fucking background noise? Fuck. I gotta fix it. Could be perfect. Here. Test, test, testicles. Okay, that's not me. Barney has uh, Skype turned up too high. No, there is, dude. Can't you hear it? Anyway, Cole versus Zenith. Five dollars on the line. This is gonna be an interesting game. Fuck, I believe in Cole. I, I want him to win. But I already prepared the PayPal and everything just to send Barney the money. Fuck. Oh shit, that's good then. I'm gonna be right back. All right, I'm somewhat back. What's up, guys? Anyone? Anyone? No? Looks like Rodney went to sleep. Okay. Okay. Well. All right. Okay. Okay. All right then. Yeah, I'll just leave you guys with something this time. Scrolling my bookmarks off stream, of course. Yeah, you don't want them to see all that ten tentacle porn. Shit. What are you playing on stream? Oh god.
Okay, so I'm back. You guys should watch uh, Dota 2 TI because uh, they're showing like videos. Alright, I am back. Now I have to close Firefox so that when I open up the bookmarks again, I'll be at the <laughs> bottom of the list because the last thing I want you guys seeing is the shit I put in my bookmarks. You guys have seen that before. Tentacle rape. Does anyone, what have do you this, have? does anyone actually have the screenshot? No, it was actually just really, really bad stuff when people saw bookmarks of my porn a long time ago, and everyone screenshotted it too. It was like <laughs> school fuck O three prison ward gangbang like, like just shit like things like that I don't even watch, but it's like God damn, tentacle dude. Tentacle rape, etc. There, I put the video in chat. I made sure to run that while I was AFK, so that I could. Why didn't you run an ad? You. Why didn't I run an ad? I'd rather people watch that. Uh, yeah, that's even worse than an God act. forbid I don't make these big Twitch TV dollars. Dude, watch the uh, watch the international uh, Twitch TV D2 TI. Dota 2 TI. You think it should be the Twitch know, TV one that's Twitch. embedded? Oh, it's on own 3D too. It's embedded yeah, into the fucking Dota client. Twitch is better. I agree. It's pretty much the same casters. But Twitch is actually worse because there are all there's like audio quality bugs on it. Compared to the own 3D one, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but we're watching the video now. When is when is, the, gonna... when is the new when is the next international uh, game played? Ah, uh, after they like show the interviews with every player. Oh, that's fucking retarded. You still have your five dollars on uh, what's it called? You're not gonna back down. No, of course not. What the fuck? All right, I got my money on the Chinese team. In case you guys didn't know, me and Ix are betting. Ix has five dollars on complexity to win the game. I'm going to put my five dollars. On whatever the fuck the other team was. The goop team. <laughs> Zenith. I don't even know what team it is. I just know that the American teams are fucking jokes. When does EG play? I want to make sure to bet against EG too. I can win another $5. EG <laughs> against IG. Oh. Well. Uh, I, did, that's actually must, probably yeah, one of the only ones that they actually have a chance at winning. Their bracket is garbage. Are you fucking joking? Where can I find that? EG went 13-1. and one. Dude, EG is fucking terrible. And they have no chance of actually beating any of this team. IG went 13-1. Well, and one. Oh, IG. Yeah, they're one of the Chinese teams. They're going to crush EG because EG is a fucking yeah. joke. I'm surprised EG even made it into the upper bracket and didn't fall down into the loser's <laughs> bracket with all the other scrub teams. I don't know what they did, but they... Fuck, how did Complexity make it in the winner's bracket? Wait, what the fuck? Are you joking? They they pulled off games off of fucking Na'Vi, Zenith. Like, they pull games. Like, you know really, who else really pulled games, games off of Na'Vi and all of these other teams? Teams like Zenith that won everything. Teams like LGD that won everything. Teams Zenith like didn't win any everything. They went like... This is the. They didn't go as well as. I guarantee you, all the teams that place well and all the teams that have done well so far in the group stages, even are all going to be the Chinese teams. The, the only team I I believe the only no 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 never mind, but yeah, Cole is uh, one of the of course American teams in the winner bracket. I do believe there are many American teams. You know what's really kind of awkward about how they've hosted the international? Oh look, Chappie's video. This is the boot camp. Wait, wait. You know what's kind of awkward about the way that they No, 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 wait, let me listen. It's this. like how the casters are on a different audio channel as, like, the hosts and everything. Oh, this is the boot camp video? Yes, yes, yeah, sure, watch it. My parents expected me to be a doctor just like my father. <laughs> and, uh, if not that, a lawyer. My well, parents expected me to be a doctor. It's okay, it's okay, yeah, they got, it, they got a professional fucking gamer here. I showed them how serious I was about it. Right now, they're very supportive, and they actually look up on the internet. I'm being. I was ecstatic that we got the invitation to the international because that was exactly what I was looking for. Were they invited or did they All have the to play off? Yeah, they were invited. Oh, that's a joke. We we're just normal guys. I didn't feel any different getting sponsored. Dude, his hair is so fucking surreal. badass. To uh, be filmed all the time and have fans come up to you. Winning the International 2 would mean that I've achieved something that I've been working at for many years now, and it's kind of proof to my family that this time is put, being put to use. After the international, if I won, I will call my dad and say, I love you and thank you for letting me do this. Are they going to interview IX Mike, the only one who fucking matters on complexity? <laughs> so there you have it, that's no. the fluff and stuff from complexity, Brian Lee, and he is just one of the members here representing complexity. Now you have and fluff and stuff on your friends list, you said that he spent me six yes. hours yesterday watching replays from the team that they're about to play against. Yeah, and games. Yep, this guy yeah. is serious about wanting to win. Oh, yeah. And that's what just makes it all the more sad. Hey, look, no switch. sound. There's IX Mike. IX Mike, 82, 88, sorry. See? 
Axe Mike's the only one of these fucking complexity players that deserves an intro. You heard it right here from 2GD himself. Barney, which one do you look the most like? None I of really them. wanted to talk over. <laughs> Those people... Police yeah. are affecting timing pushes so, uh, and patient late game with, place. Uh, we're back with the whole team Sorry about that if you uh, got it, some of our audio and then lost it. We were actually just trying to talk over them as if, as if they were miming. Um, but right, the whole team of complexity guys. What oh God! Look at that! They all look like this. That's actually one of the most hilarious pictures. Geo coming out of the Philippines. He's a big fan favorite over there, and he's one of the biggest. You asked me which one I look the most like. Good sirs in chat, Pacman. Great captain. I look like none of these people, and I'm very happy that that is the case. There's something interesting. I I imagine you look like Hannah, the guy in the metal. You know, you wanted TC. I remember which one was which. You're Yugoslavian, right? That's not gonna happen, Bruno. Yeah, I no, I'm Romanian. I don't think TC. Oh, whatever. I don't think any faces we'll are gonna be picked here. No. TC coming in, I think was one. So you look the one that looks the most like a gypsy kind of, right? As as goes, he's like the third or no, the I player. look more like, like uh, TC. What is your race? Are you gypsy blood? I'm master race white. Oh, okay. But of course, like I'm all white. Opponents. We had a word with Zenith a little bit earlier. We don't have that many black people here, or any any minorities besides gypsies. All right, where is? Does any can anyone in chat post a link to the bracket? Who will go? Various sponsorship options. Get yeah, fucked. Complex is gonna fuck them. I like how as I look into the chat and I'm looking for a link, there's immediately like the uh, like the bot spam link of like, oh okay. So fuck anything. This game is now pre-game. They've taken their long fucking break. As this happens, all the teams just sort of sit in a room between the games. Not even joking. This is actually what they do, and they spend like ten minutes. But this is this has to be a pretty high stress moment for all the players. But I'm sure IX Mike is cool enough to handle it. <laughs> he's he's not the team leader. So, we just had that interview with Fluff and Stuff, who was doing the banning. Now, once again, Fluff and Stuff spent six fucking hours the other day just watching Xanathu bans and picks. Yes. So he has to be a he has to be a master at the picking phase. Now, one thing a lot of players don't think about because they mostly play in public games is they don't he's think about how me. complex actually drafting is. Here, it's like half the battle and really defines how you're Like that you last like that last it? game was like a a draft that had a very specific plan in mind, and when they failed to accomplish it. They basically lost. Complexity. Surprisingly, Look, see, ban. see from the first ban, complexity does. They, you never, complexity never bans Slow Shock. But if you look at this they, too, it's interesting because Zenith had to have probably done the same thing. Now this is like a <laughs> Chinese team. Exactly. They're very disciplined. If like if they go back home, they're gonna have to go back to their mud huts if they don't win the international, where they assemble Nike shoes and such. Uh, he's immediately bans out the Silver though. That's kind of surprising. Now That's I know I remember reading stuff. an interview where they talked about. Uh, where the Chinese team talked about, like, the complexity team, or was basically making fun of them after stomping the shit out of them. I think it was DK or someone who mentioned that TC was a good carry player, but the rest of his team was mediocre. We'll see if th these words hold true, as Zenith completely destroys complexity here. Now, we have $50 on, or $5 on the line, rather. We'll get to the big money later. I'll bet 50, I'll bet 50 that EG gets crushed, but we'll, we'll get to that later. We don't have to take that oh, bet. Okay, right now, right now we'll focus that. on the bet at hand, which is you losing your $5 to me because you thought it was a good idea to bet $5. All my Dashini money. No. <laughs> All your Dashini money. <laughs> no, see, I'm gonna, after the first two picks uh, from Complexity, I'm gonna probably guess everything that Complexity is gonna pick and ban. Now, the TA ban was uh, like a respect ban, ban for J.O. because they kind of banned everything that uh, Complexity does really well. Lone Dread and TA. TC plays a mean Lone Dread, and J.O. plays like a really, really, really good uh, TA. Yeah, like there, there are also... Um, something to think about, too, is that right now, um, Complexity is banning out a lot of the really high-impact heroes from the game that teams would ban probably anyways, Can such as like Lycan. And we'll see if they end up banning out the Naga Siren. But he knows that they have the first Five pick. So three. right now he's probably debating whether or not he wants to ban out the Naga Siren or something else. The thing is, if he bans out Naga Siren, you have to consider the fact that, one, he has first pick, which is a very, very big he's deal. He's not going to ban the Naga Siren. Yeah, There's the, no the Chinese team almost certainly, because the Chinese, if they don't have first pick or 
That's like one of the no, most bad. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you here. Zenith hasn't been Naga Siren against. Oh, they ban like, out the Darkseer. Uh, uh, this is really smart because they know that if they get the Naga, they're not gonna give up Darkseer, who's often considered to be one of the best heroes in the game. And furthermore, Darkseer is one of the best heroes with Naga Siren and one of the best heroes against Naga Siren. If you come out of a song, it's very easy to actually drop your wall vacuum combo. A lot of teams don't realize this. It's resulted in teams. Like, the one that played against Na'Vi getting completely wiped at a Rosh Pit before. Uh, it's happened to everyone, I'm sure, at some point. But regardless, they ban out the Tidehunter. That oh my Naga. god! They're gonna, they they're gonna grab the Naga. I'd almost 100% say that right now, Complexity is going to ban, or is going to pick up the Naga. Yeah, but that's that's 100%. The, I would be extremely surprised if they didn't. This is something if that the team considers... A, no. Yeah, I would wow. be I would be mind-blown if they didn't pick up the Naga Siren here. I, I, I was talking to Fluff and he was like... And they yeah, picked up the Noggin. Yeah, that was that was almost a given. They took a little bit of time to think about that, though. Shipped into the reserve time a little bit, though. And they pick up a Tinker. Uh, in all seriousness, you don't want to give away a Tinker when Naga's on the board. Tinker's March of the Machines is also one of the best synergies. But Tinker, in general, is just a really strong hero. You know what would uh, what would counter Naga pretty well from Zenith? A Krabo, uh, Death Prophet. There's absolutely no way they're going to pick a Death Prophet. I'm going to shut you down right there. I would... I will up my bet. I will give you, I will give you ten dollars if they pick a death profit. I will, I'll put that on the line right now. We're going big money here. It's okay. I'm a streamer. I have the money. I can back it up. <laughs> okay. And they pick up a coddle. That's actually extremely surprising. But that is actually one of the hardest uh, counter anti pushes. No, 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 no. N not even just anti push, which it does very well. But more importantly, running a tinker with a keeper of the light in the same lane is one of the best ways to deal with the tri lane. This is something I've seen very few times. It's a very unique strategy, but it's been done before. Because Naga Siren is highly likely to be ran in a tri lane. It's one of okay. the only ways to land her. She has huge kill potential. It's deadly. It gets her everything that she needs. And they immediately pick up the Tinker and the Coddle, which is a really, really good lane because you can just hang back. They'll never take your tower. You'll never die. You'll be able to put harassment in, etc. Okay, listen to this. There's going to be a tree and Protector pick from complexity absolutely won't happen I'll, I'll throw ten dollars on that as well okay actually, okay. I'm, actually no i won't throw ten dollars on that i'm gonna take myself back Yo, you didn't agree to it you called it no you there are no trade backs here motherfucker i i didn't i didn't you didn't agree to it i, I took it back before you did don't try to jew me out like that they pick up the chen they pick up strong heal wizard rubik also a very powerful wizard but more importantly these are really really good synergies of heroes chen a top tier hero that made it through the banning phase rubik a top tier hero that made it through the banning phase and the chinese pick up a chaos knight um, you could really do anything with this, but they've kind of shown their hand in that they want to have the Chaos Knight. Now, Chaos Knight also very, very good against Naga. Incredibly good. It's very, very easy to kill the big Naga. You're going to be building a BKB anyways, which lets you smash through Naga when she ults. There are a lot of things that make Chaos Knight really, really good, but so far, both teams have picked pretty well. Now, we're going to the second banning phase, which is where the teams are Just so you know, I really Mike think about was playing a, uh, a bunch of Chian games yesterday. I wouldn't doubt that they would go that route, especially if they have a Naga. Because this is probably what Complexity may have wanted all along. I mean, it's it's sure, it's it's like a, like, this guy studied the banning phase. Like, Complexity, Fluff, and stuff, I would say, has... Oh, yeah, he's been going drafts. through, like, a yeah, lot of he's, games. He's, he's, I think he's doing the drafting very, very well so far. And they ban out the Wisp. Wow! They, no, that's, yes. that's a smart ban. They don't want to show the Wisp. They don't want to play against the Wisp CK, Tinker. This is one of the best combinations. That's a really, really good ban from Fluff and stuff. It takes oh, a lot of there's the Venomancer ban. Yeah, it, but it takes it takes a lot of presence of mind to realize that if you get a Keeper of the Light, a Tinker who's going to be anywhere anyways, and a Wisp Chaos Knight combination, you can kill anyone anywhere on the map anytime. Very, very okay. hard, hard to play against the Wisp. The Wisp. Now they have to think about what they want to take out. I have thoughts. I'm looking at Cole right now, and I'm uh, thinking <sighs> TC is gonna pick the yeah, that's a good ban. They ban out the TC is gonna pick the Naga. Fluff is gonna pick the Chen. Uh, Ix Mike is gonna pick the Rubek. Now they need a hero for Hana and Jo. Yeah, they're probably Jo's, uh, need to like pick a two. Jo's a two, and uh, Hana's uh, three. So this is gonna be it's, really. It, they're just gonna pick their offlane and their mid next. Are probably what uh, Complexity yeah. is gonna look to do here. Um, yeah, their their Jo's lanes are sort of forced mid. here because by picking the heroes that they picked initially, it's really obvious what they're gonna do. Um, like their tri lane is already basically picked out. It would be. It would be interesting to see if Rubik actually went mid. I doubt it will be the case. Most teams are no, playing this kind of hard spot. Yeah, it won't be the case. Now, let me talk a little bit about the Visage ban while Zenith thinks about their last ban. This, similar to the Wisp ban, has a lot of... Uh, it's really, really important because it's the last synergy that you really don't want to see come out. Um, like I said, it's most likely to be a complex or to be a Keeper of the Light Tinker lane, right? 
they didn't want to let the Wisp out because they thought that the Wisp would land with a Chaos Knight, uh, which is a really, really deadly kill lane. It's really hard to prevent someone running up on you, stunning you, and comboing it. That's, but but really, but really importantly, I want to talk about the Visage really quick. That's super important because Tinker with Rockets and Keeper of the Light allows them to run a like, wow. one of the best trial in the games. And Invoker made it through. Well, that's that was kind of obvious. A lot of teams are letting Invoker for, fall to like a fourth or pick fate or fourth or fifth pick at this point. Invoker is probably going to be what they run mid, and they have a lot of options for what they want to pick as their offlane last, uh, which will undoubtedly be what Complexity picks at this point. So I am. Gonna... I'm going to say uh, we're going to see Adrian. I'm... Complexity's draft right now is like it's like top tier. Like the heroes that they have on their lineup, on their on their team right now, are so good, and they've successfully denied Zenith the ability to run any of those mega ass rape combinations i guess to use a really lena. professional term they pick up the lena which is like kind of like a Complexity secondary tier hero to for to like combo with chaos it's not like one of the top tier things surprisingly they didn't pick up like an ancient apparition ancient apparition is really good against chen and a very very powerful hero in general i'm, I'm actually surprised <sighs> that they picked lena instead of aa but this means they're going to try to play a very very aggressive early game if you look at their lineup tinker keeper of the light chaos knight lena these are all heroes that really really need to show uh, a presence early on and still deal well with Naga, but at the same so time, the, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's looking, five seconds it's looking like Zenith, Complexity has a better draft so far, yeah. but go on. Zenith has uh, been watching uh, Cole's games, and they they saw that Cole really, really likes to pick the Tidehunter, and that's Hand Hero right there, they just pick up the Beastmaster, yeah, really solid last pick. I'm, I'm moderately surprised that they didn't pick up something like um, an offlane Tidehunter or something, which would have been very good, but this is a more He's stable bad. pickup. Oh, well. That was that was the band that fucked them over. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky Tide Hunter makes it through. But uh they banned the Tide Hunter yeah, instead of the Naga. They, no, yeah, they no, trade one seed. I know, I know. They, they trade one seed. They could have banned Naga or Tide. But regardless, and they tide. Beastmaster, super, super solid pick. Really, really important. It lets them scale a lot better against uh, BKBs, which is this is hugely important for Chaos Knight in particular. Because the Chaos Knight, Five when he gets that BKB, remaining. would turn into an absolute monster. Uh, Shit, I'll be right back. I'll be right back in like thirty seconds. Alright. And it looks like it's the last pick for Zenith. Um, we'll see what they end up picking. They have a couple of options here, but uh, Complexity so far revealed their lane pretty pretty much. Uh, they can tell exactly what they're going to do. It's most likely going to be an Invoker mid with a Naga Siren Rubik tri lane uh, with the Chen in the forest and Beastmaster off lane soloing the hard lane, where it seems like they're predicting to see a Tinker Keeper of the Light combination as well as a Chaos Knight Lena in the other lane. It's most likely going to be the Tinker Keeper of the Light up against the tri lane with Chaos Knight Lina looking for kills um, in the lane against the Beastmaster. What Zenith may do now is pick a mid-hero. They have a couple of options, though, because their lanes can be more flexible than that. They could do a number of things, but it'll, it'll, we'll see what it comes down to. They could pick something to go with Coddle as well, uh, and then just stick the Tinker mid. They have a couple of options either way. They might like to pick up Morphling, which is uh, someone points out in chat, but I really don't think they will. Uh, the reason being is that they need to look for a better early game team, and Morphling, unless you pool supplies, uh, doesn't exactly shit stomp Invoker in the first couple of levels. But looks like all the heroes are picked, so it's it, what I'm expecting to see here is a Queen of Pain mid. He's going to be matched up against an Invoker, which is a back and forth matchup depending on what the Invoker does. Uh, usually, a Quasuex Invoker would have a better time than an Exhort Invoker, but it seems highly likely that. Uh, well, we'll see what Jo does. Jo isn't—he's not one of the Chinese players that almost exclusively goes Quaswex, but we'll see what he does. Um, it's also probably going to be a Chaos Knight Lena lane in um, in one of uh, the lanes up against the Beastmaster. Well, and we'll see what they do. And that's really interesting. The Quap pick. Wow. Uh, I think it's unsurprising because they know what they have to do uh, to win this game. Prepare for battle. Uh, the enemies have revealed their hand. No one wants to deal with the late game Naga Siren. Uh, no one wants to deal with the Naga Siren, period, so you just have to draft a team that's able to fight against her well. Like I said, um, well, actually, it looks like all of the team is going uh, is going towards top right now. Ix Mike is spending a little bit more time to go to the shop, maybe a little bit behind. Uh, either way, looks like Ix Mike may be Dude, tired after pounding happen. so much pussy that he is uh, unable to <laughs> buy his items quickly. The items are fairly standard. Uh, Jo has a smoke. He has a bunch of supplies. Uh, this is a... Er, Fluff and stuff, rather. He'll probably just be looking to drop a lane ward here. And this is where they're going to stick their tri lane. It's going to be an aggressive climb with the Naga Siren Chen, as well as the Rubik, I would imagine, uh, seeing as he's taking support. He passes off sentries to the Beastmaster. Beastmaster will likely start running towards uh, what I believe, I guess, the safe lane, and then Jaya will probably go mid. 
As for Zenith, they're looking for an aggressive pickoff, but also what they were doing was placing a lane ward. This is something that both teams have done here because it leads your tri lanes into being much more inherently aggressive. It looks like uh, they're going to be running the Coddle Chaos Knight Lina. Um, I'm, they might switch that up. We'll see what they end up doing. Like I expected, it'll be a Queen of Pain mid, and we'll see where. It, mm, no, it may not be Queen of Pain mid. It's going to be interesting. The they. Begins. Not really committing to anything yet, but I, this may be where they move into position. They're still kind of grouped up. And are they going to offlane oh, the Queen of Pain? It looks like she's she's banked she's banked really heavily into supplies, and they're going to stick their Queen of Pain against the offlane Beastmaster. And uh, this is normally a pretty hard lane to not die at as the Queen of Pain, just because you're in the hard lane. But it's also a very favored matchup for Queen of Pain as well. Uh, and due to the way that she's pulled supplies and her aggressive wards, she's going to be really really favored in this matchup. Like I, I expect, pick that one. They ended up actually putting the Tinker against the Invoker, which is interesting, but uh, not surprising. Uh, Jo is committed really hard to going a Quas Wex build, so he's going to get his first three points in Quas, and he's going to be looking for those points in Wex. You can tell he's he's picked up the Blade of Attack. There's almost a zero percent chance he's going to go for an Exorb build, which is uh, playing for more of a mid game, I suppose. Uh, Ix Mike very poor. He has a DD, however, he did get the rune. And Ix Mike denied too. This is their this is their aggressive trialing, but one thing I didn't expect was that they would stick trialing on trialing. It looks like TC immediately going to switch lanes. Um, this is this is not surprising to me at all. I didn't expect them to do such an aggressive tri lane. I expected it to be a Rubik, a uh, Naga, and a uh, Chen, but it looks like they're going to move out here. Now, as they try to move, I think that Fluff and stuff is going to try to make use of this time and try to gank mid. I would be surprised if they didn't based on their positioning right now. I don't think he's going to Is he going to get spotted out by Coddle, though? It's still the daytime. This could be awkward, but he has the Dark Troll. Mocha throwing out a bit of a cold snap onto the Tinker to do a little bit of damage. It's actually a pretty even matchup in general, though. Tinker against Invoker. Oh, Fluffy! And this is this is, the gank. this is the gank. Is this going to be first blood? No, it's not going to be no. first blood. He gets away. Um, that's fine. He it, wasted it, that cold snap. He has three seconds cooldown on the cold snap. Uh, he that might still be so able to get bad. it. He might still. Eh, no, he's not going to go for it. He's still level two. But the the thing is, though, it's not really a waste because Fluff and stuff. What what basically Radiant just did there was they just immediately said, okay, our tri lane is much weaker. It is a Coddle, Lina, and a Chaos Knight. That's a very fucking kill-oriented tri lane that's hard to not die against. They don't want to put their Naga up against that, so they just switch up the lanes. Naga ends up going bottom with Rubik, and what Fluff and stuff was doing there was transitioning lanes. He was just trying to make use of his time as he moved from this camp over here all the way around to around here. He was trying to make use of his time to see if he could get the first blood out of it, but more importantly, they just shifted lanes. Now, Naga had to immediately buy a TP for that, but that's fine because their, their tri lane is pretty good. Now, notice something how the tri lane supports actually play. Chaos Knight has been left alone. He's literally been given a free lane. So what does he do? He just static farms the wave around here, which is exactly what you need to do. Uh, make sure the enemies can't get up the creep line if they come. Let's see to be really aggressive. But more importantly, look at what his supports have done. This is how you. This is why you can't do tri lanes in lower level games and pubs. He's placed a ward here to block any wards that were blocking his pull, and placed one here so that no one in the radiant side could potentially see them coming if they go for aggression. And what do they do with their time? They just farm the fucking poles. This is especially important as Dyer, who has the ability to do many more poles and farm much more in the jungle. Like, they were pulling this camp into the wave, and then pulling this into it. Look on mad. Look this. on mad. It looks like that tornado is so fucking annoying. Yep, Fluff and stuff just throws the tornado from behind the tree. And it's gonna last another 8 seconds. It almost completely runs Tinker out of lane. Look how much damage that does. It is. Oh my god! Ix Mike, is that gonna be first blood? And Lina gets picked yes. up on the first bottom lane. Blood. Oh, yes. Is under being right now. Got it on camera. I'm happy. Yeah. But... Oh, are they doing what I think they're doing? Are they going to say no to Complexity, who who initially switched lane and stick their trial lane on it anyways? Let's we'll see. This Queen of Pain's only level 3. She's really weak, but they give her mana. Oh, they throw her right back at Rubik! Oh, she, can she get the Rubik? Is she going to go on it? No. They're sending Ix Mike back. Just saving a little bit of his time. Wait, are you watching in game? Yeah, I'm watching in game. I thought you were like. Oh, fuck now. And they stick Cotolina on this now. This means that, uh, one, TC can't get left alone as well. And two, if you're tri laning as the radio. Oh my god, safe, that's a three. Aw, oh, Quap DB top, and that's a kill. Goddamn. And this Beastmaster's gonna be going down to Chaos Knight. Now he's not just getting free farm anymore, he's getting, he's getting kills. Wait, I keep forgetting that Loda is on this team. A European yeah, player on the Asian team, I keep forgetting. Living in the Philippines right now, I believe. 
Yeah, so what Oh, the shit! Invoker just picked up a kill on Tinker in the mid lane. That was really unexpected. That was alone. That, yeah, because that, he shouldn't be able to get those solo kills. He would have had to have really outplayed the Tinker to do that. Well, like I said, he's doing three points in Quaz than his Wex. But that's really, really surprising. I didn't expect the kill to be happening there. Wow. That's that's great for uh and what but but, but, but but really quick what what both sides have done now is initially remember how this was the tri lane matchup but this is the exact tri lane that complexity was actively trying to avoid they didn't want to clash tri lanes here and they got forced into it by Zenith who's now switched their lanes are they gonna switch and this leaves them top? with what they want which is a queen of pain farming their safe lane against a beastmaster this is impossible for the beastmaster he will get nothing right now against the quap with 13 cs he is only at three this is exactly what they wanted. Yeah, 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 but the Beastmaster And their, their CK is going to crush this Naga lane. Right now their farm is relatively even, but this is so bad right now for, for Complexity. This is what they were trying to avoid, and they knew this would happen. Right now, the farm is relatively even. There's no big enough advantage to actually matter either way. But this can all change. This Tornado, though, being a very, very powerful zoning tool against the tri lane, but it won't last forever. It so I wonder if uh, CC is going to switch back top. I don't think they will. They can't really. I, they, so much they don't even want to get anywhere near this creep wave. They want to take this in their tower. They want to pull it back comfortably so TC can get the farm under the tower. Haste. Some of the last hits under the tower items? are impossible to get. Even a top tier professional player can miss some last hits. That's not because he's a bad player or because he's making any mistake. It's important to understand. Sometimes towers, or sometimes depending on your base damage, you just can't possibly get them. And Hannah Montana, gonna get daggered, gonna get screamed up. They're not gonna be able to get the kill, they know it. Oh shit, TC's getting uh, jumped on. Yep. Lola might be going down though. No, CK's gonna die. Uh, oh, CK is dead. He gets hit by Chen. Oh Chen sends God. back. Oh. And what the only was TP right back after this. And that was a kill, and that's really good for them. Now, Ix Mike is. Uh, he's basically like one of the homeless walking the streets of Portland. He's injured, Honestly. he's afraid. He's in a real tough spot right now. All he has is one branch, one tango. See, he's accepting charity from Fluff and stuff over here. Realize that Ike's Mike has fallen on hard times. All he has is a branch, barely able to fight for himself. Uh, we have Brown Boots on Lena, though. It's fairly substantial. Connell is going to be die. saving for Brown Boots as well. Who? Qua oh, never mind. No, no one's dying. Queen Pain has a salve. She just salves right back up. Get some of her items. And she's going to bottle core. No, get your fucking bottle, you dumb whore! Here in America, we just don't give away bottles like that. Does she realize it? Oh, you stupid bitch. Oh, God. You dumb fucking Asian. Hannah Montana, there's a free bottle. Oh, she you're realizes now. She, oh, she has no inventory slot. You dumb bitch, your bottle's on the ground. What are you doing? You're a professional fucking player. Okay, fuck the rest of the game. There's some action happening bottom, but we're gonna see when she's... We're gonna see when she finds the mystery of the missing bottle. <laughs> Let me know if the other casters realize this is going on, because I got the I got the inner scoop here. And I was looking at he's looking for the eight minute room. Is, okay, he's got he's got a DD. And go are you go up the river and find the bot? Oh, when it turns today, she still doesn't know this dumb. Oh bot. oh old old by TC bot. Look. Oh TC doing the song of her people. He's gonna maybe try to pick off Lodo. Oh they're gonna get him. It's for gonna sure. be a second kill on TK. Yeah they get TK oh, once again. Oh, Jo coming down to help with that gank. That's fucking huge. That's huge. At this point, they're trying like, this one fairly. Too. More importantly, too, Jo is uh, he's well on his way to drums. Jo likes to pick up the Sage's Mask and not build it to anything. And oh, she found her bottle. She found it. She found it in the river. She dropped her Iron Branch. You dumb whore. You almost threw the game. Oh, God. <laughs> they're going to be so mad at you when you go back to the sweatshop. And they, and they realize that you almost lost your bottle. You're going to get no oh, drinks. God. If, uh, if Hana got it. That would have been... You can actually use an enemy bottle, too. Yes, you, you can, I know! You can crow that shit in everything. It would have been like a fucking poor-as-fuck Queen of Pain sitting on, like, brown boots and a belt of strength. <laughs> up against, a, like, Beastmaster would have had that lane all of a sudden, just out of nowhere. But that took her about a minute. And if that were daytime and they had day vision, you have no idea how fucked... How fucked Complexity she really don't want to like let Tinker farm that. Now, long. really, really funny to point out as well. If you drop the bottle on the ground, you can see where it was, and uh, she knew, and it was just out of vision too, just barely. She's left behind an iron branch. Oh, is there gonna be a second kill on Tinker? Tinker on mid, and they're gonna yeah, get Tinker. No escape kill. mechanism. They're gonna get the kill. It looks like I'm well on my wow. way to losing five dollars this game. So. <laughs>
What will I ever do? Oh no, you lost your streaming money. Ix Mike has taken another charity tango. Who's it from this time? This time it's from Jo. Poor. How many? How many chicken nuggets is that? Poor, poor. Oh boy, that's a that's a twenty piece. And oh, Ix Mike is getting assaulted in the streets. Quinny Payne has. He's not gonna die. No, he's oh, dead he as fuck. Are you yeah, kidding me? Uh, they have no you would expect. He no, oh, no, I was not going to expect that. Oh, she's doing that. And that's a roar. That's oh, it's going to be a kill. Surprise, it's Hannah Montana. Yes. Hannah Montana hitting that level of 6 from the Ancient Sacks. Now, remember when I watched the other games? Every single game, the Chinese were too foolish to stack their Ancients. But this game, Hannah Montana stacks it every pretty much time he can. This is this is what true Americans and do. And the, the thinker swarming the Ancients at the moment. And, sim and similar, the Asians have discovered Ancients as well. However, their Ancients are much more highly stacked. This is going to get them right back in in terms of gold. This is a hugely stacked Ancients. It won't be enough to get him up to his travels. Not even close, but it'll be it'll be a good chunk of change for Tinker. One more Ancient stack maybe would have been quite helpful. He's angling these perfectly as well. He's getting the full effectiveness out of every single one. Are they gonna take the tower because of uh oh no no Lena's is there? Oh Tinker's in the sad spot. So mm, he has all HP and everything. Still not that close, and this is this combo combo is helping a lot too. I never considered. Oh, that is that gonna be a die for the kill? Wow! And they die on Lena, but punishment for your sin. This was an attempt to get Tinker his boots of travel entirely but it didn't quite cut it as he wasn't able to finish everything that he was going to do there. But this is so well measured. Normally a Tinker would look for that Boots of Travel bottle soul ring maybe 14 minutes in the game is the standard timing. Uh, by doing fallen. the really, really abusive ancient stacking, he's getting a lot closer. Now his skill build is very different from what other players do. Uh, there's a video of Dendi and Bulba debating the skill builds on Tinker on YouTube. But overall, I would argue that getting the two points in laser is not that great. Uh, at all, whereas maxing or getting more points into his rockets would be better, which is something that both Dendi and Bulba seem to agree on. And now the Radiance is trying to utilize the farm in their jungle. He's just smashing these bitches up. Um, his his item build is kind of interesting. You don't really see this all the time. He's going for Arcane Boots Poor Man Shield as opposed to um, Arcane Boots Vanguard, which is something that uh, I see done a, a lot actually. But this is uh, something that's not done as often as you would think. But the decision making or the, the reasoning here for doing this item build is that you don't get a whole lot for completing the vanguard whereas a poor man shield gives you a lot of armor a lot of consistent block and if you want you can just get the vit booster without the ring of health and just getting that vit booster lets you build into a heart later uh, it's sort of like getting a vit booster on weaver in the sense that you have no use for completing the vanguard uh, different players uh, like to do this differently but okay so now they because of the way the march is angled they can just barely see this and this is because the trees are destroyed kind of funny actually because the trees were destroyed in the last kill. Were they not destroyed, that march would have been perfectly laid. But Tinker, desperate for his boots to travel, finally gets him. Probably has him flying over on the Korya. And now Tinker is in business. He has all of the items that he should have 14 minutes in the game. Is that going to be another level. kill on Loda? Oh and my god, that's Loda has had a very rough game right now, actually. He is 1-3. and three. He's been picked off quite a few times. Fluff and Stuff and Jo having the, one of the games of their lives. Everyone having a pretty good game. Um, I'm willing to look at, TC. Like look at how much gold TC has. Wow, that's so much. 2300. He's obviously going to be looking to pick up, pick up that Radiance, rather. Dyer's top yeah, especially in this game. Look at all those uh, squishy girls. That that's going to be another kill on Lina. Oh my gosh, that's oh going to be a kill on And here comes Tinker. Oh, can you actually fight this Tinker? Tinker's almost out of mana. He has song, though. And Naga Siren doing what Dyer's makes her Naga Siren. Deciding I can't win a fight, it's okay, I'm two buttons away from leaving them. <laughs> Next level is going to have his level 2 ult, and eventually later in the game you'll see why playing against Naga Siren is an absolute nightmare. Complexity literally never lets it through the banning phase. It's, uh... No, they don't. If they have first pick, now, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would gonna think... let go. I'm sure... But if they don't, they instantly ban her. I'm like sure a lot that. of people would have looked at J.O.'s items there and assumed that he was going for yields because he had the Staff of Wizardry and a Sage's Mask. However, like I said before, J.O. almost always just picks up the Sage's Mask just for that little bit of regeneration. He never really yeah, builds it to anything. Yeah, he had it in like uh, five minutes in the game. Yeah, he, he, he almost it. never builds it to anything. He just has it for the regen, which is... It's a pretty good item. Like, it, it really helps him out on mid. Now, it stuff? gives him that ability to uh, harass with Cold Snap a lot. Fluff and Stuff has finished his mech, he has it flying out on the courier. Usually one of the earliest mechs that you'll actually get is maybe like 12 to 14 minutes in the game, if you're like Brown Boots mech. However, yeah, he's however Chen, Chen has been moving around the map a lot. Um, he opts to go for the Arcanes, which is, I think is very smart. And he's going to get the mech right when they need it anyways. 
Uh, complexity is notably Dyer's ahead. Top tower is under and they're probably going to look to abuse that fact. It's, there's a fight going on on top. Oh, Loda. Loda goes in really deep. It's only a three second stun. He's gonna get his raw, off, maybe? Oh, Shen saves him! Shen's. Oh, he doesn't. Did he get his roar? He didn't even get his roar off. He opted to throw axes. Oh, and Lina goes down. Or Lina picks off Beastmaster, rather. Jo's here. Is, is he gonna make something happen? Uh, there I think, are full I think hero stuff for Zenith. I, I think yeah. they're just gonna disengage. They're gonna walk away now. No, they're not gonna try to fight over a march. But that was a fight that could have gone a lot better, I think, for complexity. Beastmaster was up for a long time. I think that Chen may have had time to send him back if he wanted to. They, I'm sure that no one expected him to really live that wrong. But that's the strength of Chen. Um, in a team did fight, he a hand of God and Mac. In, in team fight, yeah, he did. In the in team fight, that hand of God and Mac. Oh my God, that's such a big uh, pick. An Invoker picks off Connell somehow, way deep into enemy territory. But that AOE heal for uh, what is it? It's like 450 on all of your heroes is absolutely huge when your heroes have 600 HP. <laughs> Holy like, shit, Jo's cocky as fuck going so deep in. Oh yeah, Jo goes deep. He was taught by Ix Mike himself, the pussy destroyer, how deep he needs to go. Ix Mike has finished his brown <laughs> oh. boots, so he's got his Nike airs. <laughs> I'm gonna put the camera on Luminous for a moment while I alt tap to change the dashboard. Oh, Zenith are looking for a kill. Uh, Lina and CK being smoked. Are they gonna pick up the? Uh, get, they gonna pick up the Naga? Oh, they're gonna find her now. It's okay. You can't Just actually pick off the Naga. Are they gonna make her TP? Oh, oh my four god, they're gonna get second stun. My second, yeah. That's Jesus a Christ! If that was anything short of a four, she would have lived. I can't believe she didn't sing earlier. She had so much time when they were in vision range. It's the daytime. They saw. Oh, he, the recall yeah, gets broken. The recall gets broken. He was trying to get evac. He's going to be in a fine spot, though. He has his drums. So he can just run away. Yeah, he drummed as soon as they saw Invoker behind him. Uh, I was just off of cooldown, Chad is saying. I completely missed that. Because it looked like they were just kind of holding hands in the forest. But now that her song is level 2, it's going to be off cooldown most of the time. And when she hits level 16, you will see why Naga is such a broken hero. She's well on her way to a pretty well timed uh, relic. Now, on heroes like Silver, you can expect to get the relic pretty fucking early. Uh, the same is not true for Naga Siren, not because Naga Siren is innately a much worse farmer or such. Uh, just simply because she's opting for the arcane boots first. Yeah, the arcane so she's going boots. To, she's going to have a much higher. Off. A good way to put it, she's going to have a much higher equity when she actually gets them. It's hard to farm up the relic without your arcane, since this is a very good build by Naga, I believe. Um, it's just that she'll probably be looking for something closer to like a 22 to 24 minute radiance. Whereas Are all the Chen's creeps gonna die? Uh, he gets 4 seconds stun. Load of the stun god. What he lacks in the ability to not die and feed, he makes up for it his ability to roll good force. Zenith, trying to get me back my $5, apparently. <laughs> the game is somewhat in the radiance favor, but not so much so that uh, they cannot lose. They however, have another however, they're, Yeah, but I think you overrate somewhat. It's, this is sort of like the last you game where it doesn't actually just it doesn't actually really come down to just BKB's win. It's just that they have to be able to gain a significant advantage before a certain point. Like this one, this is a sort of game where if it does run into the ultra late game, I don't think that Zenith is as fucked as you think they are. They're not going to be in particularly good shape just because of the strengths of Naga Siren. But it's a game that can really go either way. The actual pacing of the games can be really different. And oh my god, there's a blink dagger up on Tinker. It looks like Queen of Pain. Oh my god, is she actually going to die? Oh no, no EMP barely uh, misses. No way. Oh man, almost though. If uh, if I X Mike would have gotten there in time. Also, this Tinker ensures that it's pretty fucking hard to push. He's got some levels into him. Uh, he has a max rocket, and more importantly, he's picked up his Blink Dagger. And oh, Loda, what the fuck? Loda, no! Oh, you popped your ultimate, but you're fucking dead, Loda! Oh, you dumb fuck. It's okay, your team will carry you. Fluff and stuff is stuck in the middle of some tinkers. Oh, God. God. Okay. That was an awful fight for complexity. Just lay down on my bed and be sad. That was, a, that was an awful fight for complexity. They didn't have a Naga song there. They did not have Naga. The fight was a train wreck. Okay, I'm gonna lay down now. Alright, get comfortable for me. Oh, yeah. Kato getting closer to his urn, but they don't have an urn still. That's a very fucking big deal. They don't really need an urn. No, they definitely need an urn. Are you fucking kidding me? Um, they like, what are you talking about? 
either team. Both teams need an urn, but Zenith doesn't have an urn and they need one badly. Uh, I don't know about that. They have Hen of God, Mech, and uh, I think Rubik has something. But I don't know Rubik what, is the one who would be the person to build an urn and don't have a Hen of so, oh, Was that Tinker trying to fucking farm The Tinker was trying to steal the Ancients up over there by four stepping through these trees. And he was unable to succeed, to say the least. But he got a few creeps off of that. He must have. Well, I'm sure, but it doesn't change the fact that he died. Uh, ultimately, he got fucked because what ended up happening was he didn't have complete vision through, and he got hit with the axes, I believe. Uh, thus, yeah, and then, well, But normally, this kind of play is... Just because it didn't work doesn't mean it's, like, super bad. What he was trying to do was incredibly smart, believe it or not. He angled the Tinker's march perfectly, and he, what he was trying to do was steal Hannah Montana's stack. If he would have succeeded, that's like a high-risk, high-reward thing that he's trying to do. But at this point, they're behind, they can afford to take risks. With the Blink Dagger, he can instantly get away and TP into the trees. However, he got hit from over the trees, which is why he ended up getting fucked. You would need a, you would need the reaction time of a god. Not even Dendi could. could so Dendi is a god, in your opinion? More or less. He's drowned away in his pain in Dota long ago. He's lost his humanity. He's a dead god. <laughs> and we'll see what. And Tinker, though, with his Blink Dagger, really, really easy to defend from, from pushes and just delay the game. But right now, he's just probably going to be looking to push out and farm with the lanes. That said, the enemy heroes he are really very good for fucking the radiance. Yeah, he was just just barely pushing that 22 minute radiance that I mentioned. He's doing a style slap on the ground, obviously because he wants his illusions to farm the wave. He's basically I don't, still, I don't he's think the radiance, I don't think the uh, radiance pickup was a good idea. I think it was a brilliant idea, and I think that not going radiance would have been foolish. His entire item build is based around, and it's probably one of the best yeah, items in Naga. If you're looking for a like. Uh, a death. sustainable long game. No lane. Oh, maybe he's gonna get away. Oh my gosh, he barely gets saved. What? Stuff and stuff. And what, wow. what looked like a gank just turned completely sideways for Zenith there. They almost got him, but once again, that combination of the mech and the hand wow. of God makes Dyer's it so hard to pick off people. Also, attack. the four staff completely saving him. <laughs> Holy shit, that was huge. Yeah, that was a huge play. And Lena Lena died. Still picked up nothing. Probably gonna look to rush that sheet, attack. I would assume, but we'll see. He, he still has a lot of options, and now the radiance is picked up by Naga. And look at that. Look at how much damage she does. That is ridiculous. And more importantly, she can farm so safely now. Uh, oh, and yeah. also deny the enemies a lot of farm. And this is what's really scary. Like I said, if you go this item build, you're gonna get that radiance 22 to 24 minutes in. Uh, these timings are pretty important. I feel like a lot of people don't really know the hard timings for certain items which is very very important but it depends uh, on the hero as well well yeah yeah but i mean even at that like you can have like a lot of like casters and players and spectators sometimes miss out on these things her farm is very good though so she catches it on uh one of the earliest radiances she can actually reasonably get in this build and Dyer's yeah queen of pain is going to be rushing for that sheep stick not going for the ultimate arm instead opting to pick up the mystic staff uh, which is not that bad uh, wow that's a in person. my opinion that's a really bad pick just because they she could get destroyed if yeah. she gets picked, if she's it's out something of that I almost she'll... never. It's something you almost never see. It's really situational, and I don't think this is a very good situation for. And Chen picking up, surprisingly, a ghost scepter. Um, he's basically afraid of the chaos knight killing him in like the mid game. Um, one thing you have to really watch out for, especially on a hero like a Chen with a mech, if you get picked off, your entire team suffers greatly. Um, the pipe that Hannah Montana has doesn't help protect up and stuff against Chaos Knight. Keeps him safe from things like uh, Queen of Pain and Ponies, but uh, you don't want to lose your Chen on the onset of a fight before he gets a chance to hand of God and Mech. That is 550 life on all of your heroes that won't kill Jerry. Perfectly timed Tornado! And the EMP, and the Cold Snap, are they going to get him? Oh, they throw down... Yes. Oh, it's no. up to the Radiance Burn? Oh, barely. Barely miscalculated. Saves. Barely. Coddle finally picks up that urn. Chaos Knight is going to be looking for the Vanguard? Maybe he will maybe he won't finish the Vanguard. I'm going to assume Chaos Knight... Well, he's Chinese, Wait. so he might. I would be surprised if he finished the Vanguard and just sit on top of his items and go for heart, but I'm actually, I actually do think he's going to get the Vanguard, in all honesty. But, and a 24 minute Vanguard, Vanguard he is, that's, uh... he's very, very poor right now. The Chaos Knight is sitting at... He died. How many times did he die? He died a lot. He's down to 280 gold per minute. Uh, the Tinker is farming up really nicely, and Queen of Pain he is not. The this oh is a. God. This is yeah, I know. I mean, the Chinese like to finish it, but this is a fine item build. Um, it's just way more early game oriented. 
getting like a drum and then a vanguard. Um, but if you look, it gives you, it gives you, it gives you, well, it gives you a lot of HP pressure. is the is the main reason that you get it. It just gives you a shitload yeah, of HP, which makes your illusions hard to kill. It actually is good against surprisingly. It, it's weird to think about, but it makes your illusions really really good against spells, not so much against physical attack, which seems so counterintuitive for an item to pick up like a vanguard. But that is actually the case. Uh, he's probably very worried about one invoker destroying his illusions and uh, Naga Siren as well. Naga Siren is getting very very big though. She may look to pick up a bit booster next if she's looking to go straight for that heart. But she could also oh, look go for at it that DPM. Yeah, she is absolutely rolling in money right now. She's at 430 DPM. Tinker is quite farmed as well, but... What the fuck is Tinker doing in there? Tinker is big dicking it, but he's trying to kill the wave with his marsh. But again, with a oh, they're going to push so bot, awesome. and there's no one bot. Uh, I don't even think they're going to look to defend this. This tower is so low, they're just going to let it fall. They may be able to defend it if they prep for it. They throw the pipe down to protect from... Uh, oh, you forgot about the Coddle. Coddle is so good against this. Oh my god, look at that! Look at that magic damage! Did you see how everything just got erased there? And they even had the pipe on it. Yeah, they even had the pipe on it. That just that just shows you how much magic damage they have. Now imagine if that's not your fucking Chen Creeps that have 1100 HP, and that's your heroes. This shows you why things like pipe are so critical. Without that pipe, people like Ix Mike would just evaporate. He needs to get help from I'm Mr. wondering what's, uh, what's gonna happen in the late game if they get their... Is uh, Naga Siren going to have to ult just to pick off the Coddle in well, their base? Well, the thing is, link? it's just the way that Naga plays is really, really interesting, and neither team is explicitly too ahead. Uh, I mean, obviously, Complexity has a slight gold lead, but it's so slight right now. And, what's, what's and with the lineups, it's like 5k, as you say. But at any rate, uh, a lot of a lot of Complexity... It, like, Complexity's uh, lineup has the kind of... It's just good all game, really. Here's like Invoker. Invoker gets... Uh, he stays good throughout the entire game. Uh, despite BKBs coming out, but more importantly, like with this, like with the Chen and the Beastmaster with the pipe, it's 400 spell damage evaded as well as at level 16, which Chen will get to this game probably. Uh, Chen has an AOE heal for like 450. That's a thousand more HP on all five of your heroes. And if you look, that's hugely important because all of this fucking magic damage that they have on Zenith, they have all of Tinker's rockets and more importantly his march. They have Coddle's blast, which is ridiculous. They have Quap. They have Lena. It is really, really, really aggressive as an early team, but uh, more importantly, it scales in the late game because Chaos Knight should be able to completely destroy someone, a single target, but he is so fucking poor right now. He is sitting on top of a Vanguard that he got 24 minutes in the game, drums and treads. Uh, press W and look at last hits and the nines. That's a really interesting thing to see. I'm sure That's that Jay was just farming out of, or TC rather, just farming out of control. Yes, but look at the other uh, players, like... Uh, Complexity totally has the lead in that, like, it's huge. I would say the Complexity is simply one very slight iteration above them in the sense that, uh, I want to say that, look at Coddle, look at Lena, and look at CK, they're but, but so here's, on. Here, well, here's what they're going for right now. They're, like, Complexity is looking to stack 200 last hits on one very, very farm hero. Uh, which is funny because that's usually what the Chinese tend to do as opposed to the American teams. And they stick a good amount of last hits on their invoker, which is on par with the Tinker. So this, they have one hero. So basically, here's a, here's a more simple way to look at it. Um, more or less, Zenith has one hero that's really, really farmed. Uh, so does Complexity. Um, Zenith's really, really farmed hero being Tinker. Complexity is being their invoker. Um, then they what? have, that's then they have, then, they, then both teams have a handful of heroes that are moderately farmed. The Beastmaster is moderately farmed, the Chen is moderately farmed, the, the Chaos Knight is moderately farmed, the Quap is moderately farmed, and then both teams have their one very, very poor hero, Lina and Rubik. The only difference between the teams right now is that, and this is a huge difference, is that Complexity Tenaya has one hero that's very, very fucking farmed, and that's their Naga. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that they cannot win, it doesn't mean that they cannot lose, and I would say that going into the Ultra late game, uh, neither team is explicitly ahead or behind. The, the ultra late game would be like CK actually having items. Is it's, that it's, this is overall just going to be a very interesting matchup, simply because of like how Naga team, how Naga lineups just play. Um, Naga is looking right for that heart. Doesn't even go for the vit booster. Just gets the whole fucking reaver. And when she gets that heart, it's all of a sudden going to be a very very powerful timing for them, because it, you're sort of in that intermittent period where Quap doesn't really have a lot of physical damage. Um, sheeps haven't come up yet. Radiant's Tinker doesn't have a sheep. Quap doesn't have a attack. fucking sheep. Uh, and CK doesn't have enough damage. Radiant's and that's going to be where Complexity fire. really looks as, or looks to Dyer's flex their damage to try to take out all of these other powers. Naga throws down the sleep, but it gets cancelled. Are they going to get Chaos Knight? 
Oh, Kessai is definitely gonna go down. He's EMP. He has nothing. He even gets spider almost. Do you see how uh, the uh, Zenith has to dedicate one hero uh, on bottom lane just to defend that tower? And that oh, yeah. hero must be Cuddle because he's the only one that can so actually, actually go down on bottom lane too. And it looks like Lina getting thrown back, getting chaos bolted up by Ike's Mike. Oh, Ice Ice jumps in. Oh, I think I don't know if he's gonna be able to get the kill here though. Laguna Blade is on cooldown, but Lina has a blink dagger. And as this happens, oh, it looks like the Cuddle is getting picked up. Queen of Pain can't defend, tower goes down. And this is like an that. awkward chase for the two dire heroes now. Is TP Ways gonna get really it? Bad oh, barely makes it out. That was such a bad chase. Uh, but they ended, they, up making, they ended up making it a one for one though. I mean, they got something, and that was a very awkward pickup. I don't. No, 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 no. no, no, that, no. that was they actually Quap. That was Quap Sheepstick as well, right there. She just got picked off know. and got. It's just sick lost. What's up? Carl, uh, bought back. Carl instantly bought back, and that's really, really bad. Did he buy back right oh, after he died? Yeah, or yeah. As soon died? as he died, he bought back. Like, they, that's they huge defense, for complexity. Though. They came out of ahead in this fight. I suppose so. They took the tower, they <laughs> took three kills, and the Coddle was bought back. Now, one thing that makes Coddle like, nice is, hero. That, is that you need literally nothing, though, to be useful, because... Uh, now, the hero, I, in my opinion, is just good in certain uh, lineups and overall strategies, but uh, he kind of falls to shit as the game goes longer and longer. But he can still do what he needs to do with nothing, and he just wanted to try to blast maybe a little bit there, but... Definitely he wasn't able to really do anything. I think he may have thought that the enemies were going to try to get the tier 2, but Complexity is in no rush because they're about to hit their timing. This is when Naga Siren, like I said before, is level 16 with a fucking heart. Radiance uh, that's, tower it's so attack. hard to deal with. A Naga Don't Siren has a, radiance. a ra that's Well, I mean, obviously she has the Radiance. It's implied that she has the heart. She's, she has a Radiance and a heart, and uh, she's, level, she's almost level 16. She'll get radiance level 16 before the next fight. And that... Is a goddamn nightmare because still Tinker, look at Tinker. He's just like a thousand gold off a sheep. Look at Queen of Pain. She's just barely doesn't have a sheep. She's like a wave and a half from a fucking sheep. She's not anywhere near level 16. And this is when, right now, complexity is so much stronger than Zenith. Not just because they have a fucking enormous gold lead, or because their experience lead is high, but just because this Naga, like every little bit. I, let's check out the equity of the heroes. Uh, what does it say? Net worth. There's like a 10,000 gold lead right now for complexity. That's all on the Naga. I mean, if the Naga rage quit the game right now, it would be a dead even game. That's how that's how <laughs> strong complexity is right now. So anyone who's saying that this game can look either way right now uh, is banking entirely on the idea that complexity fucks up so colossally in this next group fight, or in this next group fight, that, that they lose any advantage that they have. Right now, no, 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 like no, no, no. Look Queen of Pain, uh, Pain, still no sheep. Still no sheep. I'm Tinker, sorry for interrupting still you, no but sheep. what if uh, they sheep, um, they sheep Naga? That they'd have, they to, go, they'd have to go in a very, very, very long game. The thing about Naga is, just if you sheep her, it doesn't really matter, because you can still, you still have your fucking illusions to hit the deal with shit low of damage, running yeah. around clobbering people. You've seen a lot of AoE damage to deal with the Naga Luchis, which... Look at that pipe! Oh my god, that, that was such a bad That was song. the worst song in my, that I've ever seen. So, TC is trying to get, trying to make sure I don't lose my $5. He's trying to fuck up about as hard as he can. Because cause we all know that they would have to completely throw this game. I don't, uh, I don't know, it's all it's all going to be based on the next fight, and what's going to happen if uh, if TC gets sheep, how many times he gets sheep. I'm going to just disagree with you entirely and say that it doesn't matter at all how many times he gets sheep, and that they'll just Radiant's steamroll the next fight no matter what. In fact, they can look to try to flex over Arash as well. Um, oh my god, hi hi, you just got spotted! The tornado sees him, he knows it. Oh look, they're, they're going deep on him! Oh, hi, hi, what the fuck are you doing? But, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this. What is, first of all, what is Hannah Montana doing here? <laughs> you just sent him right back to base, wow. He has become the war, but he has his blink dagger, so they can look for really, really aggressive picks. Um, 12k lead for uh, complexity. Oh yeah, and again, it's just all on the Naga. <laughs> so what were you saying about Merka and their team? Uh, it's okay, they'll, 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 they won't win a best of three. I got, I, I'm still happy where, where I put my $5. I blame Loda, you fucking noob. But uh, this is sort of oh, how God. you can play. Oh, Loda, what the fuck, Loda, dude? Loda, God again. Oh, Loda, you owe, me, you owe me $5, you fucking retard. <laughs> Alright, now if you think about it, now if you think about it, 
That is like 22,000 gold in terms of what's on the field right now for this 4v5. They cannot defend this tower. There's nothing they can do. Any kind of attempt to defend it would be foolish. However, they have a really, really uh, strong set of wards up for defending that tower and trying to do Rosh. Now, this is almost plays right into the Dyer's hands. Except for the fact that Naga can get Alacrity. And it's a fucking Naga Siren! You can't fight that at the Rosh pit. Jesus fucking Christ. Look at that. See, she just sings and finishes Rosh. She can just leave if she wants. I mean, this, like, what the fuck, Zenith? Come on. Get on get on Lotus level. So there's... I put my trust in Lona, Barney 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just got a Shiva's. Quab got her. Uh... Now, at this point, I agree with the Shiva's pickup, just because, again, she being the Naga doesn't really matter. But doing enough AoE damage to put his illusions down really does. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Look at how beautifully he actually plays this though. His movements are like, it's like art, I'm not even being sarcastic. This guy is so fucking good at the game. Ooh. This ice 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 guy, but at this point, it doesn't matter. He can try his little Asian heart out, but at the end of the day, his team's odds of winning this are very low. Um, this is where complexity can look to, one, they can pick off heroes. Um, okay, two things, two things. Okay, one. They have a Naga with all of these fucking items now flying out what appears to be a Diffusal Blade, right? Um, and that's a big deal, right? Uh, but more importantly, Complexity can push into high ground, and this is the big one. Here it is. Complexity fucking Smoke Gank. And I'm gonna predict a Smoke Gank because they have a Beastmaster. Oh, yeah, yeah, they always and do Beastmaster it. with a Blink Dagger is one of the best Smoke Ganking heroes. He even picks up a gem to assert their map control and clean up all of the Dire Wards. Also, um, aside from Beastmaster being a really good Smoke Gank hero, uh, Nog Siren is too, for the same reason. Your sleep just catches people out of this shit so badly. And I'm really surprised. Look at that tornado, like, I'm tornadoes. surprised that they're just trying to big kick this down, but look at how well Ice 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 can defend this, even against all of. FUCKING SONG! Oh, you just met Nog fucking Siren! And there's the entire and team. team. Oh, wow. look at that AoE! With that Hand of God, that pipe, that mech. Still, they're just barely hanging on. <laughs> Did Rubik just steal uh, her? The only screen? one that died was Tinker, and he bought back. Yeah, Rubik had the cop screen for that. But he just threw it out all over nothing because it's highest might. And Loda! Wah, wah, wah. Geo going back! Saved by Fluff and Stumble Fluff goes down. Uh, yeah, good save by Fluff, though. Yeah. Loda! More like Throda! <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, he's running in to get the Shiva's off. I don't know if this is his best decision now. I mean, you've just found oh, that guy's oh. ice ice. Is this gonna be like a TC race? This, this is not game yet. Um, but the Chinese <laughs> Look have... Look at those threads! It's almost completely over, though. The Chinese have no fighting spirit, so they may just GG before their axe goes down. <laughs> they have no American fighting spirit. <laughs> you do realize I'm a huge fucking fanboy, and now it's like... My moment. middle tower is under attack. Oh. This is too good. So, thoughts on the first game, Barney? Well, I think that Chad has discovered the problem. Obviously, they realize that Zenith aren't actually Chinese and they're Southeast Asian. Yeah, they're Malaysian. Okay. See, look, they say it right here, but IX Mike support in the USA. But, uh. Clearly. If this is how well, if this is all that complexity can put out against a B team of Asians, not even the Asian master race of the Chinese, how are, are you gonna, fucking kidding how me? How are this they gonna like do a against the full game? Breed? Just like I figured, Zenith was gonna get crushed by complexity no, in the first no. game. <laughs> now I saw this coming because there is only one true and powerful Asian race, and that is the Chinese. Um, if you look, the Chinese teams like DK are really what the real show is. But at the end of the day, at the end Wait, of the you day, put your money on Zenith. At the end of the day, uh, well, I didn't even think that they needed to show their f their true and final form. A lower power level Asian team will probably still wipe the fourth complexity in the next two games. Okay. You know, I just thought about something. You have complexity fluff and stuff on your friends list, right? Yeah. I should add him I'm to mine. I'm not gonna message him during the game. No, no, I know, I know this, of course. You only message him when he's watching replays, and clearly doesn't want to get messaged anyways. But I should add him to my friends list before he wins the international, because then I can say that I'm friends with a millionaire. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. Mike will accept you. But I'm a Twitch TV streamer, so obviously I have a lot of money, so I can claim to be a millionaire myself. 
he may or may not believe it. Oh, so Fluff you, and stuff you'll is, have faked a, up an alien army. friends. Okay, you know that you're fucking ahead when your Chen can nearly afford a sheep stick. What the fuck game am I watching? <laughs> Looks like Hi Hi deciding he wants to go on a little camping trip. When I X Mike will get like uh oh uh oh you've been you, it's an eagle oh the eagle wasn't invited to the camping trip oh no Queen of Pain what are you doing oh you're a sheep now oh you look look at the eagle he's mocking me Queen of Pain get shouted out I can only imagine what Hannah Montana was shouting at you dumb bitch <laughs> that was like the uh, winning shout the oh, fuck oh they're happy look at the experience lead twenty thousand experience lead for the radiant uh. And as I say that, it looks like Tinker gets picked off as well. And 20,000 gold Look lead. at, look at net worth. And, oh, I'm looking at net worth. <laughs> look at Tinker being so fucking low. Like, Hannah and oh, Chen. Yeah, he's, he's flow right a low. That's right. Oh, and it looks like, uh, Mantis Iron, not sure what she wants to get next. She just decides, fuck it, I'll buy an entire Manta style. She doesn't even need it to Rax them. Look at this. She's rubbing it in. Towers? Ha, towers don't hurt me, I'm a Naga side. Oh, that's right, he's doing the damage. Hi. That's right, Naga Siren, completely balanced hero, her ult is back up in 11 seconds. And, Chinese, true to not having any fighting spirit, decided to just opt out of the game. Before even dying. What an American team would have done, is they would have fucking died defending their ancient. They would have died defending their ancient like a fucking man. But these Chinese will just jump ship before anything happens. I am but I am absolutely disgusted. First game going to Cole. Well, it is a best of three, however. And uh Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is what this was totally not a one. Right, I don't know game. if you've ever watched Dragon Ball Z or not, Ix, but a lot of the time you remember you remember when it. you remember when the powerful bad guys would be like No. Ah, that is not my final form. Well, they're just gauging they're just gauging the power level of complexity right now. It's what they're doing. Yeah, that's not. They're going to bring it back in game 2 and game 3 is just going to be a slaughter. I'm calling it now, X. I have $5 here. What they need to do is they need to get rid of Loda cuz this filthy Want to double it up? This filthy fucking No, I don't want to double it up. What kind of what kind of fuck <laughs> What kind of fucking retard would double up on a bet when they're losing? Did you just ask me that. <laughs> Well, you seem like really, really Do you confident think I have about doubts? what's gonna happen no. in the next games. No, it's okay. It's okay. That's just gonna make it that much worse when your team loses. Now, Loda, obviously being a filthy Swede, is used to winning. Is used to living a very comfortable lifestyle, where uh, his team, CLG, uh, the government, basically just gives him money uh, to do everything. He wants to get a uh, BKB. He wants to get a Vanguard. No, he has to work for his Vanguard last game, and you see what happens. He gets a 25-minute Vanguard and throws the game for me. So hopefully they'll stick Loda on a roll. Like, uh, they'll put him on Feed Bitch support. And they will let the Asians carry. Uh, the Asians... No, carry. The Asians and their ability to rice clearly far exceeds what happens when you put a Swedish person on it. Uh, <laughs> but was what, what, also, what also Ix fails to recognize is that um, in reality... He's putting all of his eggs in one basket on complexity, whereas for me, it's a win-win either way. Because for me, if I lose, oh uh, yeah, uh, uh, no, no, listen, just America. don't interrupt me, okay? Okay, you filthy Swede. But I know it's okay. No, no, it's okay. I don't, I don't want to hear your gypsy lies right now uh, in Romania over there. <laughs> because here in America, if if I lose, if I if I win this bet, right, I'm up five dollars. Capitalism win for everyone, except you. And uh, if I lose the bet, it's okay because America wins. U.S. Team USA wins. So we're gonna take a we're gonna take a look and see what they're doing. They're probably gonna do some interviews. It looks like the chat agrees with me. Five and zero oh now, not four and zero. Oh. Six hundred twenty-three GPM. That's really looks like really they're high. looking at absolutely irrelevant stats right now. Another gets involved otherwise. Um, HY, HY. Uh, this doesn't matter at all because yeah, all it says is that on average Naga Siren wins games. <laughs> Record tomorrow. Maybe you know, we'll see them easy. next game. Yeah, I think generally with the And also like commenting on how his kill to death ratio and gold per minute is really low is stupid as well, considering that Queen of Pain that player wins like every game with him pretty much. He just lost one game. But only thing notable there is that complexity hasn't lost a Naga Siren game. That said, I would shit my pants if Naga Siren made it through on the second pick.
matchup was these big team fights early on. Oh, and that's what happens if you let them go. The, the highest um, in terms of kills, I think it was like five. Uh, Zenith and, uh, let them point, let yeah. Naga and go through against DK and, and they won, the so they and probably felt confident about the next down, game. And it was so that close call just completely and destroyed then them. Just couldn't do it. Do you think they kind of underestimated how? I think what ended up defining the game here was that um, one. Uh, Team USA did a really tactical dodge on the Asian tri lane, and uh, two, as they were swapping their lanes, they shit all over everything. Uh, like complexity, how many pickups did they get for that Naga Siren? Three or four was it? I think it was four. Just kills fed to the Naga Siren, and that threw the game so heavily in their favor because it allowed the Naga Siren to get her core items up like two minutes earlier, just based on kills. Twenty-two goals. minute radiance, I mean, really twenty-five minute. No, nah, that was like a thirty-minute heart. Okay, if you got a twenty-two minute radiance and then a twenty-five minute heart, I want it. Like, I think you're selling drugs in the woods during those three minutes because <laughs> you're probably like you're probably like fifteen hundred gold per minute. Like, that's ridiculous. Thirty minutes. They were protecting their towers very well. I mean, complexity Still that game was a fun game, right? Jo given all. You know the thing is that the thing is. D-Boom in chat. You say that 2GD is more of a personality than anyone else, which is a valid point. Um, in the sense that he's not really like a huge member of the Dota 2 community, right? Whereas people like Gods are. Uh, or at least they try to be. But at the end of the day, people like LD and like uh, the fat ass here and this random fuck. Like who the fuck is who the fuck is this guy? Second game. And this guy, okay, this guy actually is... Look at this, look, I'll match, put some in here. But at the same time, at least 2GD is interesting and funny. And also I was like, this guy is intolerable. Like, oh, how funny. LGD tomorrow. But if Zenith win the next game, we're going to, of course... God, he looks so calm. What, the players? Yeah. I'm even more excited. What the f Oh, no, never mind. I Mike smiling and being all happy. No, well, I want to see Ix Mike out. Who wants to see these fat slobs? Oh, uh, he's, uh... Oh god. Oh, my shit is lagging. Wait, did Hannah get a haircut? What the it's fuck? I'm like watching a reality TV show, Dota Edition. <laughs> Why did Hannah get a haircut? Oh god, I hope I don't have to restart my computer because I'm lagging like yesterday. No, I don't think I am. I think I'm fine. So, I wonder when... Do you know when, do you know how much of an intermittent time they have between the games? I don't know. Uh, it's probably because uh, Zenith asked for a moment. Look at Zenith's cam. Uh, how do I see Zenith's cam? Oh, uh, go, go. Uh, it says Dota 2 Pod 2 playing Dota 2 on Dota 2 International. Click the Dota 2 International thing and go to Dota oh, yeah, 2. Yeah, this has all their related I reality cams. Yeah. There's a Russian one, eh? Mm -hmm. I'm surprised how few viewers it has on the actual streams, simply because it's broadcasting in-game and everyone watches it in-game. Oh, they're loading in. I the Russians guess... watch just the same thing. Pod 1 is where Zenith is. Mm -hmm. But they're all talking and shit. They're, they're grouped up talking about... What is this guy in the back doing? They're, they loaded into the game, I think. Yeah, yeah they're, they're in the game. Do you know how much these player boosts actually cost as well? They're absurdly oh, yeah. expensive. The game, the game's uh, about to begin. Hooray. Alright. Getting back. Ed. Oh, it's pre game. Alright. No. On 3D has 30k viewers. For the reason. <laughs> well, I'm going to point out one reason that own 3D streams have more viewers than the Twitch TV streams that are broadcasting oh, the exact same thing. And I'm sure that as soon as I say it, everyone will absolutely believe me immediately. Bad. First of all, it's the stream that's embedded, and two, it's the one that's. Uh, Toby. Yeah, exactly. But Toby's not actually casting these, is he? Hmm? Yeah, he is. I think he is. I'm not sure. Never uh, he's not casting it, dude. He would have a uh, thing if he was. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. That's there's true. literally just a... Uh, like, there's just an international... Uh, it's the one that's embedded into the client. It's the same reason that the game gets, like, 60,000 spectators. Like, it's... The own 3D one is just the one that's embedded on Join Dota. It's not actually Toby Look at one. the Chen ban from Zenith. Alright. So, immediately... Zenith decides to ban out uh, the Silver once again. Um, Complexity does not have first pick, so what do they do? They ban out Naga Siren and they ban Darkseid. They don't have they don't have the first pick, so they ban it. They say fuck it, we don't want to play against Naga Siren. That is an annoying hero, and they ban out Darkseer for the same reason. And uh, the Chen ban is somewhat common, obviously, but opting to actually ban him out instantly so these days is less common. Um, Notably, there's still a Lycan on board, and uh, 
it's kind yeah, of fall, it kind of falls on complexity. Yeah, it kind of falls on complexity to actually ban this out. And in all seriousness, complex like when you're the second, uh, you're the second pick. You you're the one who's actually tasked with banning mm -hmm. out a lot of those like. I don't want to play against complexity these heroes type heroes like Lycan, Naga, Siren, and Darkseer. It's really common bans for the Dire when they have a uh, last pick. Simply because uh, you don't want to let any one of those heroes into the game. And that you realize this, what uh, that allows is the it allows Zena to ban out really specific heroes. Like they don't want to play against TC's uh, Silver, so they don't. They don't want to play against uh, Fluff and stuff. Fluff and stuff. So they don't. Yeah. They don't want to play against a Rubik, so they don't. Mike's. Rubik. Mike's. Well, I mean, it probably doesn't even matter who plays the Rubik. They just don't want to play against Rubik in general. That's sort of like a ban that's similar to like the uh, like in the Dark. The Star. Rubik ban was uh, was because they wanted, thinking, wanted, wanted to. Both profit is still up though. <clears throat> yeah, and there's gonna be Jail's gonna get profit and. Uh, now, notably, notably, Invoker sure. has been less of a first pick recently, to the point where he gets um, like last game he made it through to like the ninth pick or something. So I'm willing to bet Geo's going to go mid with Prophet. He may, but when they do that, that's just one of the things that they. Um, this is one of their like very specific strategies where they're looking for like a nine minute mech. So we'll see if they commit to doing that immediately, because that's something that will be probably seen. Later, because they have other people who can play Reserve the profit. Time. Never mind. They wouldn't take so much time on uh, on this, so they're probably not gonna do that. Wow. Well, well, this is they're, where they make the first. They're definitely they're definitely gonna pick a. This is profit. this is usually where you bust into most of your bonus time. Just oh, because, they, But this is what listen. This is usually where you bust or break into most of your bonus time because it's where you commit to your first strategy. Really, like now they've committed fairly heavily to getting a Templar Assassin mid for Jo. Um, it's like the only way that Jo ever plays Templar Assassin. And wow, Lashrak. that's an interesting pick from uh, Complexity because they never pick really? Lashrak. Really? No, no, they never pick. Yes, I'm 100% sure I've seen. Like, that's oh no, that's not. Wait, no, that can't be true. I've seen Lashrak played uh, like over and over by them. Like Fluff and stuff plays it all the time. I've seen like three different uh, Fluff and stuff Lashraks. It'll probably be Fluff and stuff playing it. I think Fluff and stuff mostly uh, plays um, Chen. I realize that, but he also plays the Lena and Disruptor. He plays those heroes. Yeah, but like heroes, a lot. heroes like Disruptor and Lena are pretty much the same as playing oh, a Shrak in terms of role, um, in the way that he plays as the Shrak. Well, I'm, there's I'm the Morphling pick from Zenith because they're scared as fuck. And uh, then... also Morphling, like super good hero, S super good against Templar Assassin, or actually, eh. I don't know. No, no, he is, he is, but but it, it's just the way that Zenith has to play them. You would think that oh, he he blocks the shotgun, but it actually doesn't matter since the Asian teams almost never go for the shotgun. Like, especially like Zenith, like the last game. Like, think about all the other games that Zenith has played Morphling in this tournament. They've done pretty much the Manta style thing, and Manta style is really, really good against Templar Ten Assassin's Melt. Except, uh, at the same time, Templar Assassin can shred through illusions, but that's it's something Five that you're inevitably going to have to deal with no matter what. But the Morphling so thing is just really, really, I think, predictable just because uh, Morphling has been such a first pick, first Zenith's band material hero throughout the tournament. Ban. He's a really, really big fan, in, uh, or a really, really common pick. And he can do a lot of things. It's a really, really solid pickup, I think. And then Complexity picks up the Tidehunter. So again, they're picking those really, really big team fight heroes, sort of like what they did last game. Let's so what's really Tidehunter. interesting right now is that TC doesn't have a hero yet, and neither does Axe Mike. TC, uh, TC's tiny. TC plays a mean, mean tiny with like Yasha and uh, I. Hmm. Axe. I. We'll yeah, see if we, we'll see if he does it against the Morphling. I've seen it done a lot against Morphling. So that's something to think about as well. Um, also, it's most likely going to be an offlane Tidehunter, just because Hannah Montana likes to do the Tidehunter, and when Complexity drafts a Tidehunter, they rarely ever go for the tri-lane Tidehunter, they usually go for the offlane. Yeah, they never do that. Yeah, they yeah. go for the offlane Tidehunter, and then they get their Lashrak play with Complexity. stuff. Zenith can do That's a things. really interesting ban from Zenith, because I've... It would have been a smart uh, pickup. It would have been a great pickup for any kind of tri-lane, and also you could stick him in a relatively safe farm lane. Panda yeah, really but that, well that means too. they didn't study Complexity's mm. play. Yeah, I'm, like sure that, I'm sure that just like last game, Puff and Stuff spent so much time preparing for this match, he knows exactly what he's going to be going up against. Yes. He's, he spent a lot of time. And I'm willing to bet he's going to spend a lot of time, uh, like double that time to, uh, to prepare against LGD. Because of course they're going to win Plus this game. actually bans out the Enchantress. That's a really, really smart ban, because Chen has already been banned out. Um... And one thing that would fit really, really well into Xena's lineup is an Enchantress, because one, he's one of those really, really very, very powerful uh, sort of jungle-esque heroes. Uh, he fills basically the same role as Chen, just he does it a bit they differently, but more importantly, it just lets them uh, execute the same strategies that you would Five generally with a Chen in terms of lanes. Uh, but it looks like they're spending a lot of time for their next ban. 
the Chinese really love Enchantress. Like I've seen so many Enchantress picks. They like this their tournament. They I don't like their Shen that... and their Enchantress. They value it way more highly than other teams. Although other teams definitely value those heroes pretty highly. But it's just like that and the Chen, man. They really really like those heroes. Obviously. God damn! But the Chen uh, last game, Fluff and stuff did like a great job as a Chen. He saved Jeon Med. They ban out the Chaos Knight? That's an interesting ban. I don't know if uh, Kamuxu would have actually picked that up, though. No, yeah. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't think they would have picked that either. I think they had something else in mind. I, I, I'm I, pretty sure Fluff and stuff has something in mind for TC, and that's like a tiny. But, again, they need, like, a TC loves to play a hard carry, and... I don't know. Maybe, so like, a wild... Pick. Wild shot what? I'm throwing. Uh, an AM? I highly doubt it'll be AM though. I've never seen that. I've never seen TC play AM. Also, AM that's... has dropped off so hard in popularity with teams like Complexity, EG, and those other teams. Because they're mm -hmm. usually I know. much more aggressive. I think it. Hmm, it's interesting. They'll probably just pick up a support for Mike, but that can wait. Like they don't have to show their hand on that one yet. And uh, or they can pick up their, their carry, which could be a tiny. I mean, all the bands have come out, and there's no chance that Zenith will pick a tiny. There's no chance. So they can wait on the tiny as well. Complexity can honestly just wait this out. Just try to buy a little bit more time and see what Zen's team or final team is going to end up being. I'm willing to bet that if complexity picks they pick up, up an AA, so Zenith just doesn't want to show their hand either. They pick up another support, but pick. I didn't expect the AA. But go on. Wow, the AA pick is really weird. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't expect that. It's not particularly bad. It's fairly good against TA, but as as a whole, I really didn't expect that to be the hero that they actually went if, for. If uh, Zenith was going to pick a support, I would have. Uh, I would have thought they would pick a shaker because the Chinese really love their shaker. But that AA pick. What could AA combo with? Uh, basically Venomancer and uh, Morphling just sets up the kill. Um, no, 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 but like a fifth hero. Oh, I like a fifth hero? Um, they're probably mm -hmm. just going to pick like an offlane or a mid. It, I mean, they can still do this number of ways because they can also go with Morphling. Look at it! Yeah, and like you, said, like you said, it'll be the time. So oh. this is this is what I was saying earlier, where they wanted to maybe wait on on their support in the tiny, where it, like I, I don't think they had to show the hand with tiny since there's again no chance that Zenith will pick it, but. I'm not actually they surprised that they picked up the Tiny just because Tiny is such a common, it's one of those really popular complexity heroes. Uh, and this, no, is, this, is, this, this is what, so it's going to be probably Jo on the Templar Assassin, Fluff and stuff on the Lashrak, Hannah Montana on the Tidehunter, and uh, most likely going to be TC on the Tiny, that's one of Tiny's signature heroes. And they do pick up a mid slash side lane Queen of Pain. They, we'll see what they have to lane it with. I get the feeling it won't be a side lane Morphling, but it could. It just seems unlikely at this point. Um, but TC's Tiny is really nice. It's very flexible. Uh, you can put him in a number of lanes. Um, a lot of the time, because of his early game potential, Complexity likes to put him in a tri lane. But we'll see what they end up doing. Now they'll probably pick something to go with Lashrak and Tiny, which is such a high kill power lane, but it has to be a specific hero. It has to be a hero that's really able to set up a lot of uh, stuff. So we'll see what they end up going for. They have to put Quap on, on a suicide lane. <laughs> Every lane is basically going to be a suicide. Uh, they can stay playing. Uh, wow. We'll Lich. That I've never seen Ike's Mike play that. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I didn't expect a Lich, but uh, yeah, me either. they can put him in the lane with the Tiny, but what's also possible, and this is Ike's Mike's hero, um, as expected, they did the exact heroes uh, for the Chinese teams that I expected, but uh, I really didn't, I don't know who the fuck the Asian team is, so I don't really care, but... Uh, you put five they, dollars on them. They, yeah, I know, but the, I didn't think Complexity would win. But the, the players for the different heroes for Complexity are fairly straightforward and predictable. But I didn't see the Lich coming, uh, just because. Yeah, me. I, a lot I of the time, a lot I... of the time when like Asian teams and it, this used to be more popular in the beta when Animage was more popular and uh, Morphling was less popular. But it just when in the beta when um, Animage was really popular, the Lich pickup would just be used to stick him in the offlane and deny farm. But this is obviously not what Complexity is looking to do, simply based on the fact that they have a Tidehunter, um, and that's usually their offline player, Hannah Montana, and Axe Mike is usually kind of the support pitch. Um, both teams are looking for like a really aggressive first blood, and they're actually going to clash here. They have the wards up on Fluff and stuff, because this is probably where they're going to look to put their tri lane. Maybe they're going to do an aggressive lane ward, very, very aggressive tri lane, because they believe their tri lane is stronger. And uh, it is a safe lane Queen of Pain, like I thought it would be. Queen of Pain already going to her lane, and it's a mid invoker. Um, Radiant is going to be doing uh, tri lane that I kind of thought might happen, which is a uh, Morphling, 
a Venomancer and an AA. And this is good because the AA has a good synergy with Venomancer's Gale. The Gale in combination with Cold Feet, it's very, very possible to catch someone out of position. Also, the dam the Magic Damage Amp from Ice Vortex scales very well with uh, Morphling at all stages in the game. Uh, big shout out coming out from Hannah Montana. To battle. Um, <laughs> Loud. Now, one thing that's interesting, um, first of all, Dire gets their lane ward out. Uh, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but a really interesting thing they is that speak American. fucking skin on TC. What? Shout out to myself and no one. Okay, I, I was talking about something really balling, uh, TC's skin on Tiny. Alright, please never Fuck mention him. any of the items in this game as like the swag and, and cool stuff, because it's all fucking retarded and does not matter. Like, no, 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 like, oh, skin. Look, at, look at those bracers. I see Tiny. Nine tangos on. Uh, okay, yeah, that's that's a, that, okay. It's interesting you bring up the tangos. Is that is what I was mentioning when you brought up your interesting skin? Oh. So the yeah. reason he's going for nine tangos oh. is because he thinks his lane is going to be relatively safe and stronger. Tangos allow you to tank up uh, under the tower a lot. Like it, it's also really common to pick up that many uh, tangos if you're going to be up against the darkseer where you know that you're going to be taking creep hits into the tower. Um, or just is if you're going like, to be able and they're actually right. switching up their lanes, so Complexity doesn't want to do the lanes that they've set up. And they want to just stick the Hannah Montana on this lane. I would actually say this is really bad for Hannah Montana, um, even with the aggressive lane war. Yeah. Once again, Complexity... No, Hannah is a really good player. Once again, once again Complexity completely switches up the lanes. They want to avoid the Radiant Tri-Lane yet again, so they just do. Um, I, would ex I would have expected it to be a Lich, though, as the hero that was top. Just because a Lich, um, if he gets kind of shut down and not a lot of stuff... He can he can still make he can limit the anime or the morphling rather's potential farm. I'm just so used to the strategy being used when anime is more popular. Just by constantly using his sacrifice, he can ensure that the highest amount of farm that morphling gets from every single creep wave is three last hits as opposed to four, which is it actually makes a very very big difference if you think about it. Every 30 seconds, uh, like 20 minutes in the game, that's well not 20 minutes but 10 minutes in the game, it's a little, like many many fewer last hits, 20 less last hits that you can get. So instead of being like a 60 CS morphling, it would be like 40. But instead of the morphling with absolute free farm, they decided to make. Uh... They commit two years to really the Invoker. Thing. Very interesting, though, is that the Invoker is going for an XR build, which is something yeah, yeah, that they that usually don't do. Um, especially this game, where the amount of setup stuns is next Dyer's to none. Uh, Queen of Pain doesn't have a stun to set up with. Morphling doesn't have yeah, a stun a really to set bad up with. Deck. That doesn't. Uh, but it just shows they want to get really aggressive on this uh, tri lane. But they're One not able to. One more thing I've seen the Asians do is level up Exhort just once so they have the advantage for cs and lane i've never seen Heroes i've never game. seen anyone do that and i and i would yeah. highly doubt that that's actually the case against the ta because that would fuck them over in so many ways i guarantee he was just doing an exhort build Damn and he opts to get a second point in exhort and they're gonna look for the kill radiant wants to switch up their lanes because they realize that they don't need two heroes to shut down a tide hunter and this is due <laughs> to uh complexity's lane swap so now it's loda and his best buddy uh, aa which is not a very strong lane at all, but at the same time, uh, Complexity's lane is... it's pretty good, actually. I wonder why isn't Loda playing Morph? Now, the thing about Tiny is you have to be so decisive. If you look right now, Tiny only gets plus one to stats. One of the problems with only getting plus one to stats is that you don't have enough mana to do your combo early on. Like, see, he doesn't have a full combo. Not that this would have any chance of actually killing Loda anyways, it just takes him into a range where he's killable in the future. Uh, which is fairly important to do. TA got her boots instead of a bottle. That's a really interesting thing. I've wow. Tis I didn't expect that to happen. Well, she has a bottle. She does. Yeah, she's just crawling it. Three minutes in. Oh. She, and her lane is highly um. Well, it was highly advanced because Ice Mike was here. Ice Mike decides to rotate top. So in response to uh, Zenith's decision that they don't need two years to shut down a Tide Hunter. They just stick a lich up here. Now he's doing what I said he would do, just constantly denies creeps from his own wave. Um, his skill build is and one that's nice farm for more. His his skill build is one that's really good. Um, if it in a high level game, I wouldn't advise you to do this in a pub, but in a high level game it is because having it at a thirty second deny ensures that you never get out of sync with your ability to deny creeps. As the creep wave spawns every thirty seconds, this allows you to consistently deny um, in the same location every single time. So like a minute ago, he was right here when he denied, uh, and as you see, the creep wave will once again pass over this location at the same time that his thing comes off cooldown. Um, so it's very, very good to get two points. In that. A random Sunstrike just went off on the bot lane. I mean, he has to. He's decided to go for this Exort build, I guess. So he has to just throw out Sunstrikes and, uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, yeah, I mean, roll the dice. Because if it hits... Oh, is Jerry gonna get caught? 
Oh god, that was so close. Unfaceable venom. But now is venom gonna go. Oh, no, no, no. And go back again, Morphling CS is just, uh, it's gonna be limited. Uh, getting kind of being smash. a fucking dick and harassing the demorph. Uh, he goes to, he goes for a magic wand, or a magic stick rather, really early to deal with, uh, one, the anchor smash, and two, it's just a solid item to get. TC gets daggered up, but there's no potential to actually kill him. He has a stout shield. He's actually gonna be going for those phase boots first, which is very common for TC. He goes, phase boots drum, but a lot of the time he'll opt to pick up the drum before the phase boots, which is what I like doing. Yeah, TC is going to go for uh, he's gonna go phase, phase boots. He's boots. Gonna go phase boots. Yeah, sure. Well, sometimes some, well, TC does it like two ways. He goes either phase boots, uh, drum, uh, Yasha, Ags, uh, AC, Manta, or he'll go uh, drum, phase boots, uh, right into Ags, right into AC. Then if Manta. he gets uh, if he gets some early kills, he's just going to skip the drum and straight go for uh, the Ags. Yeah, I've seen it uh, once, Sometimes so. when he gets really fed, though, he just gets he goes for the Yasha route, uh, just because uh, either Yasha or Ax, depending on the game and how much farm he has. Then he can auto like it's it, it's one he runs really fast, which is like an obvious. I mean, all of his items have a run speed component, and uh, he hits really hard and he has a sick combo. And he's just really nice here because he farms fast, he carries well, and uh, he has just so much kill potential. And Tiny's such a great hero, like overall, and I don't know why the more players don't pick him. Yeah, okay, I'm really They're gonna surprised. Be first, and oh, the Sunstrike! Sun Sunstrike right on top of Venomance, but it hits creeps as well, so it's divided. And oh, he gets away! Oh, this oh fluff and stuff is fucked. Venomance are barely made it out of that one. We got the salve off. The you do realize the Sunstrike was intended to go on tide. Yeah, but it just hit a bunch of creeps in the hero. Uh, but that really the hero was on that was that was barely off though from. That was really just barely off from complexity. They almost got the first blood on uh, Venomancer, but instead end up giving it away to Morphling. And are they going to get him again? <gasps> he may be overcommitting just a bit. I sleep no, they get it. The Venomancer tanking it up, breaks tower aggro. Ah, uh, fucking Hanno throwing the game. Well, now, Venom now all of a sudden, things are really rough because Morphling just got a first blood double kill, which was not expected in any way. It really hurt them. Now it's all all gonna be up to Tiny and uh, Tiny against the uh, Morph. Wow. And TC almost has his phase boots. Now TC is getting good farm, um, but he's not getting free farm, and that's that's a very very big distinction. And uh, furthermore, the Queen of Pain she is actually dead. getting fine farm herself, which is not. A good trade-off. Also, Templar Assassin's having a really hard time mid. The entire game, the Invoker has been out farming her slightly. Which is not a good spot. And he throws down another Sunstrike. Pretty good Sunstrike from all. Uh... Yeah, he gets the glitch on the bottom lane. That's good because yeah. those are going to be somewhat hard to land. Unless they get frozen by the AA, which I imagine is going to happen. The only mm -hmm. side that they have. You got smoke. The awkward moment where you're watching Invoker and his hands move and you're like, well, now I have to find the Sunstrike. <laughs> but... Also, oh, you have about else. a second. I know. Oh, he tries to hit Jo with the meteor and the cold snap, but Jo jukes just to the right. Very, very smart because the amount of damage that that combo does is so absurd. If you don't react, yeah, he realized he he had a fractional cooldown. That was a great thing. We'll see that, if he fishes uh, for the sun strike, maybe. Oh man, he's so afraid of the sun strike and ha and wants a zero percent chance of dying. They actually, he Ix Mike salves him on his way back to the base. They're that afraid of the sun strike. Yeah, well, they should be. Probably they shouldn't have there. Regeneration. So you don't want DC to die. So it looks like uh, the Radiant has a pretty high gold lead for eight minutes into the game. Yeah, it's not insurmountable, but the, the most important thing is just the fact that with this gold lead. Oh shit! My camera just swerved off, but it's okay. Uh, the thing that's the thing that's really important is that they had this gold lead without any towers down. So. A lot of the time, the gold graph is really variable, just based on the fact that, uh, like, it's really back and forth seeming, entirely based on the fact that, uh, towers. You trade towers back and forth, the gold moves a lot every time a tower goes down. No towers are down for either side, which means that Radiant has a really, really, um, important gold lead. I also like how during the course of these matches, uh, Complexity had more things than Zenith, but then Zenith in the, like, throughout the games got more, more penance. <laughs> See, it just shows that everyone knows that you can't bet against the Chinese masters over here. 
And this is actually so surprising. I I can see invokers picking up treads as something that was a thing that they do often, but picking up the urn is just really, really surprising to me. Did you think he'd get an urn? I had no idea. That, that way he'll get charges he from all those sunstrike kills that he's helping out with. Oh god, is there going to be a kill on mid? Oh, no, it looks like they're just going to completely, completely fuck up. Throw an ice wall on the floor and then drop a chaos meteor to try <laughs> to erase the ice wall. Yeah, literally everything missed. Now, if this were not on a LAN, or not, it's not LAN, but I mean, if this weren't uh, everyone in the same place, then uh, the Chinese would be like, lag, and then the commentators would be like, oh, it's just really hard to land those combos with Asian ping. But let's be honest here, they just fucked up. They're trying to find a way to lose me my $5 bet. Should and Jay was getting, he's gone for the really drum now. Looks like Zenith has a pretty... It's not even that big, it's not insurmountable, it's just it's just The XP graph? The XP or the gold, dude. Like, it's just like, the, these are going to be small humps in the scale of things. But the big thing is, again, just the lack of tower speed. Tower is under attack. Look at the XP per minute. Click R. No, it's not that, so that's not that surprising. I mean, it just means... I mean, it's Denied. kind of expected, I guess. But more importantly... Um, the fact that Quav has 300 uh, XP per minute, that's... Really bad for Cole. More importantly, though, this invoker has just been left to free farm mid for pretty much the whole game. And uh, he just helps his team while free farming by just landing sun strikes. Yeah, he landed two good, really good sun strikes. And in two levels, he's going to have his forged spirits, and that's going to be really, really big. But still, I'm surprised by that orange pack. I'm really surprised. A ult is flying up. Are they gonna try to go after this hits? Oh, they're not. In oh, position. DC's. Oh, the sun strike is so just close. off. Just off. They're just trying to really try to fuck TC over with those global abilities. Yeah, they were just looking for someone to pick off. Well, if I think they just yeah. barely mistimed it, as their heroes on top lane were too far back. If they would have been in range for the Gale, that could have led into the sun strike almost immediately. But TC getting his bracer a long time ago, but not actually delivering it. He got a producer? He's had it forever. Oh. Uh, there's <laughs> no strike on TC that lion, so. Yeah, I saw that. They just harassed him with him. That cost him a salve, too, right there. I mean. Just one more thing to think about as you try to last it under a tower. <laughs> It's not like it's already hard enough. TA still gets it. Well, it's usually pretty easy, but I mean, you can't like tank up the creeps and do other things. It's just really annoying because he has to consider the fact that no matter what he does, if he stands too far or too still in one place, he can get A ulted and sunstrike, at which point he's down a lot of HP. Or dead. Yeah. It's like a Depending 250 well magic damage, happen. which basically equates to about 200 damage. And then uh, 300 damage sunstrike. Half of his HP, and here we go again. An A ult flying towards There's top. The oh, it's not gonna they, they know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They know. They could see that one flying throughout the entire mid lane. But really fishing for it pretty hard. Yeah, they really oh, need to go They're see. still committing to this tri lane. Interesting. But their tower's taking a good amount of chip damage every time. Hi Hi looking really, really aggressive. Not quite farming up as fast as the tiny, however. His Queen of Pain is getting a good amount of farm, and his Queen of Pain is certainly getting more farm than the Tide Hunter. And the Are Invoker they pressuring getting, the top tower? Invoker to getting a, a lot of farm, however, whereas Jo getting slightly less as well. So Radiant getting more farm pretty much everywhere, with the exception of top lane, which isn't as bad because uh, Complexity is giving two heroes, getting nothing to this. Complexity has to the do only, something. The only hero back really has nothing into this game. Here on the other team, there is another Ail. Ail and a Sunstrike completely miss once again. Radiant quite ahead, but uh, Chinese can't understand skill shots. Oh wow! On a dying bot. Montana dies bottom. That's not gonna help them at all. Loda probably busting his ult for that. Yeah, he does. That damage amp from uh, AA just synergizes so well with so many different heroes. Still, this game looks pretty bad for Cole. They need they need a fight where they win like. They wiped him.
they have the Tidehorn, which means they're gonna have like a decent fight, and the Tiny and the Lich, they have a huge team fight combo, but I don't know how they're gonna uh, do it, because if they fight right now, Zenith is far more ahead with the uh, whole farm on Invoker and Morph. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how the first fight in this game is gonna go. Bottom tower is under attack. Invoker getting edicted down. They can tell where the Invoker is too, because uh, you can see where the edict lands. Ouch! Oh, they have the Sunstrike and the Ale. He's gonna go down to this. Wow, that was really well timed. Is TC gonna die as well? Oh my god, TC died. Wow. Oh. Yeah, getting picked Dyer's off. And yeah, the tower going down, not getting denied. Cole fucking up a lot this game. Wow. Wait, how did Jo go down? A Sunstrike as well? Jo didn't die. Or TC, rather. No, Morphling got him. Oh, Morphling, yeah. He was TPing away and Morphling. Uh... It'll be interesting to see what item build Morphling commits to this game as well. I'd say BKB. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's not going to be an F-Blade just because he is uh, Chinese Dota, Asian Dota, whatever. Once again, IX Mike doing the patented IX Mike build where uh, he gets nothing. He just has a Iron Branch. Dyer's <laughs> middle tower is under attack. He's got zero tower golds. It's very weak. Are they seriously going to take? Oh god, the mid. The mid tower is gonna go down. Wow. There's a complexity smoke gang trying to get back in the game. This is like when they're desperate, when they commit three heroes to a smoke gang. Complexity smoke gang, you mean? 16 minutes, yeah. 16 minutes in the game. Five heroes committed to kill J.O. Uh oh. Oh, uh, get uh, fucked, complexity. Oh, and he's... Wow. Five committed heroes. Five heroes and they didn't take it. Good that is sorry. so bad. Oh yeah, that's a huge commitment of resources. Oh that my is. gosh, he gets fluff and stuff, and the, and the Forge Spirits hit him! The Impurifier. Oh my god, you truly are an American team complexity. What the fuck? American Dota, why do you do this? <laughs> oh, I feel like throwing my fucking headset. That's complexity throw gank right there. Well, why don't you, well, well, don't throw away your headset. I don't know if you can afford a new one after you give me five dollars. I can see. Now it's all gonna be one third game. I called. I told Dahlia the game's gonna, the game's gonna go uh, two one for Cole. I heard a gem drop. I heard a fucking gem. What if it was Dyer's a rapier? Retarded remarks. IX twenty twelve. <laughs> I switched to the poor homeless guy last game. He really shows up the homeless vibe. Oh, he's barely able to afford a TP and a dust of appearance. Now, I expect doesn't want to just waste this TP because if you look at his gold per minute, that is, uh, that's like two minutes of farm for I Mike, that one TP. <laughs> now, actually fluff and stuff, pretty poor as well, but he looks like he's got a little bit of gear on. He's got his brown boots, he's got his gauntlet of strength, and his magic stick like a true wizard. Reason for this is that. What the fuck are you gonna do like this? He's, 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 he's giving IX Mike. He's making IX Mike buy all the support bitch items. Poor little IX Mike. Look at that little hand over there, like he's begging for change. Remember last game, he was the Tango Beggar. And then we have Tard Hunter over here. He's got, his, he's got his Ring of Health, he's got his Stout Shield. He's got a smoke because Complex is gonna do another really, really good American smoke hang. And uh oh, Morphling, but they spit at Morphling. Little do they know, Morphling is a water type. It does almost nothing. Look at the bottom, Lotus is just farming up more. He's got his, he's got his BKB. He's immune to spells. Look at AA almost. AA just sits on the AA just effect. sits on the bottom lane because one he wants to get a mech from pulling, and two he just wants to keep throwing down those big fat ice blasts. Oh, this game does not look good for Cole. Wow. Yeah, it looks like TS finally farmed up that blink dagger. 18 minute blink dagger. Uh, pretty slow. Uh, they shot at 50. This is it. This is it, bro. This is where Jo goes from zero 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 to zero zero hero. All right. Here we go. He's got his blink dagger. 18 minutes in the game. He's finally ready to participate. He's turned off story mode for a little bit. And uh, actually, taking a look at the game, seems like the only one with a kill is TC. But Jo's just kind of distanced himself from the failure that's occurred. And he's like, is he trying to kill Rusha? He's trying to kill Rusha. What the fuck are they doing? Apparently, they're getting sunstruck. 
And this is like this is com this is complexity like desperation yank on Rosh. They know, they know they've lost, so they just fucking do it. Like they can't even kill it. Like they're they're so weak. Yeah, they can. It's, they can. They can. This is what it, this is what it's like to watch complexity die painfully. They're they're like they're so fucking over this game, but they're like fuck it, just keep doing it. Oh my god! Oh, oh god, and everything just comes off. So good. Why does Sloda have and a BKB? Why would this even be KB? Are you fucking? Are you serious? I'm not it's even being sarcastic. minutes in the game, and he already has a BKB. I thought you were criticizing the item pickup. I was like, you dumb fucking noob. And uh, yeah. that's complexity. That's what happens when complexity doesn't do a smoke gank on the rush. It looks like they just lost their PVE mission, got completely destroyed. Gaia's middle tower is under attack. And this is where Xana says, "Oh hey, you were doing a rush. It's okay. Let's just team wipe you and then take rush." Okay, but we won't Oh, what a big stun from Fluff and stuff. Man, that, that Morphling's gonna have a real rough time after losing uh, a whole 150 health there. In fact, I think that actually worked against the Shrek. Now he's he down a got an Eth Blade. Morph got an Eth Blade. He's got a 20 minute Eth Blade, so he's farming really well. That's not oh, really yeah? Cool. Yeah, 20 minute Ethblade is the standard timing. Like, getting it way earlier than that just happens to get really fed. Like, you can't expect Barney 15 minute Ethblades from everyone. Barney's. I mean, that's just for really good players. I'm really like sad right now. Please stop talking about yourself. Oh my god, Ix Mike getting picked off! Oh, where's Ix oh. Mike? Oh, this poor son of a bitch doesn't even have his boots. It hurts every Did single time. Did you see step. how he got killed? No, did he step on his team's booby trap? I see where he died. No. Hurt his, he... Did he stub his toe over there? Invoker sent four spirits, and the four Dyer's spirits attacked him. And then Invoker Sun Strike. Poor like, ice it Mike. took a few hits from four spirits. And yeah, stuff. it must have been a hard sunstrike to land too from Invoker because it would be hard to predict the movement speed of Ix Mike with his no boots ass. And look at this—he buys a magic stick. He's like, "Fuck it." He's like, "I don't need boots. My hero has no feet at all. I'm just gonna levitate." And today we're gonna watch. Gonna watch me cry. The sad story of Ix Mike. All right, we're gonna get some. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. I feel really sad. Mm -hmm. And I expect my yeah. die. Radiance top tower is under attack. It's okay, guys. I'll be back in 20 seconds. What you do? Arnie? I'm gonna get our eyes on Ike's mic. It's okay. I just. I can't take my glasses off and just lay in bed waiting for a third game. Don't turn away. Ice Mike needs oh, you. Oh, Ice Mike needs you. Can... Your eyes. Nope. This is Ice Mike. I, actually, I need absolute silence for a minute. Observe a moment of silence for Ice Mike as he charges into battle headlong, knowing he may not return. If I start snoring, kick me out of, of the call. Alright. Can't bear to see your hero fall like this again, Ix. No, I I just can't look at this. Like, oh, man, this so sad. Murders his own creep. He's pretty much given up all hope. Let's see if he finds a if he finds a stray morphling. Your voice is so <laughs> like. No, Ix, Mike. No. no. <laughs> Stop it. No, oh, no, no, just. Poor Ix, Mike. He almost had boots. <laughs> Those strong 22 minute boots. Uh -oh. Oh. Hey Barney, Barney, tell me a story about Ix Mike. <laughs> okay, let's see if Ix Mike is going for big number six. Mike. Poor Ix Mike, he's gonna. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna respawn in a second because he died so many times. He's gonna have a death for every creep. Hey, I need Uncle absolute, Barney, I need absolute tell me a story about Ix Mike. Let me tell you a story, Ix, about shutting the fuck up. Oh, I want to hear a absolute silence as we observe Mike in his final moments. Oh, what a champion! Complexity, desperation, <laughs> Ix. Mike's not gonna go down without. Mike's gonna gank the morphling. 
illusion. And suddenly, an entire enemy team. You can do it, I can like, charge bravely in battle. Never look back. He throws down his ultimate. He's fleeing! He's letting them die! I just might get bear to watch. I just might get out of there! Oh, he's going big! He puts down the Venomancer! He kills the gem! Ice Mike, you're a fucking hero! He doesn't have the boots, though. He's gonna get run down like a poor, injured animal. Can you do it, Ice Mike? Can you make it? Rest in peace, friend. All right, we're gonna go back to the commentary. We're gonna unmute Skype. <laughs> they don't follow. Oh my God, I was so happy. And then he just. <laughs> hey, oh look, it's on strike. All right, guys. It looks like Ice Mike's just getting put down over and over. We're gonna see how the rest of the game is going. Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> was the name of the song? I don't know. I just googled sad piano music. I'm sure it wow, did you seriously put a sad piano? <laughs> wow. Good thing I didn't hear it. Oh, we got more sound. Looks like uh, TC is rapidly approaching his 28-minute hex scepter. Well, it's actually probably gonna get it really, really soon. But 27-minute hex scepter, 26-minute hex scepter. Really, really slow. Not quite farming at the rate he needs to. I guess Mike's finally picked up his boots after that last chase. He realizes he's gonna need uh, need a little bit more. A bit more run speed. And uh, Venomous over here, uh, rolling hood rich balling with his arcane boots, smoke, Dyer's ghost scepter, has been an entire killed. magic wand. And the Dark Curious has been killed. Now, what really separates the children from the men attack. is the wand. See, you can tell Venomous is rich. He's got the wand. Ix Mike is still sitting on the stick edition. He's trying to save up enough money to buy a wand. Yeah. Comes from a really poor family of wizards. He's maxing that ice armor. He realizes at this point his greatest utility is in bonus armor. He has a dust doll. It looks like uh, Hi Hi has his replicant out. He's just going to be looking to escalate another person. Luckily, Ix Mike is about as far away as he can be. And we're going to try to get Hannah Montana with the AA ult. Is he going to walk into it? You don't fuck! You were supposed to be the hero of America. Are you going to live? Oh, if you don't, I'm going to watch you die. All right, he barely lives. <gasps> As this happens, Morphling's on the hunt. They're, I'm willing to bet that they're gonna bend Morphling in this game. We'll see if they do. Yeah, they do. They are gonna bend it. And Hanamon, or TC rather, can afford his axe, but he doesn't want to because uh, he has to defend his base. Now, Again, to give you an idea of how fucked complexity is, you see these? These are the outer towers of Radiant. See these? These are the base towers. Look at the gold graph, it's 20,000 lead of the Radiant, and 20,000 lead of gold and experience, actually. Uh, you thought last game was bad. This is a one sided stomp fest. This is Ix Mike getting hosed down. Ix Mike is getting hosed down at this tower over here. Hannah Montana throws down that ult? Oh man, they're making some big moves, but you just fuck. Oh god, Hannah Montana. You thought you could get the first kill for your team? Oh, so do you, Jo. Jo's turned to 1v5. Oh, they don't even want to see Jo play this through. They're just going to throw out the GG. You can't handle it. They just know this game's been a slaughter. They, they don't even have to lose a Rax. What happened, America? How'd you lose your fighting spirit? You still have your Rax up. At least they GG'd before. <laughs> I have a problem with Ice Mike. I just think it's funny that both games in a row he had like one branch. It's just like he's, it's so, he's so poor. We'll just look at Tiny, looking away in shame. Can't bear to, bear to look at me. Now, if you put Lashrak and Lich's farm together, you almost have yourself a Venomancer. So it was a really back and forth game. Both of these games have been really even. My head fucking hurts. Well, your wallet's gonna hurt when you owe me five dollars after your game finishes the song. Oh. God, the GPM. 
<laughs> Game was a fucking slaughter. Looking at oh my god, look at uh, look at uh, Cole's camera. It must be so sad. Joe has that face like fucking team. Which one is Jo? Is he the small dark one? The one closest, yeah. The what is this Asian. segregated seating? Why does he have to sit at the back of the bus? I don't know. Everyone is like everyone is wearing the same outfit. Jo didn't get the memo, you know? They're all over to the right. <laughs> pretty much holding hands over there. But no Jo's sad, just look at him. Let's he's see. he's depressed. Let's see what our Chinese overlords are doing over here. <laughs> and oh, they're all out celebrating their victory. Look at that. They when are? they come back, they're going to be greeted by the score screen. I'm going to leave this one open just because it's probably going to be a fairly good in indicator of uh, when it's actually going to start again. Why are they not in the their booth? Look at the hall cam. It's a reason amount of people watching, but all of us fat nerds are watching from at home. This is a surprisingly small land. We can just watch the fat guy take his seat. Here, we'll watch these two guys. I think Michael Moore over there is moving to the left a bit. I would actually rather watch this at home than in like a movie theater esque environment, but the seating here is done pretty well. I like how there are so many empty seats, <laughs> like the high ground. This is not a lol tournament. Yeah, it's no lol tournament, man. There are no like lol girls the, in the crowd. It's all the, guys. Holy shit! The tickets were really like they were fairly expensive. How much were they? Like fifty bucks. Oh, fairly. Expensive. No, that was fifty euros. So. Fairly expensive for a a Romanian, you mean? Here in America, that's pretty much nothing to us. I wipe my ass with twenties, but then again, I am a streamer. <laughs> Number two, uh, a team <laughs> yeah, fight, which we can only assume whatever clip we go to fight. is going to go in favor of Team Zenith. So uh, let's check it out. There are so many. Well, there wasn't in, uh, really a whole lot in favor of of uh, the complexity. Hall. Oh, yeah, look, there really was This one was actually complexity, getting a great initiation right, with yeah, that tight oh, ravage. But even cool. with the perfect initiation, the BKB on loader here, uh, we just see, I mean, the, the fight gets turned around very, very quickly. Zenith are just too far ahead in terms of items and farm. That's right, Axe Mike becomes a fucking hero. Yeah, Axe Mike doing his back to get some, best to get some work there as he does take down the Venomancer. It's a small victory, I think. Uh, I, I think at this point, they're just too far behind. I, I mean, you've got a... Small victory? Axe Mike just fucking big dicked up. Dumb A doesn't realize Ix Mike doesn't have no boots. He, he actually, I think there's a chance that he had. God, oh wait, wait, wait! This is worth thousands of fucking watches. He finally gets slaughtered. his boots at 24 minutes. I mean, that's something to applaud. He did have a very rough. <laughs> but H Y H Y, no, oh, no mercy. Look at this. No rest for the wicked. Just immediately assassinates him. All, all that's these right back inside. I, I feel H Y H Y just had Ix Mike's number that game. No mercy. See, now it's not just us guys. It's not just our little thing. This is uh. This is tens of thousands of people watching Ix Mike get destroyed in front of probably 100,000 people. Can you imagine sitting in an auditorium with 100,000 people and they just watch you fail utterly and completely? I can only, you can only imagine how complexity feels right now. How do you feel knowing that you're about to part ways with $5? I feel even more sad. I just, you just are Romanian, so that's a lot of money for you. Dude, I'm, I'm so fucking depressed about this game. Wow. All right, I will be right back. I'll be right back, guys. And I leave you with this. Ad, hit him with an ad. Hit him with an ad, please. Just do an ad. Just do an ad? Yeah. Well, actually, some... Mm. Capitalized on it much. They, they do, do have an a ad. number Shut of up. solutions to him. Right, Obviously, yeah, Meteor, uh, it has a long cooldown, but it does prevent most of the dispersion damage, so he's going to take that dispersion. That's the wrong skill. Venomancer Gale as well also shuts it down. So they, they had a fair amount of counter picks, but that wasn't really the story to me. The story to me was how well that lane went for Ice Ice Ice, despite the fact that TA... I really think TA should win that lane. Uh, I mean... I I, I think TA has a slight lasting advantage, but Invoker come mid game can get more involved a lot yeah. earlier on. So it's a situation where Ice 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 used that early game uh, hero advantage to actually net his team kills around the map, whereas Geo had to keep on farming, get the blink dagger up. By then it was too late. Yeah. All right, and uh, guys, remember, of course, uh, while you're with us between the games, we are just waiting for the players to get set up and ready. As soon as they're ready, we'll be back with uh, the matches. And if you're joining us today, even after this match, we've still got some great games coming up. We'll be moving on into EG versus IG, and then a little bit later in the winner bracket, we've got Na'Vi versus DK, and then we're going to go into the loser bracket, where it's a best of one. Lose one game, you're out of the tournament, you're out of the international. And we've got CLG versus MTW, Mouse versus E-Home. 
TF or Tong Fu, sorry, my notes confuse me. Versus What the fuck is Barney doing? Dude? Look at how on point I am. I'm viewer number fucking two. Holy shit. Do you, uh... Bro, I'm the, I'm the fucking... If, now, if it said zero, no one would ever believe I was the first one because everyone would assume it was some sort of bug. But no, I am zero number two. Or viewer number two. Do a right? thing in your chat, like one for Cole and two for Zena. All right, guys. Who you guys are rooting for. All right, guys. Put a one in chat if you're rooting for complexity. Oh. Team America, Team USA, and put a two in chat if you're voting for your for your Chinese overlords over here. Um, they're the lesser Asian race, but I don't think we need to get the full one. We need to get the uh, Asian master race out. And once again, Zenith just bans out Silbear immediately. Oh dear God, you have a bunch of chick lovers in here on your stream. Wait, why the fuck is complexity second you pick? <laughs> Wait, why is complexity second pick? Zenith's turn to ban. They were just second pick. Why are they second pick and dire once again? Wait, isn't that like a thing that I have to pick? No, why are they second pick? Probably because they were seated lower, I would imagine. To ban. No, they weren't seated lower than Zenith. They had to have been. I mean, well, why are they second pick? Oh, they probably just flipped a coin or some shit. Who knows? Or it's random. Yeah, it could be random, I guess. Well, I mean, usually, eh, I guess if it's best of threes. Same bands as last game, the exact same bands. Well, that really fucks over complexity too. This is literally the same exact. And Athletas, my nigga. Like they, Aww. they completely. Uh, I don't know. Like I feel like complexity would have had a much better chance if they were. And like, holy shit, it's like a deja vu. Well, I think if, again, once again, I think if Complexity had first pick, they would have had so many more things that they could have done. Wow, this is so bad for them. Like, oh my god, they're in the same spot as last Ten game, and what are they really? gonna do? I speak for the yeah, see, there's the Nature's Prophet. Complexity so they change things up a little pick. bit. Of course they do. Like, you know, could... that's, re that's a really Zenith's good pick for to pick. So, the... JL's gonna be on the Nature's Prophet and I X Mike on the Venomancer, hoping he's not gonna be as poor as he was as a lich. Oh, he will. Huh. He will. But I mean, I, at least Venomancer has ways to acquire money. Yeah. Like, at Venomancer, least he'll have like a branch can, He can farm stuff with his wards, whereas heroes like um, heroes like Shadow Demon and the hero that he was playing last game, lich, lich again, very very fucked in terms of. Like, at least heroes like Crystal Maiden and Venomancer can get money elsewhere. Venomancer probably being the best of the supports to the point where he can actually be made into a viable mech or pipe carrier. If you saw the Venomancer in the last game, he was farming rather well as, as well. But they do have the Invoker pickup for probably Ice 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 once again. Um, I, again, have no idea what the style is of play that a lot of these players have on this Asian team. I really hope in his. Oh my god. And wow, him morphling. Woohoo! Surprise, surprise! An Asian team enjoys morphling and invoker. Now, the Asian teams have been picking a shitload of morphling and a lot of invoker as well. Um, we'll probably see these picked or banned in almost any game within. How can you counter morphling? I don't know. You just. You don't. There are some heroes that deal really well with him. I actually think the Tiny is one of the better heroes for dealing with him. Lone Druid. Axe. Lone. No. Oh, come on, dude. But, and Lone Druid is also very good. Um. <laughs> Not as like a counter, but heroes like Annie Mage, Lone Druid, and Tiny actually trade very, or they scale as well, and they're they're also very very good heroes in general. These are matchups that are basically considered playable. Um, that said, uh, Annie Mage has fallen off in popularity a lot, just as a hero in general. Um, I know the complexity doesn't like Annie Mage that much at all either, so I think it's highly unlikely that we're going to see Annie Mage um, from complexity. They'd much rather probably play something like a Tiny. Someone was asking in the chat, why didn't they ban Morph? There is no way you can ban Morph when you have Naga, Lycan, and Darkseer on yeah, the line. Yeah, because they, they don't want to deal with either one of those three heroes. Yeah, and it's much worse, it's much worse dealing with Lycan, Naga, or Darkseer. But the, the bans and picks these games have been so defining for the like setting the tone of the matches in general as a whole. Um, because, it, like for instance, Zenith, 
uh, like on the first game, they were, I feel like they were pretty much outpicked and outbanned. Um, whereas wow, the, the, previous, the, previous, the, previous, the previous game, I feel like Complexity was forced into uh, a different position in regards to bans and picks, in that they had to be forced to ban out the like in Naga and Darkseer, which is fairly common to be forced to do as Dire. Uh, but they had to do it this game as well. The Beastmaster pickup, not bad at all. I think you said it was, you had choice words for it, but it's actually really, really good. Beastmaster's a solid hero. And we're probably going to see him. I feel like game. that's not good because they had to pick like uh, their carry. Now he's, it's going to be good. Like, he's super good against. We're going to see. Point. We're going to see like roaming venom and beastmaster, and they're going to set up kills on mid and stuff. But still picking up beastmaster instead he's, of like he's a carry. really really right. really good for dealing with heroes like any mage and morphling that have like really reliable escape mechanisms. The problem though is that they, they're, for the next couple of picks, they have to get more uh, more lockdown type stuns and just a uh, better team comp in general. But this team that they have right now doesn't reveal any of their lanes yeah. decisively. Um, it just says that they're probably going to look for like a tri lane or something. To ban. That's pretty much the only thing they've revealed. And going into the second banning phase, Jesus, Zenith is so original. They literally have done these same bands these last two games. The exact same fucking bands in the Don't exact change same if, it, if it's not broke. Yeah, I guess. Their picks were almost identical as well. The only difference was. Yeah, Venom but come look at the Venom. Yep, they just decided that instead of a Venomancer, they're going to have a Tide. Okay. They probably like the tide as a manner back. What do you mean? Ten seconds remaining. Hmm. I think you just wanted a tide because he's a solid hero. Zenith. Um, I've seen a few Zenith games and I never seen him play tide. Really? I watched the Asia Monthly Madness thing. Oh, they we won. Are, we are they they the won that uh, tournament against LGD in the final. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and they ban out Enchantress. What was that awkward Zenith's sound? What was that Enchantress's ban. ban sound? That's that sounded like you making some sound. No, that sounded that, that, that was. I think that was Enchantress for having such decent voice acting. That was sort of jarring and didn't quite fit in. But uh, once again, I'm pretty sure these are the same bands from Complexity. Now, they changed it up a little bit. No, they did this. No, they did the same thing in regards to the Enchantress ban. Remember, because Chen was banned out, they did the same fucking thing. What was the last ban for Zenith? What was the last ban? <laughs> we guys, come on, chat, help us out. What was the last ban for Zenith last game? We need to know the prophecy. Quick. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Beastmaster was the last ban. I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah, that that was probably probably it. It was CK. Everyone says. Uh oh. Then, okay. Yeah, it was CK. I remember now. What did complexity ban? Hmm. Who knows? I would be. I would laugh my ass off if they had it. Like if they banned a CK now. Like I highly doubt it. But uh, that could be one of the things they look to try and with. It just makes for a really really interesting team. Nope, they banned wow. out the Tinker. Complexities Interesting. Yeah, well, the Nature's Prophet Tinker would be a great combo. Wow, that would be good. That's annoying to play against. <laughs> it's game breaking. And we will see what they look to do. Their final ban. Uh, I, I tend to, like, guess what Complexity is going to pick. Like,. A lot? There's no way they'll pick a Brood, as some of you are saying. Um, just because Complexity is almost undoubtedly going to have Hannah Montana um, up on Beastmaster. Well, they might, but I, I highly doubt it. It just wouldn't seem very Complexity to me. Ten yeah, no, no, no. Complexity never does Brood. Like, I rarely Like, Zenith that. will probably end up picking a hero for uh, Loda right now with their next pick. Zenith's turn to pick. That's a great ban since they didn't have a support. Wow. Yeah, no one wants to play against that. However,. Getting a Lushaka of their own would have been very nice, but that's a hero that uh, they don't like playing, honestly. And they pick up another Are you fucking kidding me? Turn to pick. Another unoriginal fucks. Oh, these Chinese, man. They really they have like two team comps that they like, and they like them a lot. And this is they're doing the same thing in general that they did last game, which is looking they're for really scared of except making except the thing is this is just better. This is much better because the replacement of AA for Venomancer makes their really strong tri lane even more strong. Uh, because now, instead of just galing someone on top of an amp in a cold feet, you gush them, which does instantaneous damage and reduces their armor. Their magic da their magic armor is reduced from the thing, and they're just fucked. It's a very, very good tri lane. 
And now he has that gonna, round yeah. two of, of trying to switch it up once again. He's, uh, he is not going to be a pick for this game. Yeah, I no, doubt that. Pick so bad. Why is Rasta in the same place? Some teams still pick Rasta, but it's just because what he does is yeah, uh, done pretty well by other And that's Bottom. very surprising. Bottom. What? I've never seen Okay, that okay, happen. okay. So what I think that we're looking at now, most likely, is a Nature's Prophet played by the Jo. Ix Mike on the Venomancer, Hannah Montana on the Beastmaster, and Fluff and Stuff playing a support Marana. No. Just no. Jo's on the Prophet, Ix Mike on the Venom, Hannah's on the Beastmaster. Uh... And so TC is going to be on the Mirana and... I won't be TC, it'll be Fluff and Stuff. I, I'm calling it now. You're, I think you're wrong. You, you, like, that's the only thing that we differ on, and I think it'll be, I think it'll be yeah, Fluff and Stuff. Bounty hunter. And, bounty, and a Bounty Hunter pickup from Zenith. Fuck this shit, I, won't, I don't want to watch this. So, it's a really, really, really good pick for what their lineup is. It means everyone's going to get a lot of money and do a really, really strong off lane as well. Oh god. I'm now, so what I think might have just happened here is... Oh man, this is great. I think that this is good. I think that Zenith actually believes that Potom will be soloing off lane as an easy lane, which is what most teams would think. But I don't know if Zenith did their homework here. I mean, I don't know if they realize that it's going to be Fluff and stuff playing a support Marana. Like, they... I wish you were right. I would. I really wish but, but, you were right. But no, it would make perfect. Oh my god! In an, in an right. for TC. No, you're wrong. That's an animation oh, for TC. You you're dumb right, fuck. Yeah. I'm right. Like, are you kidding? This is this is this is great. Wow. Okay, so this harpens back to what I said earlier, where um, one of the matchups that you see get played against Morphling a lot, one of the big three or four that y you can actually draft against a Morphling is Animage. However, it has been for fucking ever since Complexity has drafted up an Animage uh, and a bottom instead of a instead of a tiny. Oh, they no no that's it's not been forever since they drafted a bottom. They've done a lot of support bottom shit recently. So it's Ice Ice up on the Invoker just like last game. Hi 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 Morphling just like last game. Freedom on Ancient Upper, just like last game. XY on the Tide Hunter, just like last game. And then a fucking Bounty Hunter for Loda, just out of nowhere. Wow. This once, game's once again, what Fluff and Stuff does here is really smart. Um, the game will start when they all pick their heroes, but what Fluff and Stuff does is he waits to pick his hero until. Just so they can. Until, yeah, just so he can strategize, and then he like, picks it at the last second. For me. Prepare for battle. So these are fairly these are fairly standard and fluff and stuff again picking up the support items. The support. Wow, you are so right. I was wrong. I know. I'm just I'm a genius. And again, it's gonna be it's gonna be Jo going mid lane on the profit. And what Jo's gonna look to do is pick up an eight to ten minute mechanism. This is what Jo generally does. And Montana is the off lane uh, beastmaster. Ix Mike is the poor support. He's looking again to be poor one one branch Ix. Fluff and stuff on the Marana gonna look to set up kills a lot with the Venomancer. What's Venom but, doing? But Loda leading the charge with his smoke at the level one. They will see them before they get seen. He needs to look to re-up his smoke where the enemies don't see them, but they're sighted. And they're just gonna throw they're not gonna go all the way, they're just gonna throw out a really, really early defensive tri leaning ward. This gives them a, a lot of relevant vision. This is probably not where they were looking to place it initially. I'm sure they would have wanted to get a ward down in the lane. However, they realize that there's a lot of pressure here. They realize that with a Marana, you really don't want to get hit by an arrow over all these trees. You so do they realize they the Z Zenith is so fucking confused right now. But they but they throw down a more defensive ward. I don't think that they're... Uh, but, uh, but anyways, they throw, down, they throw down the defensive ward that gives them a lot of vision over this area. Really protects your offline. And uh, Dyer goes to the aggressive ward that they placed last game as well. The battle they are so fucking confused. Loda gets an invis. Probably not the rune he wanted. Um, but now they know that he got it. Actually, no, they don't. They didn't see that. But they know that the rune was there, since Hannah Montana is going bottom. Hannah Montana is going to be up against the Tide Hunter and the Invoker, so he's not going to get a whole lot from here, surprisingly. Loda is just going to be off laning top, and it looks like Morphling is actually going to solo mid against the Prophet. Um, this is a That's very so good for jail. this is yeah this is a very favored matchup actually for the Morphling. Um, believe it or not, it's still no, it's, it's, it's good it's, for jail because they didn't they, he didn't have uh, Invoker mid. I would argue it's worse for J.O. simply because against the Invoker he could actually get CS early on. Whereas he's up against a morph down pool supply uh, Morphling, he'll get next to nothing. Uh, see this Morphling, is this is common when they pool supplies in the Morphling? And they get, uh, they just get Tangos up, or, or the, yeah, yeah, basically he buys the Wraith in and then he gets supplies pulled. Usually they can supply pull more than this, instead they only pulled 90 gold with the supplies on him. Usually they can, you can see up to 200 get pulled, just so he can spend his 600 gold. Like you, a lot of the time you see like the Wraith Band in like a branch or two or something. 
However, TC is in like a free farm lane, um, more or less. Yep. Loda is in a lane that he's not going to get a whole lot, but he does have the defensive ward up, so he's going to be aware of Fluff and Stuff. However, Fluff and Stuff has sentries, uh, which is a big deal. He tried to block the enemy pull, but the enemies actually didn't block his pull. Uh, so it's kind of a wasted sentry. Uh, he still has the smoke, and he's just going to be looking to get a little bit of pull farm as he plays his support Marana. Ix might, might be looking to come towards mid, but... J.O. has done a very, very good job of harassing down the Morphling, whose HP is really low simply based on the fact that he's morphed. He actually hasn't really lost that much, and a missed Aww. gale from Ix Mike. Ix Mike well on his way to being, once again, the poor one branch Ix Mike. And, uh, Level something, one, something, something that really uh, sometimes bothers me is when, uh... Regeneration. Something that sometimes bothers me is when I see Chinese Beastmasters who don't uh, stack Ancients. If you look, Beastmaster has done a phenomenal job stacking already. I think it's very, very important. But now they're just going to dual lane against the Morphling for a little bit, as I imagine Ix Mike goes back to try to set up something. But he may just hang around mid a lot. This is support. Fast basically getting... Loda's getting basically nothing, but he's going to get experience and he's going to try to hit level 6 so he can get trackled. They won't even have fight. track gold on the first fight. Oh, of course not, but they're just looking to get him some stuff. Looks like Hi Hi gets a bottle. Pretty common. And this is a pull that you can do if you're radiant. You can pull the creeps into the neutrals. However, you'll... what he's doing here, he cuts down two trees, makes it a little bit easier, he uses two of his tangos. Probably oh, all of his tangos, shit. actually. Which, uh, you don't want to you don't want to have to use all of your tangos if you're uh, in the position that he's in right now. Because using all of your tangos hurts you uh, in, in that Prophet can come over to you. He's trying to do the double pull. Uh, he's not going to get it, though. Because J.O.'s trains fuck up. J.O.'s trains fuck up the double pull. That is really, yeah. really good play by J.O. One thing worth mentioning is that the, uh, Hanna has yet to miss a single uh, Ancient stack. Yeah, he's been doing a really, really good job of it. And that's what's going to get him back in the game, is a level 1 Beastmaster. I always say that a lot of people don't really understand the role of your offlane. Um, here... Uh, one of Hannah Montana's big goals is just going to be to not die. However, his decision to cut down these trees to stack the Ancients uh, reveals that he's stacking them. Uh, you can see it during the daytime from the higher I know. Up. I'm actually going to wager that some of the Chinese teams don't. Look but at the TC's farm and the nice. That's... Wow. Why would you let a more free farm? Is there a kill gonna happen in mid? Oh, first blood is gonna go? No. I was trying to roam down for it, doing the 1 1 1. Oh, too bad. Not successful. Loda has no slides. farm. Yeah. Well, I mean, no level. He's, he's just trying to make himself useful somewhere, but unfortunately, there he was absolutely worthless. Buff and stuff has been getting experience, attack. but TC is more or less free farming. Oh, shit. He. Oh, high now, gonna get first blood. Yeah, there you go. Bottom lane gets sunstruck and he goes down. At the last minute, just like the other time. Blood in the water. Time and surprisingly, Ice Ice Ike is, or Ice 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 is rather, is still doing an Exhort build, which is not something that you see done uh, by a lot of Chinese teams. Are they gonna take top tower? Well, there's nothing that the bounty hunter can do to actually defend this alone. And it's Wait, is that a good? Is first. that a good idea for TC though? Uh, it's not a bad idea. If you can get a tower, it's fine. It just means that, uh, like, it's not bad at all, honestly. And if you look at TCC's build, uh, he's doing something that's uh, not indicative of a Battle Fury rush, but what he's going to be doing is he's going to be going for the Battle Fury anyways, but he just opts to get three in the mana break instead of going 1 1 stats. Which is, uh, again, the Chinese usually do the 1 1 stats. Burning. But it's, yeah, bur I mean, Burning is one of the people that helped to make it really popular. Radiant's and oh, big TPs! Ice Mike, it's Sunstruck! Oh, that's gold the Bounty Hunter really needed, and the Tower Deny, presumably. Oh, fishing arrow! Oh, he hits! He hits on the tide. Barely the not hitting the tower. Tower. That's such a great play from uh, CNET. Yeah, that was great. They got the deny there, and that makes it. That actually really, really doesn't help the uh, complexity gaming right now. You're well on your yeah. way to actually owing me $5, by the way. I still believe. I still believe in complexity. Here at that first game, I thought I would be fucked. However, the bounty hunter is still staying at one CS. Now up to two. He's doubled his farm in the blink of an eye. Who's it gold? 
We this just have to believe. The yeah. bounty hunter just wants to get his track gold so that him and Ancient Apparition can start getting gold. Ancient Apparitio. Uh, Tide Hunter over here, still pretty far. But Morphling and Invoker are doing really, really well for themselves in the farm. Once again, Ice 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 upsea the Basilius. Or upsea. Oh, uh, A is gone. Wow. And Morphling. Did he seriously get the night? Ice Mike getting fucked over once again. His damage over time from his Gale results in a deny occurring. Again, Chinese dominance, the one kill that they get. Just, just isn't happening right now. What the fuck is A doing there? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Being a big man. He placed a ward to block the ancient stacking that's happening. And Hannah, and Hannah Montana getting erased once again. I'm, I'm really sad at the moment. <laughs> even I, it's not even about that fucking five dollars. It's about, it's about the five dollars. I know it. Now, Jo is still getting his farm on, just just like he needs to. Like I said, he usually looks for that uh, eight to ten minute, or not eight to ten. I said seven to nine. So he usually looks for that seven to nine mech, and he's going to be getting it not close to the seven. He's going to be getting it a little bit later. Like I said, these timings for items are pretty important. This is usually what uh, complexity has come to expect. And Ix Mike, true to his one branch of nature, he's almost down to just one branch once again. So I stuff and oh, they're gonna know that the pull is occurring in a minute here. They're gonna try to make a big play, but it's a level two Ix Mike who's blocking in his friend and a fluff and stuff who opts for a bottle despite not having any money. They have to be a little bit scared now. Asian apparition has been really active about that. Uh oh, uh, this might be really bad for them in a minute. Hey, Montana still have a four. Doesn't have his roar. Nice. Uh, ow. I'm gonna quickly check to make sure I'm not getting Comcast. So while I do this, I'm gonna put the frame on Luminous. And that track, I mean... Well, well, we well. DC's uh, at 7 and 38. Last heads and nice. Wow. That's actually really, really good for him. It's a free farm lane. And having 60 CS 9 minutes into the game, that's huge. No, I'm not getting Comcasted at all. You are you are a thousand percent wrong, silly chat. Alright, watch an Ice Mike's player perspective a bit. We're going to see through the eyes of the king. Making his presence felt here. Oh, hi, hi. Getting real aggressive. Right, I'm going to let you guys listen to LD. But they're just not getting it. What? Why are you doing that? It feels exactly like last game. The difference for me is that they have a hero they can what do What the fuck well are you doing, Barney? Game. That's the answer you make. Right. Uh, Ice 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 now pulling up top, perhaps. Barney. Trying to ward off TC. TC at this point, very low in terms of HP. Uh, so yeah, TC real low on HP. Alright. Jo getting gone on. This is the first track kill that they're potentially going to get. Although he has TP support, he uses his mech. He got the 9 mech. mech. And Fluff and Stuff's TP really helps. He cancels the arrow initially and then comes back. And that's really, really big because getting killed with track on. It's a level 1 track. It's only 50 gold, but still. That would be pretty big. Yeah. That track, though, it, I mean, it adds up a lot. 150 what's gold. The, what's the gold graph? Valuable. Uh, it's probably relatively even. It's just a. Th it's within a thousand. I, I usually don't look at the gold graph if I think that the game is surprisingly even. Uh, like here, it's just within a thousand. Some people might make a big deal and try to analyze why there are bumps and curves along the graph. Doing so is pointless. There are zero tower, or there's one tower down actually for the dire, but that's it, and that's been down for a while. So it's just a really, really even game. But uh, you'd you'd think that uh, you'd think that the fact that there's a 1500 gold lead for the radiant actually means something. But that's like a tower worth of gold. The game is like dead even in terms of like farm. The last hits and knives are very, fairly well spread out. The uh, Morphling's farm is looking about where the Animages is um, in terms of uh, farm. However, the farm efficiency of the Animage is going to increase a lot. Like uh... Once he hits his battle fury with the blink, he's going to farm. Yeah, and he's probably going to get it like a 14 to 16 minute battle fury in this game. He's not going to get it earlier than that, but that's kind of the expected timing. It looks like Hannah Montana just farming this while still having a slight presence in the lane. Invoker rotating top, that's really interesting, just so AM doesn't get farmed. 
These lanes sacrifice last a very long time. Yeah, with his soaring up, Hannah Montana should be able to get some of these. He's gonna get items as soon as he finishes this. He's gonna go from being extremely poor to having some money. Already has that level six on him. He's probably going to build five. Did last game. And as this happens, the Venomats are getting his farm on as well. Oh yeah, there's four spirits. He's not even gonna get that creep. And Jo bought something, presumably his brown boots. And yeah, he gets brown boots and he gets a smoke. And by Jo, I mean Hannah Montana, of course. Poker sends his four spirits up. Getting so close to his four staff, he's about four to go the way. Maybe another minute or two. He's actually probably the top farmer in the game. And yeah, he is. Fairly unsurprising. Um, of note, however, is that really the only people farming right now... Um, okay, so here's how it kind of looks. So Annie Mage has a very good farm. He's farming quite quickly and he's going for a Battle Fairy build. And uh, he's going to be on time for his Battle Fairy. It's going to be a well-timed Battle Fairy. Uh, however, Hannah Montana is really poor. Uh, Ix Mike is extremely poor, and uh, he has his brown boots, so it's not going to be another like 20 minute brown boots game. But uh, that's about it. Just brown boots in the branch. Jo had a very well timed mech, but he's uh, starting to be uh, less relevant. Or not really less relevant, that's a horrible way to put it, but uh, the fact of the matter is that the farm that he has isn't going to be. Uh, oh, uh, sorry for insane. interrupting, but Hannah Montana is going to catch off Tide Hunter waiting for AM. Wow, he's completely oblivious. And Hannah Montana getting anally pounded here. TC actually getting a kill. Kinda looks like he's gonna go down here as well. Oh, but Ix Mike goes down. Those four spirits. That was too far too. Ale, mildly annoying. But, uh, that's a 2 2 but the AM got more farm, so that's... Yeah, the AM got kills. He's, he's looking really close to that battle 3, so like I said, it'd be like a 14 or 16 minute battle 3. I'm gonna go ahead and say it'll yeah. be like 14:30 or something to that effect. It's no Barney 12-minute battle fury. Oh yeah, it's not that good. Not everyone can be. And uh, Fluff and stuff has a decent amount of stuff, but uh, the reality is he's very poor as well. He's in, he's super super weak. Oh man, just getting outplayed, silly American. Because what he has in a in a fight basically amounts to what Ix Mike has. The only difference is that he has a bit more levels. Since the bottle doesn't really uh, in the salve and the smoke and the dust. They don't make you right click harder, they don't make you take more hits. Well, the bottle kind of does, but you know what I mean. Basically, Ice Mike is dirt poor, Marana is dirt poor, and Beastmaster is pretty much dirt poor as well. Whereas Any Mage has some stuff, but Any Mage isn't very strong in a fight if you're doing this Battle Fury build. Um, whereas the enemies have I a Tidehunter. Go. Tidehunter is level 8, he has a lot of experience on him. He has his Arcanes, uh, so he's not going to get, uh, he's not going to stay poor, and he's not even poor now, he has 700 gold, that's more than, that's, that's, like, he could buy IX Mike right now, and in China, that's actually a thing, so, he can pretty much buy IX Mike, and, uh, Morphling here is farming up really well as well, he has a lot of shit, more importantly, he has 1900 gold, A has his Tranquil Boots, which puts him a whole upgrade in boots over the, uh, supports on Complexity, so, uh, he's sitting on his green cowboy boots. Ix Mike has his brown peasant boots. J uh, uh, TC just finished it. Bounty Hunter, Bounty Hunter has gotten 1,200 gold from his tracks. So that's huge. Uh, if the Surge would have hit, I think that might have been enough to actually kill. That would have been enough to kill if the Surge hit. That's actually hilarious that all it takes is a Surge in that. Like a Surge, God, in, this game surge is in one auto attack. Crazy, even. Uh, and Invoker is farmed as fuck. I mean, he has plenty of shit on him right now. <laughs> Treads. Basilius, full wand, four staff, TP, he's rolling in money. And Loda is still doing really good on experience. More importantly, he's of actual value in, in fights, and his track gold is going to be what throws the gold in the favor of his team throughout every engagement, and even trade... Even if they lose him. a fight, or in trading, Dyer's yeah. Bottom tower it's going to block. Attack. God, this game is so sad. Tower has I don't like the network. Because the only, the only like farm it. person on, uh, on complexity is uh, TC. When there's an Invoker and a Morphling that have just as much farm as I, TC. I, I really don't like the network tab just because of the way the Dota does the bars. Where it's like, it makes it out to look like 5,900 is like twice as good as like 40, or 6,000 is like twice as good as 4,700. Or like having 2,400 means you have nothing compared to the guy that has 60,000 since it just bases the size of the bars off the person who's the most farm. It also makes it look really deceptive in a lot of games where there are Chinese players or Chinese teams who put all the farm on one hero. But. How do you feel about
uh, TC having the same farm as Invoker and Morphling? It's, uh, it's to be expected, especially now that he has his battle for it. He was given a free lane. I mean, the fact that he has 48 denies speaks to how free his lane was. I mean, you don't get that many denies in a lane that's contested. Um, but at the same time, it costs his team a lot as a whole. Uh, Hannah Montana had like an impossible offlane. Buff and stuff and Venomancer pretty much had to sacrifice. This is gonna be like to get the a the So the problem here is that TC alone is like he would be fairly strong against a Morphling, but the problem is that uh, him being like on par with the Morphling and farm is fine. But the fact that there's an Invoker in the equation is sort of like that Naga game in the sense that it just makes things a lot harder. It's like having a full hero up. Also, the track gold is eventually going to pull uh, Morphling skill per minute above that of Any Mage. Any Mage, this is like his time. I mean. This is where Animates farm is quick. Radiant's bottom but tower is under attack. He's not. He just gave a free tower Dyer's to Morphling. Top tower he can't stop it. Fallen. I mean, that Morphling replicant alone can prevent him from booking away. And just a handful of hits. Yeah, true. Because he level up the mana break. Wow. Well, I like how the total mana pool on the replicant is slightly beneath that of his actual hero. And he finds he finds Jo, but I don't know if he's gonna be able to kill him. Now Jo is really hard to right click down simply because of that. Oh, like, is Morph gonna die? No. No, he's fine. Oh, I'm gonna save. Is Clevin stuff gonna throw an arrow? Now this is it's really really hard to get an arrow off too when you're tracked. There's nothing you can really do. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. If you're tracked Dyer's up and you throw out an arrow, uh, <laughs> no one would no one would get hit by that. So all the key ones up. for. Uh, Complexity are down. It's a good dodge again by Morphling. Morphling also going for the Lincolns, which is uh, not surprising as he is up against the Beastmaster. Oh, they hold hands! Oh no! Lost? He lost? Yeah, he almost died, but he actually used his leap to disjoint a small amount of the damage from that. That was really smart because you never see people do that. No, uh. No uh, attempt on the sun strike there. Really? Easy. What the fuck are you doing? Radiant's Baiting, obviously. <laughs> Silly noob. Oh. However, TC's farm is again. It's actually really good, <laughs> especially considering the condition of the game, in the sense that uh, his team has taken a whole one tower. Okay, so basically Zenith traded uh, farm for Morphling and Invoker for uh, AM farm. So complexity was basing their game all around anti-mage being anti-mage. You know it's kind of funny to think about that someone points out? Double Ice Mike's net worth tab, he's basically farmed up 250 gold in a 20 minute game. He's more or less farming at 10 gold a minute. You could you could sit in the well and you would probably acquire more items. You'd have more items at this point in the game if you just sat in the well. But then again, he's buying all the support items, taking it for his team. Now if you look at Marana, Marana actually has shit. And the only difference between Marana that was is that so close. the only difference between Marana and uh, what's his face is that the Marana, uh, the Marana basically didn't have to buy puny support items. Yeah, that's a four. So Ix gets dicked, Mike. Uh, he wasn't able to spend his money on cool shit. Now Prophet's got his hand of quota, so he's gonna get farm. Uh, however, if you think about it, uh, the build that Complexity does with getting that like nine or seven to nine minute mech. Pike's Mike just got killed by Forge Spirits in a Sunstrike. Yeah, that's what happened last game. The worst game. thing is, the same exact thing happened to him last game. Now, it's a scared world out there for Ix Mike. Simply because... Uh, simply because uh, if, he find, if he's wandering through the woods and he finds like a Morphling Replicant, he's fucked. He's running through the woods and he finds some Forge Spirits. Haste. These Forge Spirits can 1v1 him. They have 700 HP, 65 armor, or, or 65 damage in, in 80 armor. What does he have? He has 680. Okay, look, we're gonna do the we're gonna do the cam. Look at Ice Mike's damage and stats. Forge Spirit, Mike. Forge Spirit. Forge Spirit. Mike. Yeah, he would lose a fight to a Forge Spirit. So two of them in the forest is basically like. Uh, what if he ults the Forge Spirits? He'd have to ult and yell, I think. <laughs> well, if there were two of them, if there were two of them, he would still lose, assuming that Invoker Sun strikes. Because if Ix Mike is to use spells, so is Invoker. Look at that, even Fluff and stuff's having a real hard time. He should have just manned up and fought with Force Spirits. Went for the Sun Strike, but. 
Chinese. No fighting Order. spirit, etc., etc. And in fact, his sun strike would be enough to kill fluff and stuff now. Interesting pick uh, from Tidehunter. He picked the blink dagger. You don't really see that off that that often anymore. It's good if you have someone who's getting a pipe, but like this game, they're not actually even getting a pipe or a mech. It would seem. And there we go. That's the blink dagger ravage. And they end up getting the kill, and that's track gold for them. So if it's one for one, they'll be fine. But it doesn't look like uh, Tidehunter's gonna be walking away from this. Now they get TP support though. All of complexity standing on one another. Here comes TC. Oh, TC! Oh, oh TC. Oh, TC. my God. Bit of an overplay there. Fluff needs to get mana to TP he away. No armor. And now he's spotted! Oh, Fluff, run! Oh, Fluff! Fluff, no! <laughs> Fluff can put down. Is under attack. No. Oh, my God, this game. Now, if you look at the gold graph, it is 4,000 ahead of Radiant, or Radiant's favor, and the experience is still in Radiant's favor, but uh, not by a substantial lead by any means. Oh look, the gold graph is getting going. Insane. However, in reality, uh, Zenith is way ahead. Like, a lot of the farm is centered on TC. That's one thing. Also, a lot of Jo's money went into like a Midas, which uh, the like the equity and net worth that a Midas gives you doesn't translate very well into actual like cost efficiency of the item itself. It just gets you a lot of money. Um, also, once again, Dyer has taken one fucking tower. That is a hard spot to be in when you've only taken one tower, especially because it means that like supports like IX Mike are going to be super poor. Hannah Montana almost has the pipe, but not quite. And complexity desperation gang. They're just going to stand behind Jail. Maybe look for something a little bit more aggressive. Uh oh, this is gonna be bad. Arrow hitting the tower. Not doing too much damage though. Yeah, not doing a lot of beeps to that tower. But he hit it, it was a bullseye. And again, uh blink dagger on tide, but not up yet. And I expect to get struck! I have no idea so, um, how AA actually died there, but... Give me your PayPal. Okay, I'll put it in after my team wins against Complexity. Complexity drops the loser's bracket and gets instantly eliminated. Just give me your fucking PayPal. <laughs> yeah, where's your fighting spirit, Ix? Your team can do it. Hamilton Shut can't up. kill the <laughs> TC. Farming it up, but once TC gets his Manta, they may be able to take a fight. But the sad thing is, that's gonna be hard. They will have a uh, fucking sheep stick by the time he gets that, so it's still gonna be. Oh yeah, it's looking rough. It is Dyer's looking rough. Mm -hmm. Just give me this fight on bottom. Yes, has blink dagger. He has a ravage, and there it is. He oh, sees that. Man. Okay, just give me your fucking. Uh, I can't stand this anymore. All right, I'll put it in Skype. Yeah. After after the slaughter occurs, of course. I don't want no, to No, just fight. just fucking give me. Your no, no, we gotta watch this one. Watch oh, that's this that's the L from Cluffin. That's the L from Cluffin stuff. That's the gush. And there it is, just getting put down. All that track gold in the pockets of them now. They're rich. Are you just gonna wait to track them for more gold? More is overpowered. Fuck this shit. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna send this to you in Skype. All right. There you go, you can send me that five dollars. Man, I'm gonna have so much Did you seriously yeah. at PayPal.com? Er Wow. No no no. Regeneration. There we go. <laughs> PayPal Yeah, I work for PayPal. <laughs> they decided to promote me to CEO after uh, all the bets I was winning over Dota. So how much do you wanna bet on EG getting some? Fuck no, EG's gonna get destroyed. <laughs> Just gotta just just put on some sad piano music. Oh, I can do you one better. Okay, I'll listen to your stream. Oh, Ice Mike, whipping his ass back to the pool. 
Are we gonna go for the aggressive Sunstrike? <gasps> oh, Ix, the feeder Mike almost barely, barely evades death. Okay, it was close. I'm gonna get a ravage off. And oh man, going for the perseverance. He is like, fuck this. I'm going to just get a refresher. I would say he was just fucking around at this point, but I mean, there's a million dollars on the line. I mean, he's not gonna fuck around. And it looks like Boker over here on top lane with his sheep stick. I can't see this working. Oh, surprise! This is an entire enemy team. Oh, he forced us into the bleak dagger just to give it some extra duration. Here comes the roar. And okay, I was wrong. Oh, he is angry. That's the mad back. Well, I guess I was wrong. Chinese have no discipline. Perseverance up on tide. Still. Still. And working towards that man on Morphling. He'll have it once the tower goes down. Radiant structures are fortified. Not Dyer's occupying his illusion. He's got his mana now, though. At this point, he's a right quick monster. Animage, on the other hand, doesn't quite have his mana, and that's huge. He's about 700 gold away. The mana makes Animage so much stronger. Radiant's bottom tower has been denied. The pipe up, though. Here is Morphling with his Manta and Aegis. Aegis only gonna be up for like another three minutes though. He's morphed up really highly for someone that doesn't really need to be that afraid. Invisibility. Oh, Tie Hunter with an Invis. I'm sure this will be fun. Oh, look at that. He knows his whole team is behind him and just lets it go. Here comes the pipe, though. And here comes the roar! Did the Tio should bring him down? I don't think they do! Oh, man. Morphling just pooping all over the dire over here. Well, Morphling has an Aegis, so he's fine. However, he's going to be really, really highly morphed up when he comes back. Yeah, that's not the HP you want, silly Morphling. This is pretty much game. The gold lead is now extremely substantial. It's about 14,000 in the favor of the Radiant. The experience lead is up there. It's not insurmountable. But just the, the dynamic of the game at this point is such that it's going to be really, really hard. Oh, surprise! It's three Morphlings. And this is where J.O. feeds. And here comes Ix Mike. Is he going to be able to do it? Looks like Complexity's final stand has failed. I was really hoping they would commit to that fight. Why? I just want to see Complexity. Are they going to do another Desperation Smoke? The classic Complexity, we've lost the game. Let's smoke up and see if we can make something happen. Well, they won a game once when they did yeah, that. Yeah, they won a game they once. Okay. They won a game once. Once. Yeah, once. once. Yeah, they won a game. I heard the... I heard the uh, Sunstrike coming out somewhere. I didn't quite see it. And TC will have his Manta for the next fight, I assume. He's gonna go farm some Mega Creeps. A ult heading towards the pool. Dead Hannah Montana, still reasonably poor. TC gets gushed, gets anchor smashed. Oh man, I really hope he has his Manta for the next fight. He's going to need it. He has his Yasha, and that's good. That's one more item than he had last fight. But boy. They really almost went deep for that Morphing Illusion. But, natural response. I mean, if you do see the Morphing Illusion, there's a chance that their hero is behind it. And man, 
TC does not want to... He does not want to have to go back without his, uh... Without his Manta. And he has it now. He'll probably keep pushing, though, until someone TPs. Yes, he's got a Manta in the Sash. And, uh-oh, and one's Anna, careful. Oh, I heard a sheep! And yeah, they didn't well, actually get anyone. Anyways, now TPing back, but he needs to be here. They pop a Fortify. But this is where TC makes his final stand. Uh oh, TC. So, we're gonna watch ISMite. Fucking hell, Chinks are seriously gonna win. Shit. Moment of silence, please. Fuck that. Ah, oh, dude. Shanks are going to win this tournament. No tears on the mic. Run, Mike, run! Tree, Mike, you can't do it alone. Mike, you have to go back. Your ancient is under attack. You can do it. No, Mike, no! You went too far! Go back! Mike, you don't have to do this! Oh, poor Mike. The great thing about IX Mike is that he always delivers. And they give the GG. Dude, oh my god. The second. The third game was the worst. Holy oh, shit. Ayo flying across the stream. And you owe you sir owe me five dollars, I think. Yeah, I'm sending it now. Yeah, that's right. Um what do you think I should buy with that five dollars? Any thoughts? Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets you say? Can I hmm maybe I'll pull it and get a pizza. Also they have tears. Five dollar pizza? I don't know, ten dollars. See, here in America, we share. We don't win the Dota, though, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. So that was that. Are there any more games today? Yeah, there probably are. Let me check. I'd imagine there's some sort of intermission, while they wipe the tears from the mo or from the uh, floor of booth number two. It looks like the next game is in eleven minutes. Okay. Oh, it's going to be okay. EG against IG. Oh, this is going to be great. Okay, chat. Ones, if you think that Team America is going to win in the next one. If it's going to be EG, put a one in chat. Twos, if you think it's going to be IG, the Chinese team. One tier above EG. It will be our Chinese overlords. Will EG pick up where complexity left off? Nope. The Jing's going to win. Kind of intolerable racism. And it looks like we got a lot of twos. Well... Damn. Fuck. Yeah, the overlords are gonna win, I think. But, at any rate, uh, I guess this uh, tournament will resume ever so shortly. Uh, while we wait... Ah, uh, that was so fucking sad. Ah, fuck it. Someone link the own 3D stream, because I'm pretty sure that no one will care if you restream that. <laughs> All right, here we go. The international two coverage. Uh, he, 
play when he plays Morphling, he just H Y H Y just seems so much more comfortable. Let's hear two G D who probably I believe doesn't know what he's talking about. But at this at any rate, two G D has an amazing personality. And, uh, that didn't work out so. too great. Yeah, Obviously don't... Cole has huge momentum, but on Morphling Is it the stream exact the well, same they, they stream on own as it is, it is yes. on Twitch. Oh, it is. Really is Toby streaming or something? No, it's streamed through his channel. Uh oh, own 3D, up, and really, and really cool website. Uh, but I, Ice Ice did a lot of the heavy lifting through all of this, and I was really impressed. Ice 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 did a lot of the heavy lifting through all of this, and I was really right, impressed. We'll see if it broker. unfucks. All right, so uh, yeah, Zenith take it 2 1, but before we move on to our next. Okay, 720p probably is the, the winner bracket semi finals, but we will see him once more at least today with a winner's interview. I'll be back. You guys can listen to this. Hey interview. guys, this is Purge, and I'm here. Oh my god, god, no, I'm gonna stay. Match. It's gonna be Zenith H Y H Y. How were the matches for you guys? Oh, oh um, the matches were great. But, um, <laughs> you know, as, as all of us seen, we got off to a very bad start, and um, I think we kind of lost communication in the first game. But then after the after the loss, we kind of picked up what we kind of picked up what we were doing wrong and um, you know made the right changes. And um, so game two and game three were great for us. Um, were you expecting to do more of a global strategy for the game two, game two and game three, or just kind of work out like that with the picks? Um, mm -hmm. I guess it just kind of flows flows into to them as in it flows with what? the draft because. Um, like a global strategy? Is he serious? Like it just work, it just the happens there to use the global abilities. Well, I don't think it's meant to be a global strat, but yeah, it's just the way we play it, and I think we're very strong with it. It's a very tactical really way for our overlords for you guys. to say um, I have a, a question from Twitter from Mr. X, and the question is, um, when you guys do the picking stage, we notice that Loda was sitting off to the side. Do you do more of a team picking strat, or is he just hanging <laughs> off? Getting called out. <laughs> hmm, um, usually we do the drafting without Loda because uh, we, we feel that we know the team style more, and um, you know, in the past we tried to include him in the drafting, but then uh, when, they, when his opinions were not accepted, it kind of feels like uh, he's being left out of it. So we don't want to make it feel that way. We're just going to tell him that the draft is going to be done by ice and me. So the rest of them just be very confident of it and just play the game. And my last question, how does it feel after having a rough start on the first day of the group stage to make it for your, through your first round of the winner's matches? Uh, <laughs> um, makes us, it makes us very confident to win, and I'm very sure we will not disappoint. All right, thanks very much. Good luck with the rest of your matches, and back to you, James. Thank you, Perch. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, Loader, forever alone. <laughs> forever alone. But at least he's got five grand. There you go. It's a very tactical yeah. way of so saying it. Like, you guys just we don't the speak hero. the same just language that Loader does. Just win. Just We're just give me my kind of What did Loader yeah. say? <laughs> Nothing. They just um, said that, yeah, like, oh, he, we don't speak the same language as him, basically, more or less. So we just tell him to speak confident and play the game. But everyone who makes it to this point is guaranteed $5,000 since there's a $25,000 prize pool for anyone in the winner's market. I'll just bring it up. Team Zenith went 8 and 6. I mean, I guess everyone who wins their first game gets money automatically, rather. It would be a better way to put it. They also did quite poorly against some of the Chinese So is Cole going to, like, the loser's bracket? Oh yeah, Cole is fucked. We'll see if they have to battle their own, I guess. I will be right back. I'm going to use the restroom. I'll leave you with the own 3D stream. Once you win that match, then you're top three. So it's just going to take it one match at a time. Yeah, I would argue that it's a constant hurdle. Like, I don't, I don't think they've jumped past anything. Yeah, they made it into the money, and that's fantastic. But I mean, they can potentially play LGD, or they're going to play LGD next. I mean, that's not, that's that's the biggest hurdle so far, right? I mean, undefeated. Yeah. All right. So we can take a look at some of the highlights from game number two. I believe this is one of the uh, team turnarounds in the fight. So let's uh, go check it out. And here we are with. Uh, Team Zenith. Yeah, this was really the biggest impact that uh, Lotus Gondar had on this game. I mean, they get a nice initiation off the Ravage. I mean, XY, XY, or XY rather, hit a bunch of nice Ravages in here, but really, I think there's end up being three track kills. This is a pretty prolonged team fight. We see Invoker getting a double kill here off of the Sun Strikes, playing very well. Uh, HY, HY goes for this. What I really like here is they don't give up. They continue to go after him. He's tracked here. They're going to go for it. We get a nice push to cancel that. They might have been able to go up on the high ground, in fact, to catch the Beastmaster as well, but as very wise choice here, Zenith decides Nope, we're going to play it cautiously. We got the triple crack, crack kills. We just gained a bunch of gold. Let's not throw it away immediately after picking it up. Yeah, that fight worked really well. The fact that they had so many heroes tracked. I mean, even Flus Marana on the high ground was tracked there. If they wanted to go high ground, they knew what they were going up against. Uh, it was just a situation where they had the control. They had the Tide Ravage. Countless fantastic Tide Ravages coming yeah. out from XY. He was always there at the perfect time. And to me, he was sort of the MVP. Yeah, he game. was kind of an unsung hero in the storyline in terms of the kills. But he literally did come in with Ravage at the right time. And there was almost a refresher roar 
yeah. uh, a little bit yeah. later on, and it did seem that unfortunately Complexity weren't able to handle one Ravage, so two would have been uh, potentially very dif difficult. So, um, Bruno, anything that you want to give us some knowledge about? And I would also like to point out how clever Valve are, by the way. Valve are amazing at branding. <laughs> yeah. They've take, If we get a close-up on Bruno, we can see yeah. that the biggest focal point of this analyst desk, there is now suddenly <laughs> <laughs> Dota 2 logo. What can I say? Um, no. Did they uh, pay you for that product placement? There? Oh, lots. <laughs> six, six figures or? Um, maybe seven. All right, We're go, on, go on, Bruno. Sorry. Yeah, um, I, for nice me, speech. the important thing about this match is the whole matchup between AM, Anti Mage, and Morphling. The carry of the International 1 versus the carry of the International 2. So, how do these heroes fare when they play against each other? Well, out of the 58 they, times they played together, AM won 28 and Morphling won 30. So, he's got, he's the new king of the hill. Barely. 28 today, I feel like that's... <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's still a statistic <laughs> that matters, okay? It's, it's right all back. statistic matters. Yeah. Uh, there's lies, damn lies, and of course, statistics. Uh, but we do have another uh, highlight here, so we'll go in and check out what also happened in game two when Zenith pretty much just uh, started dominating and bringing their uh, performance up to scratch. Yeah, I think at this point we've got a double damage. These on last two highlight reels have been funny because the they've all been really taken like from point two in the game where it's Zenith like played unwinnable. so much better. Uh, I mean, you talked about the tide ravages in game three, those leading those in, but really we see it again here, just jumping Ouch. in there, a meteor dropped a wow. meteor on everybody. It's just big time. That was like damage. the best meteor deafening blast. I have a big time problem picking time, though, the MVP. I mean, you want to say ice, ice, ice with those sun strikes. You want to say HY, HY with his insane no morphling, but is it just XY? Uh, to me, it's X Y. Uh, he he set up all the team fights. Sure, it's one of those things where once you've got that blink dagger, it's it's fairly straightforward to blink on in cast ravage. But finding the perfect time, getting that moment right, is it's a tough thing. Ice 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 is such a troll, by the way. You see that? I'm pretty sure he's not from Australia. He is. Yeah. Oh, he is. No, I don't know. Is he Australian? Guys? <laughs> I I believe so. He's some some. I think he's related to my cousin or something. I thought it was Singapore, Asia. They all are over there. Is that a place? Um, all right then. So um, also uh, something that we we should mention was. <clears throat> When Complexity were pushing for the, like, just waiting for something to happen in their favor, they put everything kind of on TC. Uh, but at the time, TC really didn't get to do anything in those final fights because the Ravages were so good. Do you think if the whole Complexity team were able to kind of split up more and kind of nullify some of these, um, you know, Blink Dagger Ravages, that they would have a chance? Mm, to EG have versus TC IG in progress. Even though he was up pretty decent farmed and he got a man to start right idea. at the end, it, didn't really matter. There was no supporting cast. For me, the big thing when you've got an anti-matrix morphling game, it always comes down to the supporting cast where you have XY with the Tide Ravages. Over on the dire side for Complexity, he had Fluffy start talking. playing a support Morana. He mm. didn't really connect with any of the early game arrows, didn't get any momentum for his team. And then later on, he was very ineffective, just on a hero that can't really do all that much late game. You know what? I should have yep, switched right. to the so cam we'll so see I can see how complexity do when they can move into the lower bracket, which is, I like to call it the lower bracket. Some people call it the loser bracket, but that just hurts my feelings because that's where I start my tournament. So instead, we're going to go into coming up next and tell you guys what's going to be uh, on the agenda for today. And of course, we've still got our winner's bracket or the upper bracket. Ooh. See what I did there? Uh, which is going to be IG versus Team Evil Geniuses. That's coming up next. So these guys will be setting up on stage now. And then, of course, we're going to go to Team DK versus Na'Vi, last year's champions at the Internationals. They are here to defend their title. And then, of course, in the lower bracket, we got CLG versus MTW. But, guys, IG versus EG. Yeah, this is, I, I am super excited for this one. IG were my personal favorites coming into the tournament. EG, some of the biggest names in the, in the Dota, Dota universe, really. So this is pretty awesome. All right, yep. Well, we're excited for it as well. So when we come back, it's going to be IG versus Team EG. I'm still not going to get a hack. Looks like both See teams are still setting up. <laughs> Look at that guy in his baller fucking mouse pad. Steel series with cool shit on it. What a baller. What about EG? I'm basically just watching to see, based on the pods, when they actually go. Bubble looking mad concentrated. Jesus Christ, the EG players have enormous fucking mouse pads. I see they're not professional, they don't use uh, those little stands that the StarCraft pros do to make sure that their wires are always the same. I think expect you're making sure that our milk isn't hacking. What are you doing there, milk?
QGD is a baller. What are they doing here? What are you doing? Are they playing? No, they're not playing. I'm looking at your screen, Bulba. Game is paused. Oh, they're in a practice game, I guess, getting everything feeling good. These teams take forever. Holy fuck. Had a really tough group, but they actually came out third, so... Uh, to be honest, like, Complexity, yes, they came out second in their group, which was amazing, but for EG as well to come out third, I think that's a huge accomplishment. Game still isn't up. Again, just getting walked in on. Silly, silly demon. It's not an EG logo. He's using a Valve mouse pad. Interesting, interesting. Let's see what our friendly Asian team is doing at the moment. Who won Complexity or Zenith last game? Zenith won. Hello there. Oh, well, hello. I had my microphone muted and I was talking to myself for five minutes. Oh, you sad fuck. It's like the Chinese are ready to go. You can't even tell them apart. They're in uniform. This game's gonna be a stomp fest. You really Look think EG's gonna win that bad? Do you want to put some money down? I do not. I, I most certainly do not. Okay, because I got. I would. Hands. I would bet. I, who would you bet on if you were gonna put money down? EG, of course. IG. No, oh, EG, of course. Holy shit, you're really confident. EG, IG. <gasps> this is gonna be a sad day for Team America, I think. Do you wanna play video games? Uh oh, looks like something might have happened in the booth over here. What the fuck? Did he fart? Presumably. Maybe Demon thinks that he's making a show. Milk just farted. At least they're in the game. Who knows, it could have been anything. They're so fucking retarded, there's one million dollars on the line and... Yeah. But, uh, they're known for sort of basing their, th their games around Ferrari 430 on that solo mid. Joe plays their hard carry, and it's basically a team... <laughs> Bold luck for having this their... Is the dumbest, uh, this is the dumbest place to have Is that what China's doing now? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, right. these, these like the place to have thing? Uh, like, this is so stupid and so clearly like, uh, This team has been hand-selected by some uh, billionaire Chinese... Basically, the son of a Chinese billionaire who's put this team together and they're, they're built for success. The son of a yeah, I mean, you have YYF playing that side lane. Typically, you have Zhou playing that hard farm. As, as you mentioned, Ferrari is really the star of the show here. Ferrari is, in many many people's mind around the world, the best Dota player in the world. I mean, his, his invoker is legendary, to yep. say the least. I have to say, though, everyone was telling me Ferrari was awesome. I put him in my team for my uh, Dota 2 uh, team, and he didn't get me as many points. Why is that Bruno? Well, <laughs> he's very known for playing Boker. I think he probably is one of the best in Boker players, but unfortunately the stats do not say so. It's 9 and 8 <laughs> with Boker, not a great score by any means. All right, well, then we'll see if he can play a little bit better. But of course, the team of IG will now go up versus EG. And of course, we had a word with them earlier. Do you actually want oh, to watch that? No, it's pre game. I don't, yeah, I don't. Well, I want to watch this. Do you want to watch this stomp? Ah, uh, I, I, I want to watch EG get stomped. Mm. Hmm. EG's turn to bed. Looks like IC and Draskal are going to actually be the casters of this game. And it looks like immediately EG starts out with a ban on Profit, which is a pretty normal ban. Um, these days, Profit has slipped through a lot more. 
just because teams ban out other heroes, they consider them to be first ban. Um, notably, Invictus has first pick, however, they ban out um, they ban out the Lycan. They also ban out Wisp, which is somewhat surprising to me, although EG has played a lot of Wisp recently. EG bans out the Enchantress, which is a fairly normal ban as well. So, first blood. Who do you think is gonna get it and This is a little this is a little early to call. But EG does look for first blood more than the Chinese teams do. EG's turn to ban. And Naga Siren banned from Invictus. Again, Invictus has first pick, so you wouldn't think that it's on them to ban out a lot of these heroes that they're opting to ban out. Are they really bad at banning or do they have like a plan? They probably have some sort of plan. I'm going to go ahead and say that any of these teams that are here today are probably not bad at banning. <laughs> Maybe they didn't realize they have first pick. Or they want to get like a Darkseer or an Invoker. Oh my god, they get the Darkseer. Yep, so now IG gets the Darkseer. They let the Darkseer and slip through it and opts to ban out the Rubik instead. Which and EG gets Invoker and Lush. Now, Darkseer is one of the best heroes in the game, obviously. He's also one of the highest win rate heroes in this tournament in general. If he wasn't picked, he was banned. And the games that he was picked in, he won them. Exactly. And this leaves EG to get Milk's Chen and Bulba's Invoker. IG's turn to pick. And also, I getting the Invoker denies Ferrari the ability to play as Invoker. Ferrari known for his Invoker. Uh, Bulba also known for his Invoker. Both very, very good Invoker players. However, there are plenty Look of good Look at the Weebus on IG. Plenty of the, uh, plenty of the players are able to pick up uh, heroes that synergize well with Darkseer. They can do a lot of things. Ten seconds remaining. They're taking a while on their picks here. These are pretty important picks because it decides what they're able to get before the next banning phase. And they go for the Morphling. Um, very unsurprising Chinese big, big Morphling fans. GG, well played. Everyone big Morphling fans, honestly, in this tournament. They should have banned the Morphling. Instead of the Enchantress. Maybe. Tide Hunter. They might be comfortable just playing against the Morphling. And again, they pick up another team picks up Tynar. Tynar are one of the best synergies with Darkseer. Also, there are a lot of really, really um, aggressive tri lanes you can run that include a tri lane or a Tidehunter and a Morphling, which is probably more of what they're aiming for. Teams obviously are a big fan of Morphling and Tidehunter. Just like the teams, uh, the team in the last game opted for Morphling and Tidehunter, albeit with a different first pick. Ten seconds. Long through it. IG's turn to ban. And a lone druid pickup for evil geniuses. Which is surprising considering the last couple of games Morphling has been instantly banned. But here he makes it through EG's to, uh, to actually yeah, being... Well, the past games... Yeah, I mean, that's just because it was been, it's, been a, it's been a ban. Bans. I know, it's just been a ban for TC. I realize that. But regardless, even at that, Morphling usually... Or lone druid doesn't usually make it this far in the banning phase. And this is what I was talking about before when I said that it's sort of that situation where you have the big four uh, heroes that play against Morphling. Uh, where it's Annie Mage, uh, in Complexity's case, Tiny, Lone Druid. Um, and there are a couple of other heroes, but those are usually the ones that you see in these type of games. And in this case, they draft up the Lone Druid. Lone Druid has been played up against Morphling in a lot of games, and it's fairly... Uh, Ten seconds. The games are fairly good, not in terms of like a lane matchup, because you wouldn't actually see that as a lane matchup usually. In fact, you'd almost never see that as a lane matchup. But in terms of uh, the game overall and how you have to play around it, And they opt to ban out the Bounty Hunter. Now, this is, again, just like the Wisp, Bounty Hunter is a hero that's been picked a lot by evil geniuses in this tournament, which is possibly one of the reasons they decided to ban it out. And based on the picks so far, they may have actually picked it as well, since Demon generally plays the Bounty Hunter, and so far they have heroes for Fear, uh, Melk, and uh, Bulba. They so far have a good uh, lineup, but they're going to fuck it up with, like, a bad rider pick. <laughs> I doubt it. I mean, they're probably just going to pick... Solid hero for Demon and a solid hero for Universe. Universe generally playing the support bitch role. Um, sort of like Ix Mike, but with less deaths and more than one branch. And uh, <laughs> we'll see what they decide to pick for Demon, though. EG does their final ban now. They ban out the Broodmother, which is 
not actually something that I think Evil Geniuses would have picked. I mean, it's a hero that they could pick, but it, it just isn't what they would have, I think. Sorry, cat. I'm watching fucking Dota. And now it is the last ban remain. for Evil Geniuses, so they have to decide what is it they don't want to play against, and there are just so many heroes that can fuck them here. Because they're going to look to pick up a mid, and they're going to look to pick up something to offlane with the Morphling, unless they stick Morphling mid. And there it is. It's the Venomancer Tidehunter Morphling. Um, I feel like Venomancer should be like a fourth or fifth ban. Eh. I mean, they can just wait to see. Like, they don't have to show their hand, but they're obviously going to pick a support hero, and they know this, and they know that Venomancer is possible uh, for EG to pick up as well for Universe. Um, but this is interesting, too, because it means that... Um, it means that uh, they're going to once again run a really, really aggressive lane with a Morphling Tidehunter Veno, which is something that we kind of saw in different ways in the other games, like a Morphling Venomancer AA or a Morphling Tidehunter AA. And EG busting into the reserve time. They're not sure what they want to actually pick right now. They're going to show their hand. I don't know if they're going to show I'd imagine it. they'll pick... Oh, some kind of hard support. Fuck this cat, he's going out. Did the cat try to climb up on your uh, leg? Again. Is my mic muted? No. No, it just uh, landed on my penis. Hurt very, very badly. Cats have claws. And again, EG just burning through all of their reserve time. Not really sure what they want to do. They probably have, a t like, maybe two or three things in mind, the and they go for the Lashrak. So that's probably going to be the hero that Universe ends up playing. It could be Fear on Lashrak, but I, I sincerely doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. It'll most likely be a support-ish Lashrak. Templar assassin. And a Templar Assassin pickup. That is absolutely... Turn to pick. Absolutely unexpected. They're going to run a Templar Assassin most likely as their mid. And I did not see this coming. And at this point, EG has to be debating what exactly they want to do. Bet Rider. I would imagine it's going to be a hero that is uh, not Ten super farm remain. oriented. Bet Rider. Mm, I, I I would Five be incredibly remain. surprised and disappointed if it was actually. Bad they Rider. have the Invoker. It doesn't matter if they won't pick Bet Rider. I don't think. I mean, they, they could, have the but I just, have don't, I just don't think it'll happen. All I want to see in this tournament is Engineer Show. <laughs> and they're still just burning through their bonus time. This is where Melk realizes that he's failed as a captain. Ten, Ten seconds, seconds left. We'll know what they pick now. And they pick a Coddle. Like I said, it's not going to be a farm-oriented hero. Um, the reason they do this is probably because they want to run uh, a decent try lane. No. But we'll see. And we go to free camera. And okay, so it's Ferrari going mid. They're not going to pull supplies on him, it doesn't seem like. Uh, instead, he's just going to be going for that really early bottle. Zhao's going to be going bottom, are they going to pull supplies for him? No, no, they're not going to pull supplies for him. Now, Zhao expects to be in a lane that isn't very contested. Um, that's why he's going for six tangos, and uh, six tangos for branch ringer protection. Needs a lot of tangos to be under the tower. Fear will probably do the only item build that uh, Silver's really ever go. And, yep, it's the three branches, salve, tango, and then stout shield and the bear. It's going to be a safe lane Silver. Universe is on top with the Lashrak, fairly predictable. Uh, Milk buys him the wards. Milk will be going for the Basilius this game. There's no other really good Basilius carrier. USA! <laughs> Fucking D And this is actually surprising. Demon goes brown boots tangos as an item build. I didn't expect What? This. Uh, Coddle's base movement speed is really high, but I don't actually, I don't know why he did this. Um, but we'll see. Wow. That's like the worst thing you can go. And... They're going to move their lane about around a little bit. They're going to stick the Darkseer top. 
Okay, I'm really fucking tired and sad. The battle begins. Can you go to sleep? Yes, I am. Have a good day, friend. Alright, good night, good sir. Alright. Now it is a solo cast. I have been abandoned. Quick time. I'm okay with this though. Tidar does get a haste. We'll see if he tries to do anything with it. I, I don't think he really will. And again, Morphling is an absolutely an uncontested lane. And like I said, this is why he does this item build. He uses this item build so that he can tank up a little bit more damage under the tower. Um, I'm surprised he actually went first point into waveform, but he did. And there's literally not even a single hero here. Tanner quickly realizes this, comes down bottom. He's going to look to probably stack. As this happens, Milk is farming the jungle. Demon is farming the jungle. Universe is having a slight presence in the lane. Fear is missing last hits under the tower. That awkward moment where you fuck up two last hits in a free farm lane. Now, if I were doing that on stream, everyone would be like, oh, Barney, what a fucking noob. But it even happens to the best. This is where Demon gets his fucking farm on. As funny as this, he only got 12 experience for that. And he may or may not have actually intended to pull this in. He's getting, is he going to get out CS by a lane creep? Because it looked like he just wanted to double blast without actually pulling it, and he's getting raped by a lane creep. Demon's plan all along. And this is where he meanders back to the pool. But a lot of the time, you see three heroes committed to one lane. Um, it's... Okay. Let me find a way to let me find a way to post. One reason the trials don't work in lower level games is because the supports don't actually understand what they need to do with their time when they're in a trial. They don't understand when they need to be in the lane, they don't understand when they have to be like pulling and farm. They don't understand when they have to be aggressive, when they have to be passive, etc. etc. Here, um, it's really, really common to see three supports get committed into a um or two supports in a trial lane with one hero farming. And then uh But this is really different because EG has kind of committed four heroes to this. And I get the feeling that what uh, Demon was just trying to do was get a quick, uh, tower get a quick level uh, 2. Because getting a level 2 ensures that he can continuously use Illuminate. And try his best to push out the enemy creep so they don't put too much damage in the tower. Um, EG's done this before with a Beastmaster. Try to get him to level 3. Actually no, that was Navi, but it's a pretty common thing for your offlane. If you know that you won't be able to get experience in the first wave. However, in hindsight they probably would have been fine. Luckily, Ion Shell damage isn't that annoying for the bear itself. Especially as it gains levels. But this Morphling has to have absolute free farm. That said, the Silver Bear gets free farm as well. And somehow Demon has 9 last hits. He wants to buy something. And he gets a Quelling Blade. E.G. Demon. He's actually done this in virtually every game as well. Where he goes, uh, Quelling Blade, at least. Well, okay. But, uh, this is the classic E.G. Demon, Brown Boots, Tango's Quelling Blade. It's original build. Do not steal. They get at least $5,000 each if they win, I believe. There's a lot on the line here. <laughs> Fatal error demon bought a quelling blade. More or less. But it's actually, okay, in all honesty, say that Coddle is standing here, and there are three heroes pushing the lane. He's just like sitting behind the tower, like here. It's super easy to dive him as he channels his eliminate. The Quelling Blade lets him do a lot of cutesy shit. Like, it lets him come in, it lets him cut down this tree, which gains him access to this whole area to stand. All this is one of the worst places. But it basically just lets you tuck into nook and crannies, or nooks and crannies, and just abuse the full the full map. Um, that said, if it's really worth that much gold, it is debatable. But Demon does this, uh, does this a lot. Yeah, Demon does this, uh... Demon does this quite a bit, though. Also, Demon does sometimes do things that are overtly throwing, but I don't think this is he's trying to throw. Look at that, 
just cutting trees, except there was no reason to cut that one. Where'd he go? Oh man, all that money. I couldn't tell if he tangled that tree or if he cut it down. Demon Dota. Rush to judgment. Did me get into a battle with Tide? Tell him not to step on this turret. Here comes Chad in the middle. Ferrari has no mana. The true damage nuke will not be enough. Even if he would have used it. Radiant's and again, bottom tower absolute free farm for fear, but free farm for morphling as well. In terms of off lanes, I'm guaranteeing you that the Dark Seer has more farm than the Coddle. Demon 155, Dark Seer 240. Dark Seer is getting a really good amount of farm in this lane. Also bear in mind that a lot of demons last hits are small things, like small wolves, uh, small camp. And he's looking to stack ancients. And is he going for Basilius? No, he's probably going for Tranquils, that's what usually demon goes for. Especially considering that it would seem that Melk is going to be going for the Basilius himself. Radiant maybe looking to get aggressive here. I don't think that they will commit anything though. That ion shell just tickles the bear. If you're missing one under the tower. Uh oh. Demon maybe gonna look to drop some more blasts, but Tidehunter doing very, very annoying pulls. Gonna deny him a lot of what he could have gotten. Not really anything happening though so far. Both teams just content to farm up. That awkward moment where the centaur stuns you. I don't want to have to anger smash there, but it doesn't really change anything. Demon gets a DD. Not gonna do anything with it though. He can't though, he can't. There's nothing the demon can do in this lane. However, Darkseer is able to get a lot of experience and a lot of gold. So he's having a much better time. This is one of the reasons that you see Darkseer uh, first pick, first ban. But also just the fact that Darkseer is just such a, such a powerful hero. Fear hitting for a lot of damage as phase boots are up. That's why. And this is where Demon finds himself in an awkward spot. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And he is fine, actually. Looks like Demon cut himself one of the cutest trails I've ever seen. Mass spotted out. That's actually kind of funny that he opted to do that. Cuts down a tree here. Comes into here. Cuts down this tree. Cuts down one more tree. And able to try to blast from a weird angle. You guys are witnessing the highest levels of American Dota. It looks like EG just getting fed up here. They just want to push down the middle lane, try to do stuff. The bot to farm, why not? Denied. Notably, now that he has level 2 Chakra Magic, it's like exponentially better than level 1. Instead of restoring 30 mana, it restores almost 100. To himself, rather. He uses it on himself. Demon might want to shock for himself. Deciding not to. Gonna finish his tranquils, I assume? Yeah, he's got his green cowboy boots. This lets Demon get down and fucking dangerous. However, Darkseer had his cowboy boots some time ago.
And for some reason, Melk is down here. That's what I'm thinking there. Isn't that blast? Hits for so much to Zhao. Oh, Feeming, or Fear gonna get dope on? Oh, is anyone gonna TP to help him? Oh, he gets blocked by the ward! He is fucked. Or is he? He's gonna run away? He's getting chased down by YYF though, but he runs a little bit faster. The Shrak gets out first, but on Tidehunter, and this is where YYF is fucked. Is Fear still gonna go down? Oh, he's going deep for Fear! There's the boss! No! Fear! Fear got killed! What the fuck? It's a two for two, but with first blood in favor of EG. Not really two for two, considering that Invoker died mid to um, Templar Assassin, but I'm not expecting to get solo killed. Hmm, 1500 gold up on the Shrak, though. That's a lot of money. I'm just doing these pulls. Ready a little bit ahead, but not enough to actually be Dyer's a substantial lead. Also, a lot of this gold is centered on Zhuawei, Dyer's whereas most of the EG players are actually going to have money. Like, even Bulba has some items in money, although he spent his gold on stupid shit. Um, universe pretty damn poor. Mel, way, way, way too poor. I'm sure he has Shen the Courier. No, he's probably just combined in front of the spy items. Okay, I guess I was wrong. But universe farming up. Uh, really well. As with fear. Huh. This is actually looking not that great for EG so far. And as this happens, Bulba's getting dope. Oh, just barely in time. He stay he stays on top of uh Templar Assassin just so the tower will continue to hit him. The tower can get fogged as well. I welcome the forest aid chain. Undruid gets the uh, damage on the tower, gets the last hit. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Shrek does end up picking up Arcane Boost. I'm not sure why he didn't pick those up a little bit earlier when he had the money. Maybe not sure where he wanted to go. Just blasting and blasting. It's wrong with this tower fall. Calling Blade won't help him last hit under it though. Looks like Morpheus is gonna be really, really aggressive and try to get this tower kill. Ooh, just barely. That was a great play by Zhuawei too. I mean it was the it was the replicant that actually that actually got the last hit on that. And this is where Venomancer dies. I remember there was a bug for a long time in the beta where if your replicant actually last hits something, you would get the gold. In fact, the hero that you replicated, what it was really frustrating. When you ganked someone, and you were giving a replicant a kill. You kill a support, it's like the carry on the enemy team murdering their own support. It was very, very annoying. And Fear, again, has so much money, actually. He's died once. He's died once. I don't think he had to die there, but he's died. But still, he is farming up a storm for this early in the game. Double that said, damage. ever since getting that tower kill, Morphling is also looking very, very farmed. This isn't a game where the Morphling needs to go Lincolns, or even really a game where he should. He may go for an Ethblade, but again, the Chinese teams are not big fans of the Ethblade Morphling. He may have to go BKB, he may go Manta, there are a number of things he can do, none of them being that bad. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. No one is even going to try to contest the Morphling. He's been given absolute free reign over the map. So about a thousand gold off of his relic. Or if I stop our shield, I do not believe so. Morphling took a lot of damage there. Some free farm for Dean over here. Temple Assassin, as this happens, kills Cone Druid again. Although he wasn't the one who killed him initially. And is that a Blink Dagger for TA? And that is a Blink Dagger for TA. Even delivering a Clarity as well. I just want to go back to the well. 13 minute Phase Boots Blink Dagger is pretty, pretty good. It's farming up very well. Demon actually with a surprising amount of money himself. 
We'll see what he goes for. Maybe a necro book. Maybe something else. And he picks up something. And he just picks up a staff of wizardry. Interesting, to say the least. Could still be that necro book. Could be a four staff. Could be. Well, those are probably the only items I would expect. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Templar assassins are pretty good here in general. There aren't any heroes that completely shut her down. Obviously, there are some heroes that have abilities that deal very well with your refraction, like a Venomancer, any kind of hero that gets a Radiance, Doomer, etc. But none of those completely make you useless by any means. Like Lestrac even instantly rips the uh, the instances of refraction off of you. It's like Chen just using these skeletons to scout a little bit. <clears throat> oh, goodbye, Chen. The CI has a blink dagger. Well, no. Looks like you're doing what you do best. What blasphemy is this? <laughs> Summoning a universe. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, going for of Eidos, yeah, I'm sure. Kyle doing a really styling blast. Wiping out the creep wave. Dyer's structures are fortified. Looks like Jwao. Wow. Is, he is actually going to be going for that F wave. Um, oh, that was a good tornado, actually. But a lot of the Chinese players are really not fans of the F wave. Um, ooh, he's getting caught here, and he's morphing down, too. Oh man, he gives no fucks. And immediately back to farming. But hey, he's gonna be going for the athlete right now. That's that's good. I mean, he doesn't need a Lincoln's this game, and uh, BKB would be nice, but he can wait a little bit on it. As this happens, they're just gonna be content with letting Fear farm up his relic. However, Fear has been ganked twice, whereas Morphling Radiant's has been pretty much left to alone the entire game, Radiant and not ganked. Notably, fortified. two Dyer's towers fell on bottom, and fallen. now top tower, so this has to be a gold advantage swinging in favor of the Radiant, I would imagine. Demon throwing down another blast, and it'll actually hit too. It's a really good bit of damage. And immediately a jump in the gold graph um, to something that is somewhat substantial. In terms of actual farm, though, a lot of this is just from towers. Um, so EG has the ability to bring it back. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Ooh, big glass. Oh, with the blink dagger from Tide. Oh, no blink dagger. He just walked in. Okay, my bad. Interesting. Still a really, really big ravage. I'm surprised he's able to just walk that ravage into everyone. Maybe hasted? He sure got in there quick. And Universe, no! Universe, no! Oh. It's okay, I mean, you got a Dark Seer. At that point, it's an okay trade. But usually walking into that many heroes. Now, not really a, a natural Radiance Carrier on uh, the Radiant team. Or not Radiance Carrier, rather, but Mech Carrier. So Dark Seer opts to go for the Mech. Now, a lot of the time, you'll see Dark Seers go for Pipes instead. Um, which is really, really good, and would still be a very good decision this game. But he'll probably get a Pipe next. I would just imagine that he's going for the Radiance, or the... I keep calling it a Radiance, they're nothing alike. But he's actually just opting to go for the Mechanism first, which is, I think, a good decision on his part. But EG are just falling more and more behind. Ferrari on the Templar Assassin, just getting more money. Probably has something on the Courier. And yeah, she may be going for that Desolator. Maybe BKB, but I highly doubt it. I'm willing to bet Ferrari will just go for the Desolator and continue to stomp Evil Geniuses with ease. Faith gets his arcane boots up. He can go and farm the ancients if he needs to. He can do whatever, really. Demon, opting for that four staff. He'll have it in a moment, but uh, I just don't think it's going to stop uh, the roll that Radiant has so far. Now, Fear getting really close to his Radiance. He's about two to three minutes away. So he's going to get a 20 minute Radiance in what was pretty much a free farm lane. Uh, it was slightly contested though, his lane, but more importantly, what's shutting the Lone Druid down is the fact that he's been ganked twice and he's taken no towers. 
Also of note is that he's getting a phase boots radiance. A lot of the time when you see these teams that get like um, 16 to 17 minute radiances, it's without phase boots. So he's not really that poor by any means. And he's the level 1 mana leak to try to get him to run into the tornado or EMP. And that's a really, really important tower pickup. Oh, and that's a really fucking big combo. Goodbye, EG. Oh, EG, did you lube up before you ran into mid? Oh, oh, another trap goes down. Oh, milk, no. Universe, no. Oh, Universe makes it away. And what was a very, very big pickup for EG is now a very, very bad situation for them. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. And man, are they gonna get two towers off of this? Dyer's it looks like IG might be 9 11 in Evil Geniuses Radiant's right now. Oh, Tornado EMP? That's gonna slow down. By the way, I've going really big. Bull beginning picks. I just don't think EG can win at this point. He must have come too close to the mysteries. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. And yeah, EG had a really, really important pick up there on the tower. But then they got Radiant's they got killed. They got 9/11. Lost three heroes. And at this point, still no radiance up on the bear. We are desperately trying to get it though. Finds the enemies, has to TP away. TPing to bottom, really nowhere to farm in the immediate future. Demon, of course, doing still a bear bro move and just blasting the creeps with them. And it looks like, it sounds like that more size Death Blade. He had that for a bit now, too. He had that for the last fight, for sure. He's probably had it for a couple of minutes, actually. And this is the Death Blade Morphling. He's gonna get this invisibility. And oh boy, is he gonna be happy with this. He may want to morph down a little bit lower since I'll have the invis. He reveals that he has the invis for one CS. A true Chinese Dota god. But who knows if they'll actually check his inventory. I would imagine they would at this level of play. But that's one of the most frightening things is knowing that there's a morphling somewhere on the map with an invisibility and an athlete. What a fucking retard. I'll explain what he just fucked up there in a moment, but, uh... Alright, it looks like we have a second of Sphere Feeds. Um... Okay, basically what Morphling did there is he popped the Invis, and it got purged from the Tornado. Tornado purges a lot of buffs, invisibility and double damage and haste, all, all being some of them. And you occupied the wrong replicant more play. Are you trying to throw me off? Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, he's so helpless. Oh, there's nothing he can do. Just getting put down. And that is how you feed EG Demon more items. But it's okay, because feeding EG Demon is probably the best decision, considering that he'll just build something fucking retarded with it. Um that said, they're going to get the rush as this happens, but that's really, really not good for the Morphling. Um, has Illusion. Now, EG Demon has enough money for a Rage buyout. If he does, I'm dying. Ferrari, again, just hits like a fucking truck. Really, really strong gank-oriented lineup as well. Um, with the F-Blade Morphling, as well as the Templar Assassin. Silver with his Radiance up, I believe. But this is still uh, not the most well-timed Radiance, considering the lane he was in. It was a, virtually a free farm lane, and he gets a 22 minute radiance. But this is what happens uh, when you're killed over and over. And I said earlier that he had phase boots, and that was good. But it still feels like a very raw radiance, considering that his bear has nothing. But sometimes you get games like this, I guess. But it's looking pretty rough for fear. 
Dame is looking very grim in general as well, since TA doesn't really have as much of a problem killing a one as you might think. And this isn't even a gank. This is like a five-man farm where they're kind of trying to bait because they're all sitting in smoke behind fear. They're unsuccessful. Now, as this happens, just everyone on the map getting farmed. Ancients getting cleaned up, Morphling farming top, Templar Assassin farming mid. Oh, Templar Assassin, you so sneaky. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And Morphling picks Dyer's up the last of the tower outer towers. Fallen. This is where the game starts looking really hard. That's the bear as well. He has a resummon though, of course. But the game is wildly in favor of IG at this point. Lone picks up a cloak, but... Still, going to be not that hard to bring down. It makes him a less... Uh, susceptible Ethblade target, obviously. And uh, getting a cloak up on Lone Druid after you have a lot of HP due to your ultimate is also fairly standard. Almost everyone does this in general. But I still feel as though he's going to fall very quickly in a group fight. Oh boy. And they get the bear, and I don't think he has a resummon. Oh, they don't get the bear. This might look like it. This looks like an okay fight, but I don't think they're going to get anything. Oh man, it's Ferrari being so mean. It still has that double damage bottle up too. I want to see what she does with this DD. Oh man, she has her crit too. You can crit on your melt and that does enormous damage. They have to be looking for a fight right now. They're so, so strong. Especially Ferrari. It's gonna fire up the enemy ancients, knowing that the uh, dire side can't really even leave their base. This game is more or less completely over. Dire side completely lacking any kind of lockdown, but I mean, in general, it's not like they were lost in the because And they smoke up really, really aggressively, and this is not what they want! That's a Tide Hunter! And he gets the Ravage! They just walk the Ravage into IG. They all get back to him. Universe can't do anything. They're all fucked here. Demon can't do anything. Fear completely fucked. Demon will get away. Tempor Assassin losing the Aegis, but that's nothing right now. That is nothing. Triple kill for Morphling. Oh man, that is the last thing that you want to find when you go for a smoke gank and you're behind is a fucking Ravage and a Dark Sphere. That's like a complexity smoke gank just with twice the desperation. Go step up on Demon so he doesn't get one shot. That's actually a really smart pickup. I think he's summoning someone to him. No, he's not actually. He's just doing Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. And Melk throwing in the towel. And look at that, just two shots. Ferrari, how many shots? Ferrari, the feeder. Universe completely outplaying. And that was that. Very, very rough game for EG. Truly a excellent display of Chinese dominance in the international. All of our hero teams are going to be quickly eliminated, it would seem. And as I go and get a drink, I give you own 3D. He won't be able to take game number one. IG just too strong for them. The team from China, they topped their group. They've now taken the first game here in the upper brackets.
for the uh, the International Dota 2 Championships, guys. What was the big story for you? Uh, I think giving away the Darkseer is really the mistake. Yeah, Morphling and TA did all of the work, uh, but really Darkseer was the, was the thing here. Uh, there were so many nice interactions here. You could pull in with a big vacuum, hit it in a nice ravage of Venomous Gale, maybe an Venomancer ulti, or it could be just as simple as a Darkseer pulling everybody in together. You get a nice slow off of a TA, and TA just runs in there, honestly, with an Ion Shell and just big splash damage. That's almost really enough. Yeah, what EG went for with the Keeper of the Light less track uh, is a lot of heavy early game push, but they were just too squishy to withhold the damage. I mean, Morphling early on, sure he's a character, sure he needs a lot of farm, but that way for one to get level 4 can do a lot of damage to squishy heroes like those. So what did you think about Fear's performance? Uh, I think he did okay, yeah. He was a little bit slow on getting the Radiance, but I think generally God's hit it right on the head. They're just too squishy. I mean, people really underestimate the amount of damage output that, that Morphling can do early on, and a TA is even more ridiculous, so... Yeah, the trade-offs they were getting around the map, I mean, Fear was farming, he found that fairly well. He actually got picked off a couple times early game, which is where IG really started yeah. to pull ahead. They didn't really try gank him early on in game, but once they hit the 10 to 15 minute mark, they gank him quickly twice. It slows down his radiance dramatically, and from there on out, IG are in cruise control mode for me. Yeah, and also, as you mentioned, just the team fight synergy with that Dark Seer was a huge factor, and we can actually take a look at that as well. Around about the 16 minute mark, I think it was, when... Uh, they hit and you know just a, a yeah. big team fight in the middle and it was just painful here it is well we were actually drinking whiskey i don't think we actually caught this fight this is our first time actually watching it <laughs> well, well let me just tell like you we see a nice it's vacuum fantastic. into a, we see a nice vacuum into a venomous gale as well as a, a ravage it looks like so they end up picking up a bunch of heroes here yeah i mean you just can't give away a dark seer I, I feel like Darkseer is, is just insane. They actually do get the kill there, but they pick up a universe on the backside. Yeah, see, all the kills are on the right heroes. Morphling and Tier are the ones picking them all up there. Yeah, that was uh, something as well that um, AC and also Draskal mentioned. All the kills were on the right heroes for IG. So, Bruno, anything you want to tell us about the match? Here's the thing, um, Fear, you have to farm faster. By the time that Morphling had 200 CS, you only had 137. So, kill more creeps. <laughs> It's good, it's good advice from the stat man. Easier said than done. Wow, yeah, yeah, pretty big time. I do want to say one last thing. Milk, uh, you know, he doesn't want to go out uh, uh, with a loss here. I mean, yeah, they're still in the winner's bracket. They can get back in the loser's bracket. But he said that this is going to be his last professional tournament, but possibly. So yeah, uh, I feel like they're going to be a lot stronger coming Retirement in. around, uh, yeah, Milk as well. But he, he had a tough game, that one really couldn't contribute as much as he wanted um, so guys yeah we're just waiting for the players and teams to get ready so once they are we'll jump straight back into the next match you've got to remember IG are now 1-0 up if they win one more game they move on to the semi-finals they play tomorrow but they're guaranteeing themselves $25,000 if Team EG lose they are going to go down to the lower bracket they'll still be in the tournament but they'll play tomorrow as well and that will be if you lose once more you're completely out of the tournament so but they can still come back there's uh, potentially two games left so let's talk about the games that are left here. Can EG take a, a match off IG? What do they need to do? I think they need to be a bit more prepared for what IG can do. I don't think IG are going in anything too unpredictable. Uh, they're sticking to their strength. They're running Ferrara in that solo mid on some of his invoker. This game, it's TA. Uh, they know what's going to be coming their way. They maybe want to go for something a bit different. Have Fear play something like his Ricky Maru. It's a hero which is somewhat they sometimes pull out every now and then. They've had decent success with it. Maybe they go with a strong dual lane mid. We've seen the CM Morphling dual lanes really shut down here as they can go for it mid before. Right, so I, I am back. Just mix it up a little bit is the key here. I just think it's going to be very difficult for EG to, to stop IG. The real problem is it's similar to the LGD situation. They can do too many things. They're a too versatile team. Ferrari can play everything in mid solo and win just about all of those lanes. How did you find Bulba's um, performance against uh, Ferrari's TA? Bulba on Invoker. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually missed a little bit of the landing phase, if I'm perfectly honest, but I mean, just looking at the, the well, stats... Well, he was here. easily over double in, in, in creep kills and yeah. also denies. I mean, Invoker's a hero that can win the lane against TA, but TA is really strong. All right, well, we'll see what they can do next time. Ferrari probably played a much better game he has now out of the group stage. All right, pre-game is up. Form. IG looking very dangerous. Bruno... These guys are experts. Did you know that one of the teams won because they killed Lurpix? EG's turn to ban. Alright, so. This game, EG does not get first pick. Or yes, they do. Okay. I will start off by making a comment that is completely incorrect in every way. But, at any rate... They ban out the Lycan, they ban out the, in, uh, the Enchantress Prophet, they ban out the Enchantress, 
And the bands are looking almost identical. These teams have uh, lots of originality in their bands. It feels like both teams are just also uh, practiced in their banning phase or their draft. But they have no real reason to, to switch it up. But I still want to see what EG is going to do differently this game. Because I feel like EG is going to get stomped into the floor. But we will find out. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Who the fuck knows what EG is thinking about Reserve right now. Time. Maybe they're debating whether or not they want to ban the Templar Assassin. I'm willing to bet that if Bounty Hunter's in the pool, EG will pick it up. But we'll see if he is. EG thinking, why aren't they Chinese? More or less. And they ban out the Chen. IG's turn to ban. Yeah, Chinese big fans of Invoker, also big fans of Morphling. But then again, who isn't? Even the non-Chinese team, er, teams are big fans. However, the Chinese known to pretty much first pick those two heroes. And again, this is really, really common in terms of bans for the Dire, like I was talking about the other two games where the same banning set happened, where the Dire is forced to ban out Lycan, Naga, and Darkseer because all three of these heroes are so good that no team actually wants to play against any of them. So unless you're first pick, you almost are obligated to do these fairly standard bans. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <laughs> IG's turn to pick. Who took round one? Uh, round one was won very convincingly by Invictus. Okay, so Rubik makes it through. EG instantly picks up Rubik. Pretty smart pick. Rubik in this tournament has been a tier one mana pick. And Invictus responds by using the Lone Druid. And Invoker, okay. These are also uh, two heroes that are very, okay. Before I say anything, Morphling's still in the pool. EG may pick up a Morphling, but um, these are pretty common picks. Um, last game I was very surprised to see Silver actually make it through to be the sixth pick. Uh, it looked like he went quite a ways. But at any rate, they have Ferrari's Invoker. Uh, Chinese teams in general really, really like Invoker a lot. I uh, consider him to be worthy of picking in the first round of picks, whereas a lot of the other teams, it seems like Invoker's popularity has tapered off slightly. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve. Enigma. And they get the Morphling Enigma. IG's turn to pick. I'm surprised they actually went for the Enigma pick. Uh, it seems like a lot of Chinese teams haven't been very interested in picking or really banning the Enigma. But they may go for a strong team fight oriented lineup this game. But Morphling pick, unsurprising. Uh, overall, just a lot of teams realize that Morphling against Lone Druid is a really, really comfortable uh, way to play a game around and can go either way. So last game it was IG with the Morphling and. Uh, Five seconds remaining. Completely destroying evil geniuses, but this this game uh, it looks like IG is going to show evil geniuses how you win. When the lone druid is your hero on your team, bounty hunter, and they pick up the bounty hunter from IG. That is hilarious. That is great. They know that this is a hero that they really, really like on uh, Evil Geniuses, so they opt to just pick it themselves.
demon not too pleased. Doing a little show for the camera, demon realizes he's basically on reality television. And the second banning phase commences. IG or EG rather spending a very very long time to decide what they want to ban out. And they ban out the Shadow Shaman. IG's turn I don't I don't really see why they did that. I'll be honest, I don't see a lot of oh I guess Chinese teams favor Shadow Shaman as a support more than other teams. But it seems like a lot of the uh, the Western teams just don't pick Shadow Shaman as a support anymore. But I just couldn't see IG actually drafting that is the biggest thing. Lockdown for the morph. You can still morph EG's through it anyways. Turn to Although bad. lockdown is still obviously very, very important against Morphling. I just couldn't see Invictus doing a lane with a Shadow Shaman Syllabare in the tri-lane. It's just one of those things that's not very common. Invictus is most likely to pick up two heroes they want to tri-lane next. Um, they bet out the Broodmother, which is uh, actually pretty smart, because this is a game where I could see EG potentially picking it up, but again, it's not one of those things that hops out as being uh, something that seems very stylistic of EG when they have a Morphling. It seems like Fear is usually the one who ends up playing the Broodmother or the Morphling. They don't usually do both. Invictus seems like they've almost just banned out all the heroes that are considered to be really, really good heroes in top tier bands, whereas EG bans out specific heroes. Five seconds remaining. IG's turn to and they ban a Venomancer. Now, Venomancer is a hero that I could have seen get laned with a lone druid, uh, and is a really, really common hero to lane with a lone druid. Also, um, Venomancer is a hero that in a tri lane can end up getting a lot of farm as a tri lane support. EG's turn to I could have seen them definitely picking up uh, Bulba with the Brewmaster, though, so that was a really good ban. So what EG will probably look to pick up here is maybe a mid solo, um, but more importantly, they need to pick up a support. It's probably going to be Fear on the Morphling, it's probably going to be Milk on the Enigma, and it's possibly going to be Universe on the Rubik. That seems to be what they generally do. So it looks like they just need a hero for Demon and maybe one for Bulba. So probably a mid solo and then an off lane. Five seconds remaining. They could run the Morphling mid. I just don't think that they'll do it against Ferrari Invoker. So they're going to take their time here. They don't have a lot of reserve time left, though. It's something worth thinking about. Invictus needs to pick up uh, two heroes to support a tri-lane, though. Most likely. Again, they could do their laning a number of ways, but this just seems like the most likely way. Bubba likes Rubik? Really? I've actually seen the Rubik get played by Universe. I've also seen it played by Demon. I've seen it played by Bulba as well. But I'm just assuming that it's going to be a support Rubik this game. They're not a whole lot of farm. However, that said... It's probably Shrek. going to be Universe on Tidehunter, unless they offline the Tidehunter. EG's and I think it will a Shrak on Invictus, which is a really good pick. Um, a lot of the Western teams are just favoring offlining their Tidehunters instead of using them as support in a tri lane. However, like I said before, uh, Tidehunter is one of the better supports to put with a Morphling. Um, so that might be something they look for as well. We'll know immediately based on who is playing it. Five seconds remaining. And Evil Genius is almost out of time. Crystal Maiden. They had 18 seconds left and they pick up the Crystal Maiden. Which says to me that they're either going to put their Rubik as a support or their Tidehunter. It'll be one or the other. Um, definitely going to be Universe on Crystal Maiden. I would imagine it would actually just be uh, Demon or Bulba offlaning on the Tidehunter. Milk on the Enigma, Fear on the Morphling, and then Demon or Bulba on the Rubik. It could be Rubik mid, it could be Rubik offlane, but I would imagine it's going to be a Tidehunter offlane. That's my prediction, but we'll see. Again, I don't watch enough EG uh, games with Rubik in it to know whether or not it'll be Bulba or Demon, but we'll see. And a Sand King pickup. So, this is really, really good. It's probably going to be a Lone Druid free farming the safe lane with a Sand King Lashrak. Uh, as uh, supports. Also, Sand King Lestrack, very, very good synergy. Very, very kill oriented. An offlane bounty hunter would be my prediction. And then a Invoker mid. And Invoker's going to be going for a Quas Wex. Most likely, he could still go Exhort, especially considering that he has a Sand King, but we'll see. I'm, gonna, I'm willing to bet it's going to be a Quas Wex. 
just based on his itemization. And like I said, Sanking is going top. Bounty Hunter is going to the, to the off lane. It's going to be Sanking Lesh with Silver free farming the safe lane. And then Milk on the Venomancer, Universe on the Crystal Maiden. Saw that one coming. And Demon will most likely be off laning as the Bounty, or as the Tide Hunter rather, against the Bounty Hunter with Bulba on Rubik. That was one of two ways that I imagined it going. Rubik, I would imagine, also will be going mid. Demon giving a shout out to the Evil Geniuses CEOs. And this will most likely be Universe and Fear in a lane. 30 seconds. Bulba in the middle lane. Tidehunter off laning against the Bounty Hunter with Mail farming up in the forest. Not a lot going on right now. Just Dyer placing some defensive wards up for their Syllabare. They don't want him to get killed at all. We're going to check for the rune. Silver just kind of scouting out with his bear. You know, see if he's actually going to be up against. Uh... Or is he going to pull creeps for their bounty hunter? This is something that I've seen done a couple of times. It's really, really, really effective because it means that you don't miss out on any experience. Especially when you're in tri lane in a safe lane and you don't actually need your bear. Pull tried to send the bear onto the ledge. <laughs> he did, I didn't notice that. Been hilarious at work. And he's gonna pull creeps for Ty or uh for Bounty Hunter rather. That is really really good because it guarantees the Bounty Hunter level 2. It means that both Demon and generic Chinese guy are gonna get farmed. And somewhat surprisingly uh, to me, they opted to put the Crystal Maiden Morphling mid, which has recently become a really, really popular duo mid, uh, simply because of the potential that you have to be aggressive with it. Uh, both heroes innately have really, really slow movement speed, but that is not uh, a downside that gets accentuated in the middle lane, where the amount of uh, action is happening almost entirely on like, one screen, really. Morphling is morphed down, but they didn't pull supplies on him, which is something that you see a lot. Um, but this is a really, really good double mid. However, this completely fucks over Bulba. Bulba will get next to nothing in this lane. And Bulba usually enjoys playing mid and not um, an off lane. Particularly not a failed off lane either. Um, pretty unsurprising. Morphling getting virtually free farm. Tidehunter getting absolute free farm. Off with you! And Bounty Hunter getting the first wave worth of last hits. And it looks like they're going aggressive on Ferrari. They're gonna be, oh, they're gonna get him that first blood. Oh, but Crystal Maiden got it. First blood, Ooh. and it's already icing over. Oh, she, that dumb bitch, she wasted herself. Oh, if the Sand King would have realized that, that would have been a dead Morphling. Fear has to go all the way back because the Salve got fucked up. And this lane, really, really convenient for Demon. Not only is this matchup favorable for the Tide Hunter, but uh, Demon is also in the safe lane here too, so he's gonna get a, a lot of farm. Lone Druid is gonna get absolute free farm, and Bulba is fucked. In fact, he's just gonna completely walk all the way back so he can block the creeps so that he can try to get closer to his tower. Maybe hoping to get experience for this one. And no, I don't think he's going to get any experience for this either. This is the most ineffective offlane choice I've seen in a long time. I really thought that it might be a Crystal Maiden uh, Morphling just put up against the enemy's tri lane, albeit that would fuck over the Morphling. I just didn't expect it to be Rubik chosen as an offlane hero, especially in the difficult offlane. It just seems like uh, the draft was not that great in that regard. And Demon now has a bottle, so he can bottle crow. Denied. Ferrari has seven last hits in this lane, which is quite a few, considering he's being dual laned against, and that Morphling only has, what, like 10? 11? Not a very effective cold snap, though. Yeah, it's absolute free farm for Silver. This has to make Silver really happy. He has an Orb of Venom as well. 
A lot of people are uh, opting to not go for the Overven. And, and Bulba realizes he's just going to be sitting at the tower anyway, so he may as well just check rune. Maybe he'll look to try to help in the first blood here, but it's it just won't work, in my opinion. Such mimicry. Hey, pick up the illusion. What is he going to do with this? Is he going to try to pull creeps? Is he going to try to be annoying? Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. With the numbers above the team banners, that's how many people bought pendants or whatever in game to support their team. Clearly, no one supports evil geniuses, but it would be a waste of money. Surprisingly, more people supporting complexity in EG. And this SK Lush are going to be roaming now that they have their level 3. Um, really, really deadly. A lot of kill potential. Oh man, this is going to be really awkward for both sides here, actually. And that's a sentry ward. So they know that they're not in, in vision right now. By which I mean that they're standing right on top of a sentry and a normal ward. So Radiant knows all about this. And they just back off. Radiant's top tower the Bulba knows that this attack. is happening. They were standing right on top of a sentry. Even if there was just a sentry, uh, even if it was just a sentry and no normal word, they would have been sighted. And Bulba's gonna get going on anyways! No, he could see it coming! What the fuck, Bulba? Lone Druid gets a kill. Oh man. That is just no good for them. Crystal Maiden, uh, they, they again kill the Invoker. It looked like he used a Ghost Walk just based on the trail. Um, that said, again, the kill goes to Crystal Maiden and it doesn't go to the Morphling. I would be upset. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiance top tower is under it. Radiance top tower has fallen. Ah. Finally, has his brown boots up on Rubik. He really does need those. Zhuo eight. Now with 1,570 gold. Ferrari has two deaths, so he's looking pretty fucked. Um, not exactly rolling around in CS either. I'm willing to bet that even even the Sanking and the Lush have comparable amounts of stuff as him. <laughs> they throw a sentry down now on Radiant to try to get aggressive on the Morphling, who does have Ghost Walk. In fact, he's so afraid he has Ghost Walk on his fucking bar. That's how afraid he is right now. YYF went for Tranquils, and he does have that track now. And uh, he's picked up his farm actually a really good amount. I'm very surprised the Bounty Hunter has this many last hits against a Tide Hunter. Not a very good lane for the Bounty Hunter. Especially considering the Tide Hunter has been bottle crowing. It's actually very surprising. In the blink of an eye, Bulba doubles his farm. <laughs> Chuan being really, really patient here, hoping he can get a Rubik, but... Bulba doing a good job of just sitting at the tower. Honestly, people joke about how Bulba is, uh, you know, 0-0-0 or whatever, but the reality is that if Bulba tries to do anything in this lane, he's just going to feed. And what he's doing is he's just playing really back. And he has a teammate coming. And oh, here comes Swan. But just wow, no ultimate. And that's a lot of experience that Rubik desperately needed. It's actually a really good TP from him. Although they didn't have a stun, so he actually could have just TP'd at any moment in front of all of those heroes and still been fine. But hey! Alright, Mr. T. Dota. Noted. I wanted to treat the game seriously. I really did. But then it was an EG game. And this is where the track gold is going to start to get somewhat annoying. Is Milk gonna big dick up? We'll find out. Oh! 
cold snaps. At this point, Bulba is better off just trying to be a part of the fights. He has not a lot of farm. Um, but he can hit level 6 if he's part of a fight that's favorable. That said, if he gets killed, he's in really, really rough shape. Fear is actually going to finish his treads. Um, Fear is, has done an F-Blade rush in virtually every single game that he has played a Morphling. But this game, he's not looking as farmed as what he may have liked to be. And YWF is going to get dope, but it's going to be fine. Bulba doing a blast with a little bit of damage in. Sankey not able to actually disjoin it. And this is actually very surprising to me. Uh, where has Zhao's money gone? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower. Yuji actually picks up a tower. And the gold lead isn't really substantial for either team right now. Pretty even overall. It's very, very slightly for EG, but not enough for it to actually be notable. And they can't defend this with just these three heroes uh, against four. Especially considering these are the three poorest heroes on IG. Level four, level four, level eight. So he's doing well. But Ferrari is very poor. Bounty Hunter is very poor. Lestrac is very poor. And Sanking is very poor. The only thing they really have going for them, actually, is that Silibear is very rich. But I have no idea where his money went. He had a lot of money, and then suddenly, suddenly no. Ooh, we're gonna jump in the blast and sure got shut down. And they're really hoping for a proc here, and they proc on Demon. They throw down the stun, they get the Janata. They track him up, and there's a black hole, hits a whole one hero, but and the whole team walks into it! Oh, China, no! The entire team walked into it. Oh, man. Oh, I know he's going for the... I know he's going for the Aoi 2000 uh, Mjolnir thing. But it's just like it felt like he had a lot more money. This Crystal Maiden may as well be promoted to carry status. Dominating? Double kill? Destroy the tower? Jesus, Crystal Maiden. That was a huge, huge, huge blunder, though. And that's got to really shoot up the gold graph from being nothing substantial, about a thousand, to being fairly notable. Experience pretty much reflects that as well. However, IG will have track gold going in their favor if they can actually get successful kills. Right now, YYF has not been a part of any successful kills. Lashrac, not really. Sanking, not really either. They also don't have a lot of tower gold, so they're very, very poor. And Ferrari's not doing too hot himself. He was dual laned on, he's 0-3. There's not that many CS. Silibear is doing well, but one of the things about going for the Aoi 2000 build is that it's great if your team is able to take fights, because it allows you to participate in these fights, but this game he may have been better off just going for a Radiance than it's supposed to be only. Just based on the fact that he could have a Radiance a couple of minutes from now in the lane that he had. But now he's doing a build that... It's like getting a Vanguard and an Animage. You don't farm as quick, but you're more useful in the short-term fights. Um, albeit this is different because it's actually really good long-term as well. But uh, the point is that doing this item build pretty much requires that you participate in team fights, and its success hinges on the idea that team fights work. And this is funny, he, he just runs fast enough to just get away from the smoke gank that he may or may not even know is coming. No, based on his meandering around, he probably is unaware of this. And suddenly, Radiant Team, they're spotted now though. He knows. He has to know he's not using his thing! Oh, that was a lucky sprout. Here they go. Two-man Burrow Strike. They don't have a Ravage. They don't have a Black Hole. This is the fight that IG needs. This is all the track in the world for them if they actually succeed here. And Faith going down to Bulba? Demon doing work. Sankin going in. Are they going to get the track from Mel? Okay, they get the track from Mel. Lundra gets the kill. They're going to maybe go for Demon next? No! Oh, they tracked the wrong one. Why track the Tide? Tide drops a Ravage. They drop a Dust. Bulba can go invisible at any time. That looked like a back and forth fight. They got the track gold for the Enigma. That's important, but they lost the Lone Jordan. He's the only thing that they have going for them right now.
Who won the first game? The first game was won by IG in a very convincing manner. Loba has his Arcanes, he gets a Bracer as well. Still has his Shadow Walk. It's a pretty good ability, lets him not die quite well. I actually think Bulba played his hand really well this game. Again, people were making fun of the fact that he had zero last hits or denies and was zero, zero, zero. But that's what you have to do. A lot of the time, if you're in an off lane that you can't win, like his, where you're up against a tri lane, just not feeding it. Um, had he backed up a little bit earlier, he would still have zero deaths, but uh, sometimes it's just really, really hard to prevent, I guess. Demon tracked up once again. Getting closer and closer to that pipe, but still not close enough. And the track gold has really, really benefited YYF. He's getting ever so close to drums. And Schwan gets picked up. That's probably a sandstorm. Bulba now gets tracked. Stealing track would be a really nice ability as well. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance structures are fortified. So I got bottom lane, there's a little bit of action happening. Or there should be. Fear maybe realizes something is up. All of IG is sitting there baiting. And he definitely knows something is awry here. You don't just tuck into the trees and hide if you don't think you're about to get smoke ganked. And with their ward in the back, they still can't see. EG gearing up to take a fight though. Silver, you don't want to get picked here. Invoker is like fuck it, and then he decides, oh shit, I should probably be here. There goes Silver's bear. He doesn't even resummon it. It was on cooldown, just barely. It's a hundred gold that he loses there. Hundred gold that goes to Melp as well. That has to be embarrassing. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. And EG is actually in a very commanding position in this game. Are they really going to do this? No, they just want to force TPs and back off. They can't actually think this is a good idea. Ooh, Bear getting angry. Is he going to get a proc? No, no proc. Yeah, they force the TPs. This is where they get out. There's no reason to stay. Especially not when there are two easy towers that you can take elsewhere on the map. Dyer's top tower is under attack. EG is going to push the much easier, more reliable target, the mid lane. Now this is smart too, because while they could very easily get top two towers, uh, by pushing the middle lane, this is one of the hardest towers, or not one of the hardest, but it's one of the harder towers to push rather. Dyer's much harder than the tier one top. But they raise their head and they want to leverage the advantage while they have it. So they know that they can get this tower with little to no contest. And after this, they'll probably look to just go top. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Because if you're ahead now, you can exert your advantage by just wiping out all of the enemy towers, and that's basically what they're doing more or less this game. Looks like IG is going to try to look for a trade, but Rubik TP's back, and ooh, Crystal Main doing a sneaky TP back as well. And Rubik does steal track, that's a very good spell to have, just as a whole, it lets your team get a lot of gold. Now well, the gold weed is pretty substantial in favor of the Radiant, but it's not something that you cannot overcome. Overcoming it just in time you get EMP. Bear does finally have its uh, Maelstrom. So far, Morphling really rich. Tidehunter Enigma, reasonable amount of farm. Lestrac, Sand King, poor as fuck. Middle tower Lone Druid, pretty rich. Bounty Hunter, and Invoker, kind of poor. But. It's going to be interesting to see tracks on tracks on tracks here. Regeneration. Dyer's top tower is under attack. 
Both teams should have a lot of interest in going down as many tracks as they can. That track gold is huge. Both of those, his track is going to expire soon. He's almost out. And there we go. No more track. Schwan isn't going to get a blink dagger anytime soon, especially if he doesn't get tower gold. Dyer's top tower is under attack. <laughs> Those Eidolons are going down. They don't have any fight left in them. I don't need a drum up on Bounty Hunter though. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Rick buys the drum recipe, you may be afraid of dying at this next push. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And looks like Tyner has his pipe now. You really do need the pipe of the mech to go high ground. Dyer's top tower is under attack. As this happens, IG looks for the trade. They get the trade bottom, and they maybe you're gonna put some damage in the mid. They lose the last Radiant's of their tier two towers, tower but they manage attack. to get a tier one for it. Which, while not a very good trade, they pretty much are forced to concede the tower anyways. They might have been able to get another tower mid, but they have to be here for that. Throwing up track, and immediately Bulba takes the track. Very, very good. Throws it right back down. There are three heroes that can escape by going invisible as well. YYF not able to be cute about his positioning. Pretty big tornado EMP. But all those arcane boots and that mech. Should maybe deliver his pipe though. It's gonna be a very important item for getting into that base. EG can potentially still throw this game. Well, the gold lead is fairly substantial. The experience lead isn't really that big, and this is a fight that can turn it around. The gold lead is largely propped up by towers and not by farming better, so. Dyer's functions are fortified. Put a lot of damage into this tower so far. They might be able to go high ground once they get it. As funny as it is, Enigma's Morphling Replicant was tracked up. This is just a filthy fucking track war over here. And the F-Blade! But he fucks up, he F-Blades first, doesn't actually go all the way through with it. They pipe up, they just say, fuck it, do it anyways. Top tower has oh, Demon's in a bad spot. Oh, Demon's in a terrible spot! Does he have a Ravage?! He has no mana! Let's get that bottle off! What the fuck, demon? Trying to throw? Fear's just laying into the racks down here. Oh, I think they're gonna get the racks. They can't prevent him right, right now, I don't think. They have to try, though. I'm grateful to you. And they get the racks. They're just gonna back out. I would imagine. They have no reason to they have no reason to hang around really. Top the thing is, even when Schwan actually gets his Blink Dagger, uh, it's not going to really matter that much. He's level 7, and he has a level 1 Epicenter. I mean, he has his level 4 Burrow Strike in the Epicenter, but the fact of the matter is that all of the Radiant Heroes have a lot of HP. They have a Pipe, they have a Mech, it's just... It's not going to be as game-changing as it would if he had it a little bit earlier. And again, with this Pipe and this Mech, it's very hard to slow the sound. Everyone has to evacuate when the EMP comes out. But this game is looking like it's gonna be EGs. And that's the F play. And here's the Epi! And he gets it. No blink dagger, he manages to get the Epi off. Doesn't really matter, and that's a huge black hole. That is a very, very big hole. Complete wipe it should be. And that, that has to be GG. And there it is, that's GG. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I, like, I think that this game, Bulba was probably the MVP. I think he played his hand better than anyone. Uh, just in regards to um, doing what he needed to do to win. I mean, his lane was fucked. There wasn't a lot that could be done about that. But he manages to pull it back. So that was really good for him. I will be right back.
Actually, actually, the thing here is they had both Ravage and Black Hole. So even when IG were standing there, YYF, YYF, they're looking for ways to get in there. They're trying their best. To pr the problem is if they jump in there and they get Ravaged, a Black Hole's going to follow up immediately. So even if they bait a Ravage out, there's too much giant AoE on that team. Yeah, IG kept poking and prodding. They had the Tornado EMP, which they were trying to use to stall up EG, but the EMP was just too low a level, and it came back to that strong dual lane mid, which really slowed down Ferrari's leveling, and that, to me, was the key aspect. And then, well, Mal pretty much picture-perfect black holes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we saw Silibear. The, the general problem that Silibear had is we saw him picking up that Maelstrom. I mean, they hit it on the on the head. When you do, when you end up getting a Maelstrom and you don't get a Radiance and you committed two heroes in the middle lane to stop, you, they, they committed two heroes to stop Ferrari, which theoretically gives Silibear a free farm lane, but he ended up getting a Maelstrom. That's that's a death nail. You can't do that. Yeah, and we can take a look, actually, at one of the uh, black holes. Uh, there were two really good ones, one of them a little bit earlier. I'm not sure which one we're going to jump into just now, but I mean, it is actually by the racks and so this uh, is the last one here yeah uh the the first one was even more incredible but these are so good here so we get the initiation they they try and dive on him and the minute he sees the opportunity he drops the ravage here we're getting up to it pretty close here yeah, the also the stealing come. of the there tracks there's the ravage now sk like, jumps in there they think okay we've boom. got it the ravage is gone oh and immediately there's a black hole every member of uh, ig caught on that obviously bounty hunter wasn't there taking that a little bit earlier but yeah malks that combination just really worked out for eg but also they had that early game advantage just because of how they played their, their middle lane. But what was interesting to, to me, and I don't know if you, what your guys thoughts on it are, it's like uh, when you've got Rubik stealing track, yep. what, what use is Bounty Hunter now <laughs> without the farm? Because that's something really big. In, and then Rubik just took it away, and it seemed like a huge advantage in these fights. Yeah, I think that's a general problem with giving away a Rubik. Rubik basically uses your own team against you. I mean, that's what the hero does. You pick Gondar because you want initiations off of tracks to kind of counteract a big gold disadvantage. If, if Gondar is able to get a bunch of tracks and they get three or four or five kills, you can counteract all of those giant black holes with gold income. But if Rubik steals track, you, you're, you're done. And uh, Bruno, anything that we should know? Because Ferrari... He played the first game so great. He had a great game. He went on in his Invoker. Everyone's like, okay, Ferrari Invoker, GG. He hasn't <laughs> had the best Invoker this tournament, I'm sure. No, no, he's 8-on-8. Eight eight, but the thing was, he had a CM against him. And it was a carry CM. <laughs> Her finish is called four kills, zero death, five assists. I want to play CMs like that every single game. Sounds like a carry CM to me. Yep, it's legit. Did you not yeah. guys? Did you guys not see the rapier on it at the end? I didn't see a rapier. It looks a lot like a magic wand. Yeah, well they've updated no, it's some a... graphics and. Oh, okay. It's, it's I fine. see. Last minute rapier. They didn't even have a magic though. wand either. So. All right. So uh, EG actually now tying us up at a one-one game. Yeah. What? All what right, I am back. Thinking? What? What IG need to do? Uh, I think the big thing is always going to be the draft. I think almost the majority, 90% of these games have come down to the draft and landing of it. I mean, that game it was the strong jewel lane. IG need to expect EG to be working their way around shutting down Ferrari. Ferrari is the player to shut down in IG. Sure, they've got one of the best farmers in Joe. They've got a great side lane solo. They've got a really star-side lineup, but Ferrari's the player to shut down. He's the one Why that IG Seattle? always look to to carry them no in money. the game. Without him, they can't take they can't win the game. Yeah, I think you gotta ban ban Rubik. I think giving away Rubik is just a really poor decision, especially if you're gonna pick heroes like Invoker and Bounty Hunter. I like this Bounty because Hunter. these guys you can't play Bounty Hunter against Rubik. That just seems insane to me. It's almost like, yeah, once they had Rubik, they knew, oh, we can grab Leviathan, we can grab Enigma, we can do this crazy combo because we're not really afraid of them counter black holing us. Yeah, and uh, of course, kind of uh, over to EG. Holy shit. A lot of I like this team of these guys because they really don't really know. Malk had a great really game. Bulba still played <laughs> good. You know, he had a really tough lane when he was just playing Rubik all by him. It was lonesome for, for he was level one for the majority of the start of the match. Um, you know, finally got up, but it was really crucial what his Rubik was able to bring. So, what you momentum the in the draft, a team mostly. that's playing on home soil, that's surely got to be a big factor. Well, the crowd got right into it, and that's yeah. probably one of the most amazing things about being here at Seattle. Uh, the crowd are getting behind their home, hometown favorites, and uh, we'll see whether or not it helps EG get like through God's, three. I feel I like God's, God's knows what he's talking about. Loss like that. I feel like none of the other people one really do. Like at least 2GG is okay, entertaining as a personality. Well. Uh, this is what we're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen. He's cast enough games that he knows very well about. That yeah, he makes sure not to be I, I think IG's uh, a team, unlike LGD, LGD obviously have been perfect through this whole thing. IG occasionally does lose games. They occasionally give a game away, but... Uh, well, yeah, once. once. Well, okay, yeah, but I mean just historically through the past yeah. month or but, two. But I have to say, before we go back to the game, <laughs> IG is will probably basically saying the guys were totally wrong since oh, yeah. now IG hasn't really given any games game away. In the group stages, they lost from one, I believe. That makes things a lot harder to predict because it is a lot about momentum. Momentum Dota 2, and of course, when you're just
That game was a shit. Yeah, well, back in game one, I mean, EG in the pregame has started. Unconventional picks. They had something planned for versing. I pregame has began, so now we can leave Fat Guy to his own stupidity. EG's turn to ban. Mm -hmm. How convincing. Okay. So, IG realizes that they don't have first pick here, so that's good for EG. They end up banning out the Naga, and it looks like it's going to be a repeat of every single EG's other banning phase that's happened ban. thus far, where Invictus is likely to ban out Naga, Lycan, and Darkseer. Why? Because those heroes are so, so, so strong individually that no team wants to play against even a single one of them. No team wants to play against the Naga, no team wants to play against the Lycan, and no team wants to play against the Darkseer, so they're probably going to do the same bans they've done. <laughs> Before. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. EG just debating what they want to do for their last ban. <laughs> and they ban out Chen, so it's going to be a repeat of some of the bans that we've seen before. <laughs> EG's turn to pick. And very surprising. Now, like I said, this is going to be <laughs> bans that you see for the Dire throughout likely the entire tournament. Every single time a team gets second pick, they're going to probably look to ban these heroes out. IG's turn to and EG pick. immediately picks up Morphling. That's somewhat surprising. I mean, Morphling has been a really great hero. He's been picked a lot in the tournament, but at first pick Morphling is just something that we haven't seen in a lot of games. Morphling really the star of this tournament in general. And they pick up a Rubik and a Tide. Both very, very good heroes. That's the trade-off for allowing EG to get the Morphling. The thing is, Morphling, again, picked in almost every game this tournament. But there are so many matchups that Invictus can play against it. Uh, like, they can just pick the Silbert next. All they have to do is just pick a hero that uh, that is good in a game against Morphling. Like, any mage, Silbert, any number of, any one of those heroes. And they just have to usually pick it before the second ban, which means that they're guaranteed two really, really strong heroes. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I'd argue that the picking phase and the banning phase is one of the Reserve most important time. parts of any game. However, these ones have been... Uh, like, when the complexity of the picks and bans, they're very interesting, and it looked like Fluff and Stuff apparently spent a lot of time uh, researching what he wants to do, whereas... This game is just, uh, in these last couple of games, really, have all just been repeats on the picks and bans. Like, IG is going to pick up either, like, a Silibear or an Invoker. Uh, EG may pick up Lestrac, they may pick up uh, Sand King, they may pick up any number of heroes right now. This is where they have to decide what strategy they want to commit to, uh, pretty much at this point in the picks. So the only thing that has a huge variance right now is what EG wants to do, uh, at least for the immediate picks. Time. And they pick up bounty Invoker hunter. and Bounty Hunter, so they don't want to let their Bounty Hunter get IG's fucked with. They haven't been able to get their Bounty Hunter any of these games, but they finally just decide, fuck it, we'll pick it now. So now they have their three core heroes, really. Um, they've really shown their hand here to be able to get what they want. And we'll see what IG wants to do. I would imagine they'd look towards the Silibear, but they could do something else too. They're in no rush to pick the Silibear unless they just really, really don't want it banned. But the Bounty Hunter pick is really, really important here. Ten just because three. normally this would have been banned out in the yeah. second banning phase. And Aluna! Holy fuck! What the hell? EG's turn to ban oh man, I did not see this one coming. That is surprising. I had no... I had completely, completely random pick. I mean, I did not see that one coming at all. There's no way I could have predicted that. <sighs> a million dollar tournament, they bust out the Luna pick. This, this is going to be great to watch, just because Luna is such a good farmer, and the Chinese are so good at farming. I like Luna a lot as a hero, um, but I can acknowledge that it's not the best hero. However, again, Luna able to get a lot of farm if she does uh, certain item builds. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. 
Isn't it bad for this level? Not particularly. At this level of play, they can do a lot of strategies. I would imagine that in general, EG probably doesn't have a lot of experience playing against Luna, whereas IG probably has a player on their team that's very, very comfortable with the hero. So I've played her twice before. Zhuao Luna. Yeah, see, there we go. I guess Zhuao has a uh, comfortable Luna. And a TA gets banned out. They don't want to let Ferrari get TA. Ferrari, known for his Invoker play, also known for his Templar Assassin play. He also plays a decent Tinker as well. So they just ban out all the heroes that Ferrari likes. And their second phase is banned. Last ban over here for Invictus. Probably going to be looking to ban out those Trilane supports if they want to go that route. Uh... Enigma technically falls under that category in the sense that he will be a part of the Trilane, albeit he will just be jungling mostly. And that's another Trilane support hero, EG's SK, that they decide to ban out as well. So now EG's left with a couple of options. I would assume they would maybe pick up the Venomancer. We'll see if they opt to go that route. Venomancer and Crystal Maiden being the two heroes I would expect to see. Um, picked up for EG at some point, maybe not immediately, but... The Shrek. And they pick up Lashrac as one of the Trilane supports. IG's turn to pick. Hmm. Not bad at all. Not exactly what I saw coming, but... Makes fun. Probably likes Rubik? I didn't know. And Invictus has a couple of options here. Um, depending on what they want to do with Rubik and Tide. Rubik and Tide are a little bit more versatile than heroes like Crystal Maiden are. And Venomancer, and that they don't really have to be a Trilane support or anything. Tide can, he can also offlane, Rubik can, he can also Five mid, he can also remain. offlane. You can do a number of things with a Rubik, and you can do a number of things with a Tide Hunter, so. Reserve time. Venomancer. EG's and time that's the Venomancer pick. pick. And this leaves EG with not a whole lot of options, maybe a Crystal Maiden, but they can do a number of things here as well. I'm just willing to bet it'll be a less farm oriented hero. Just in general. Probably something to go with that Lashrak Morphling. Most likely a reliable stun or disable, like Crystal Maiden or Vengeful Spirit. Ten seconds remaining. Notably, Rubik, also a very, very good hero against uh, Bounty Hunter, against Lashrak, Five and against Morphling, remaining. especially Morphling. Waveform has an excellent ability to steal. Very, very good. Um, and obviously, Morph time. Strength is one of the best things you can steal as well. SD, SD, SD? Okay. We'll see if they go for the Shadow Demon, but uh, some teams like Shadow Demon more than others. Maybe EG will go that route. Uh, I know that Malice really likes it in some of the European teams. I don't think EG Ten actually picks up remaining. a lot of Shadow Demon, but Universe does often play it. Five seconds remaining. I would Crystal imagine Maiden. it's going to be a Crystal Maiden, yeah. I was honestly going to go ahead and say the Sam as a whole, but... SD seemed like it'd be fairly reasonable, but the thing about Crystal Maiden that makes it such a special pickup is that it gives you more options. Like, you can put your CM Morphling in the middle lane. Um, you can also do a CM Morphling Lashrac. So, it just makes it a really, really nice uh, pickup because it makes your lineup and your intentions a little bit less clear. Like, anytime you can force someone to completely sift their lanes, like Complexity had to do, it's good. Five seconds remaining. And Chinese, people are mentioning Queen of Pain. I would imagine Queen of Pain would be Reserve something they could time. look to. Uh, Chinese really, really like their Queen of Pain. It would actually be an excellent pick here, but I don't know if that's exactly what they're going to get. They have a number of options as well. I'd imagine it'll be some sort of mid. But, again, they don't have to. I think Invictus did a very, very good job on the picks here. Save for maybe the Luna. Night and it's a Night Stalker. See? Surprising, but... Not bad. Night Stalker, a very, very scary hero against a lot of these heroes that are on Evil Genius' side. This should be interesting to watch. Oh boy, I like watching these Night Stalker games. I've actually haven't seen Ferrari play Night Stalker before either. And this synergy, too, between the Luna Ultimate and the Night Stalker Ultimate, or Night Stalker Nighttime, rather, is something you don't really see a lot. In fact, I've never actually seen it in a serious competitive game. Looks like Milk and Universe deciding which one of them wants to play which. 
Milk ends up picking Lil Shrak, the universe on the Crystal Maiden. Prepare for battle. Okay, already a smoke up on Milk. Universe buys and then sells his items. And they're gonna be running for that war. They might bump into one another. But, uh, you could look Sean Boy. Oh, demon. Oh, man. <laughs> what a badass. Now, Bounty Hunter's run speed really high. He's gonna pull in front of the pack here, but he can also, uh, most importantly, just use his, uh, Shadow Walk when he sees the enemies. And here he opts to Shadow Walk and check for the rune to his and walk into a hill. And here comes the entire Dire team, though. So it's going to be Ferrari mid, just based on his item build. YYF is going to be farming in the offlane. And Joao is going to be farming as well. With Schwan and Faith to being the supports. Probably going to be supporting the Luna. Well, Tide farms in offlane. So it's going to be Bulba mid. I'm going to go for the Quaz Wex build, just based on his item build. Universe and Milk are going to be bottom, supporting the Morphling. Fairly predictable. And this is going to be a very interesting dynamic for a tri-lane, though. I feel like Crystal Maiden, Lashrak, and Morphling, placed in the safe lane as a tri-lane, handily beats out Rubik, Luna, Venomancer. Like, easily, easily, easily. So I'd be surprised if IG actually stuck in this lane, because they're forcing the issue, but I feel like their tri-lane is weaker. But, at the same time, based on item builds here, you can immediately identify that Night Stalker's going to be going mid because he's doing that early bottle build. And also that Tidehunter's going to be going top because he has a stout shield. And it's going to be a Tidehunter up against a Bounty Hunter too. Which, as we saw last game, is really, really nice for the Tidehunter. And this is actually kind of funny to think about too. Because last game, it was YYF on the Bounty Hunter. And it was Demon on the Tide. Luna's base damage is really high. Um, obviously, that comes down to her uh, Lunar Blessing. But one of the problems, though, in a tri-lane dynamic is that Luna's kill potential is... It's not incredible, but her ability to, like, Lunar Beam someone and then have that person get gilled and then go back in for the kill, six seconds later, is pretty good. But still, the action is really going to be happening on the tri-lane. There's no potential for anyone to die over here. And ooh! Ooh, are they switching it up? Are they moving their lanes? The battle begins. Huh, it looks like they're switching their lanes. Demon is instead going to be going bottom. Haste. Haste of Venomancer, so that's a scary hero. Yep, and they're switching it up. And this is one of the things that having a Crystal Maiden Morphling lets you do. You can stick CM Morphling mid. Ooh, and they're going to try to get aggressive on Ferrari middle. I don't know if they can actually first blood this, though. Especially with the creep block here being a little bit worse. Oh, they go for it anyways! They're going big! And I think they can... Yeah, they got this for sure. And that is first blood from Morphling. That's huge. However, both Universe and, and Milk had to take a lot of damage for that. And immediately, immediately IG responds by sticking their Venomancer in the middle lane. But they've already been put into a really awkward position here. And Luna is going to get free farm. Um, she's missed a couple of these last hits so far. But she's still going to get a lot of farm in this lane. Bounty Hunter, on the other hand, is going to have a rough time. He's not going to get a lot of farm. He's going to get levels, but he's not going to get a lot of farm. But he's in the safe lane, they don't have, they don't have sentries. He's, he's going to get levels, and that's what he wants. Um, that said... The Tide Hunter is not in a happy spot with this matchup either. So far, zero last hits. He gets one, but this is an advantage that's favored for the Invoker. So, so far for the lanes, EG is in a very favorable position, in my opinion. The Crystal Maiden uh, Venomancer, or Crystal Maiden Morphling, is so much stronger than Night Stalker Venomancer. This is why. This is why he didn't even have to surge there. Imagine if he would have surged; uh, it would not have been a kill. 
but you can just see the amount of damage output that this lane can potentially have. And also with that first blood, it makes it makes this look really bad. So top lane is favorable for EG. Middle lane is favorable for EG. EG has milk farming the forest too. And bottom lane, Demon's going to get experience. So every single lane is in EG's favor in my opinion. That said, Luna's going to get farm bottom. Uh, Tidehunter will get some last hits. He won't get as many as Invoker. And Night Starker will get some last hits, but he won't get as many as Morphling. Why does Stout Shield mean top lane? Uh, Stout Shield means top lane for the Tidehunter because if he was tri as a support, he wouldn't get a Stout Shield. He would get other items. Uh, he would probably favor more supplies or a lot of strength. Whereas if you're offlaning as a Tidehunter up against a ranged hero, like, uh, well, he wasn't actually expecting to go up against uh, the Invoker, rather. He was probably expecting to go up against a Bounty Hunter. But it lets him be more aggressive with his anchor smashing and right clicking the enemy hero. And they're going to get aggressive top on top. But Bulba ends attack. up using his Ghost Walk, so he's fine. However, Ghost Walk costs 200 mana, so that's his pretty much entire mana pool blown because of the gank. And as this happens, they're going to try to use this opportunity to get aggressive on Ferrari, but they're not quite going to. I'm not going to go balls to the wall on him. Now that's a skill that you see too often. Um, these days, a lot of people are opting to max uh, Hunter and Knight without even getting a point into the silence until nighttime. And ooh, they're going to get aggressive on Ferrari, but I don't know if they can do this. They definitely can't do this. Universe. Not getting the CS. This is why he's gonna get right clicked a lot in this lane. Luna actually going for Tranquil is very interesting, but I guess she's in a lane where she wants to be able to sustain herself with that. And Night Sucker actually gets the Crystal Maiden on the mid lane with the Venomancer. I didn't expect that at all, really. And that's unfortunate for Fear, because it means he's gonna get left alone. Smart of him to kill the ward right there, but he gets unlucky, rune spawns bottom. Milk may sit on it, and he may grab it, or he may kill it. It looks like Chuan is very aware that the rune is here, obviously. And will he kill it? No, Milk Haste. gets it. Milk only level 2. He has twice as many branches as IX Mike would have at this point in the game. Denied. I would strength with Dramiashin to DKB. It's actually a really, really interesting item. Not bad by any means. It certainly uh, monopolizes on the fast run speed that Luna has and lets him be very, very aggressive in lane. However, it appears the demon has his poor man shield just based on the fact he didn't take any damage from that. 8 armor with an automatic 20 damage block on an attack. He even makes Luna auto attacks look weak. But he's getting all the levels in the world. Like, he's getting free, free experience, and that's all he wants from this, really. I mean, he's already up to level 5. He's not getting zoned out of experience at all. However, Rubik is still getting fine experience himself. A lot of denies upon Rubik as well. Venomancer with a dust. This isn't going to want Bulba to just go swap away again. However, Bulba definitely doesn't have the mana to go swap, even if he wanted to. And there's aggression coming down mid. Ferrari's going to drop. I fall like night. Dissolve you. And Fear having a really, really good time in this middle lane. Not only getting first blood, but also being given two kills. Crystal Maiden Morphling, powerful mid. Joe's max HP, really low, but... Not really at any risk down here. Radiance bottom tower Man, even that tower attack. looks like it tickles. Really, really strong. Venom answer, just... Every once in a while, killing the neutral camps. Just trying to, uh... Get whatever experience he can, whatever gold he can. Oh, it's nighttime. Night Shocker's caught out, but he shouldn't be able to get killed too easily here. Ooh, but they're going to go on him anyways, but they can't get him. As this happens, Milk just uh, farming the forest. He's the jungle of the Farms up his brown boots, though. That's really, really good for him.
And this is where the track build starts to come into play. Demon hitting his level 6 and immediately looking for kills. I like Demon's skill build here as well. He gets 2 points into the shuriken, so it hits for a significant amount of damage. But maxes his Junata. And it's nighttime, so Ferrari's gonna try to make his presence known. He's gonna try to go on bottom lane, but he's only level 5. They even bring their Tidehunter down for this, so this is pretty big, because they're letting Radiant Bulba farm. So they really, really want to get this tower. As this happens, though, Radiant's not really looking for any trades, they're just farming up. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Well, this farm actually fine, despite having a very, very hard lane. In fact, he's farming really well for the lane. Shall I get another ring of protection? He wants to stay protected. Chuan's still level 5. And they find Universe! Throw him back into it, he's dead. Instantly evaporated. That is just how you die. Ward also gets immediately killed. Ferrari using his clarity on Rubik. What a nice guy. Demon sitting around top. He should maybe be looking to get a little bit more of that delicious track gold for himself. Notably, he hasn't come into line of sight. It's nighttime, so they can only see about this far. Most people have 800 vision. And he pops his invis. They still don't know he's here. A little bit of a bait. And Tidehunter comes up, and all of a sudden there are four dire heroes here, so this could get really awkward, especially if he gets walks around and gets silenced. And Night Stalker's night vision obviously really high. So he will see everything that is going on right now. Chuan just really wants that level 6. He wants it very, very badly. Now, Demon, or Fear Radiant's rather, going for Treads. He's building the Treads top. using the plus 6 agility component. You can build Treads with any plus 6 agility component. And that is a sick Tornado EMP. And Fear's gonna get picked off here? Oh, he didn't even start the morph, but that was a wasted ultimate from Luna. He getting smoked. Or dusted, rather. Wasted stun as well. A lot of misplays happening. Night duration being pretty long. 10 seconds enough for Night Stalker to actually do work. I'm going to be interested in seeing, in seeing how this actually works during the second day, though. That's what I want to see most about uh, Jaws build. And then they're really good to the MP all over every single one of their heroes. Is he going to pay for it, though? Ooh, not quite. Oh, man. Universe and Mail really, really being aggressive. They pick off one. They get the Ravage off. And EG's still going to be aggressive here. There's no mana up on anyone. Chuan steals strength morph, but he's not able to morph everything. He doesn't have the mana for it. That's actually a really good play from the Rubik, though. Um, he realizes that the fight has gone awry. Finding the right opportunity to steal a uh, morph is pretty good. I mean, he wants to get it at some point, but you don't want to get it in the middle of a fight where stealing morph is going to be a detriment, because you're sitting there spending all of your mana morphing yourself to strength. And, uh... You're not stealing a useful spell that could benefit your team. Uh, so instead, he steals it at a time when doing so essentially guarantees that it doesn't affect the fight in Daya's any way, as the fight is already over. Is so that was, that was still good play, good presence of mind from the Rubik, despite losing the fight. Um, the gold lead and the experience lead are actually not that substantial for either side. Raiden is a very slight experience lead, but they're behind in gold. This is due mostly to, um, to towers. So the game could still go either way. The scoreboard is uh, means very little right now. Uh, the gold graph doesn't actually mean that much either. 
Notably, the Night Stalker is having a pretty hard game. I mean, what does he have on him? He has treads in a bottle. It's a stick. His first night wasn't that great for him, but it wasn't bad. Oops. Whereas Morphling, looking pretty good, rolling in that money. Demon has his drums, actually. That's surprising. He's gotten a lot of money since getting his track. No, he doesn't. Never mind. I was looking at Luna's items. I was like, holy shit, he... That, Jesus, Demon, that was insane. You really farmed up quick. And then I was like, oh, wait. No, Demon. No, never mind. Bulba having a really good time this game, surprisingly. I don't know if Bulba's actually going to go for Yules. I somehow doubt it, and he gets his track stolen. No! Oh, that was a great play. Instead, he just gets his Shadow Walk stolen. Really, really nice. Shadow Walk, not a worthless ability, but not a very good one. Um, okay, it's not, a, it's not even that bad. It's just that having Shadow Walk instead of the track when you're tracked is obviously not as useful. Nope, the king of edicting the small camp. He gets a point in Lightning Storm. I don't know why he did this, but... His mail. Level 1 Lightning Storm, not even worth casting, really. Hits heroes for 60 damage. Ravage is up. Illusion. Man, this Luna is so fast. They walked right by a dire sentry, or a radiant sentry ward, rather, so they know this is coming, I think. Ooh, they pick up Bulba. Maybe they didn't. Oh, great tornado MP! Oh, but a really, really important Ravage as well. Oh, but that's a good, good, good way for Morphling as he's trying to escape. Oh, no, he's dead. And Universe drops down an ulti, but it's a little too, too little too late. Milk's gonna try to run down Shwell. He gets him. Is he gonna get punished for it? No, he's gonna be fine. Edict also pulling the creeps to block the path. Shwell just TP's away. That was a pretty back and forth fight, in all honesty. They traded a Morphling, an Invoker, and a Crystal Maiden for a Luna and a Tide. Notably, that's a Luna that's been farming, so that's a very, very important pick off. Arguably the most important hero that IG could lose. And a Tide that was also a farming Tide. So they lost their two most farmed heroes. And as this happens, Bounty Hunter actually just kills Dynamancer out of the bait. Out of the base. Okay. Is he just gonna wait? He doesn't even have enough mana to go back invisible. Oh god! You fucked demon! He just buys the items he needs. He knows he's dead. No? No? Oh, oh, oh my god, demon, what the fuck? Wow, oh man, he walked up over here and thought he would have been in range of uh, anchor smashing this place. The worst part about that was that he had the presence of mind to realize that demon was probably standing here but just barely fucked up enough to realize the Anchor Smash wasn't in range. Like, that is ridiculous. Like, such a good play, that then gets just thrown away. Man, that has to really hurt. And Demon throws it all away. Daylight to protect you. Tidehunter says, fuck this, I'm gonna buy sentries. I'm tired of you, demon. They end up getting the kill on demon. Generation. Now we got Waveform, one of the best spells to steal. Huge range, really, really good mobility. Also great synergy with Faithful. Could pretty much pick off Crystal Maiden if he wanted to die for it.
And again, Ferrari, or not Ferrari, but rather Bulba, just picks up the Sage's Mask for a generation and doesn't build it towards anything. Something that J.O. is mostly known for doing. Do they go on Chuan? And he just surges away. They catch him with a tornado, but it's not going to be enough. It's so hard to kill a Rubik who has stolen Morph at some point in the game. Haste just flying around. They smoke up. I do not think that EG realizes this happened either. Are they going to go for the Morphling or are they going to go mid? It looks like they're going to go mid. Or are they? Morphling realizes something is up. Everyone's missing on the map. He's going for BKB as well. And are they going to find him? That's the question. He's in, a, he's in a position where he can surge away to a pretty decent spot. Also, what he did there was very smart as well. If you surge and you TP, um, in the, in, during the surge you can still cast spells and do other things. Um, so he, he TPs away during the surge. Christ, the torment. Doing that makes it so that any kind of single target stuns, like um, Night Stalker's Mini Stun, Rubik's Lift, Luna's Stun, all of these single target stuns, uh, They'd have to actually target his body, not where he's TPing from. AoE stuns can still hit where he's TPing from, but you have to target the hero with the single target stun. So they could have killed him, but they would have had to ravage for it, and that would not have been worth it. It might have been worth it, but it wasn't guaranteed, really, would be a better way to put it. And again, Trump picks up the crack. Pretty good spell to have. Harassment blasting. Tracks coming back and forth as well. And this is what we saw last game, just the battle of the tracks. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And Ooh, Universe lifted, but they managed to get him away, and by Universe I mean the mail, of course. And, ooh, he goes a really, really good combo there, that's really, really big. Is he gonna solo Zhao? No, Zhao has to ult to not die. And the ult actually wipes out the Crystal Maiden as well, he can blast the demon a bit. Oh man, that was almost so good, that was a really, really good play by Lashrac, but then all of a sudden it became really, really sad. Uh, Crystal Maiden stood just too close to the edge and ended up getting zapped by the ultimate a couple of times there. Demon even caught one. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Regeneration! And again, the gold is still relatively even, only 1,500 in favor of the Dyer, despite... Again, a lot of this is from Towers as well, so it's not as bad as it looks. And the Radiant has actually had an experience. And I would imagine that if the Towers were even, the Radiant would actually be ahead. So EG is by no means out of this. They're down, but they're not out. Again, this is 1-1 one, one right now. And a gem pickup by Faith. Really, really daring pickup. He's hoping that he can hold on to this. He died three times though. And now it's night time. This is where Night Stalker is hopefully quite happy. Is his BKB finished? I'm grateful to you. No, it's not. Ooh, big tornado. And it's Chuan. And Chuan is fucked. Ferrari doesn't want any part in this shit. But despite, again, being down towers, this is where Eiji's gonna look to even it up. Surprisingly, they're choosing to do this at, as soon as the second night starts. I guess they're gonna back off here. They baited out a fortify, that's really all they need to get for this to be a small victory. I imagine Fear's just going to leave. Demon getting a little bit up there, as is Milk. I don't know what they're trying to do here. I think they, they should back, considering that they don't have most of space. Who is now actually here, he tp They can't use their time at all right now because they've been tracked. So they can't be sneaky with smokes or anything. And 
And did Jal finish his BKB? Yes, he did. And BKBs have almost come up completely now. Uh, Ferrari is a thousand gold up his, and this is a very, very long rush. Like, they're trying to do this, but it's known. Demon drops his bottle. Gives it to Fear. Oh, huge EMP! That's such a great arrow of denial right there. And all of a sudden, this fight is looking like it's going to go in IG's favor. Oh no, Zhao fucks his ult up, but Fear! Fear, you were left behind! Use a replicate, bro! Oh man, he just stops. That's awful right there. Big miscommunication. Fear dies for virtually no reason. I wish I could see the player's expressions after that. And then I remembered that I can. My thanks. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Emotionless. I'm sure they had some reaction to that. Huge wasted ultimate for Muna. Also, though, uh, Fear waved in and everyone else backed up. He tried to go big. He tried to go home. Hmm. Looked and surged away. Muna now has an Aegis, so what was looking like it may have been a good time for EG to get back in is now again just a dead even game. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yes, IG is Inve Invictus Gaming, EG is Evil Geniuses. And it looks like they're trying to five man the top tower. Are they just going to backdoor it? Or are they just going to wait to try to do a bait here? They're just going to wait. They're going to wait for somebody to go to farm it. They know Zhao's going to be here. Zhao is all alone. And it looks like the entirety of the Dyer team is smoking up as well. They might decide they want to back out here, but let's see what they opt to do. And this could be potentially very awkward. Both teams would meet, but it's nighttime, and it looks like IG is quite ahead. Sitting the track illusion awkwardly within line of sight. And everyone on this team is sitting behind Luna. That was pretty interesting, though. EG wanted to do a smoke gank on Luna. But notice everyone was missing and decided not to. Maybe fearing a smoke gank of the enemies. Which eventually came out. Maybe not when they were expecting. Radiance top tower is under attack. Give me a DD. And they're just going to concede this other tower. Which they might. They can't really do anything now. No one is near. Fear is going for the BKB Manta throughout this game. Most likely. Radiance top tower this is a really, really good item. Oh. He doesn't have a TP though. Still no TP. And he forces two TPs back so the enemies can't push. So they have to back out. But Dyer drops a really, really aggressive ward. Let's see if they end up doing anything with that. Demon's still with a CD. I feel as though they might have been able to actually defend that, but... Probably not. I think they made the right decision just letting it fall. However, I don't know if they should let this one fall. This one, again, while I don't feel as though EG is in a particularly good position Radiance to actually defend, if attack. they lose two tier 2 towers with no contest, and if fear gets- OH MY GOD! Demon nearly gets picked up- OH MY GOSH, AMAZING BLINK! Oh, that is- that is terrible for Demon. That- that looks really bad. They can't defend this tower if they wanted to. They may even try to push base, but it's more likely the Morphin will force back a TP. And at this point, again, if he forces back a TP, they can't push. But Demon, oh boy. Now Luna farming up quite a bit faster than Fear. Look at the GPM. Luna pretty much going for a near similar item build. However, she's just farming it quicker. Dyer's top tower has been denied. She got rid of her killer though. 
Who already had BKB a while ago, now has the gem. Faith realizes he's probably not the best hero to carry it. However, he has not died since buying it. Tied still with the Blink Dagger. <laughs> Demon can afford his Yasha, and he does. He just uses the last few charges in this bottle and sells it. Gets rid of it. Now, still an Aegis up on Luna. So they may just do what they've been doing so far and just keep trying to take towers while they're ahead. EG knows that they probably can't take a fight. At this point, the Dyer has gained a fairly reasonable advantage, but again, the game is still very, very close for a game two. I'm not exactly sure if EG is going to look to trade here. It may be a reasonable idea, but with Lashrak and Crystal Maiden back at the base, I don't think they have a damage to do it. Nor do I think that Dyer would let them trade towers here. Which seems like not a decision you'd want to do if you're behind. Or if you're ahead, rather. You wouldn't let the, want to let the enemies trade. And they postured up a little bit, but then they decided no. And they decided they wanted to just go. Demon doing a bit of scouting with his illusions. Haste! Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And looks like they're gonna lose their bottom tower, but I'm not sure they're gonna actually be able to get top. Attack. If they can't get top, then they're in they're in bad shape. Radiant's and no, they can't get top. Mm, it's two TPs. Every hero that didn't come has a TP on them though. Except Rubik. And at this point, EG is down all of their outer towers, so they're gonna be way behind in gold. But again, it's not a lead that they can't bring back. It's 5,000 gold with three outer tower difference. That's... This is game three. Both teams are even. You can see right here. They uh, actually added that into the overlay. And that's a fairly important pick on Tide. Clearly, Morphling the superior water creature. For nothing really happening. They're probably just going to try to wait out the Aegis and not take a fight. They've avoided fights for this long. They can wait another three minutes, or four minutes rather. It'd be easier if they just put numbers. But Unless IG gets a good pick off, they can't actually push into the base that well. Break now with that level 2 track. Someone in chat points out. You're getting closer and closer to that Manta, but he's still three or four minutes away. So he's not really farming up a storm. As we go back to the base, get a bit more mana. And this is the making of a pretty annoyingly boring game. Uh, just because, again, both EG and IG know what's going to happen. EG's going to avoid team fights, and IG's just going to wait for Rosh to come back up. You wait for Rosh to come back up. I mean, they'll take a fight if they can force it. If they can force a fight, they're going to get it. They want to fight. They want to fight while this Aegis is still, uh, still up. And they're going to wait for Rosh, and then they're going to wait for the next night. But if they can force a fight against EG, they will. So they may look to do that. But if they don't, they're, they're comfortable going into a long game. Luna is farming a lot faster than Morphling, so... It's even possible that Joao decided to pick Luna entirely because he's uh, wanted a hero that's really, really good against Morphling, for one of the same reasons that Complexity likes to use their Tiny against Morphlings. So far, game is looking a little bit favored for IG, but not so much so that it's over by any means. 
And with the Blink Dagger on Tide, they can try to force their way into the high ground here. But overall, what they want to do is they just want to force a fight because the, the Aegis has one minute on it. And all of the EGTP's back, so this is going to be the fight that they want. This Luna is just begging to die. She wants it. She wants death. Maybe she's trying a little too hard catching that new charge. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Sadly, level 1 Chaos Meteor doesn't really do too much. Ooh, Nightstalker has a Reaver. Kind of surprised he's going for that heart. And they know that Rosh is about to respawn. I'm surprised they're just going to back up. It felt like they were really, really wanted to fight, but they couldn't get it. And that awkward moment is Bounty Hunter where you find yourself the victim of a tracking. And again, IG, true to a very, very Chinese team, just looks to farm up. Very, very comfortable with the prospect of taking a long game. Double damage. Lunar beams of creep, why not? Oh, she has enough mana to use all of her shit in a team fight, anyways. And EG goes for a really, really aggressive smoke here. And they're they're think that the enemies are in rush, but boy, are they gonna be shocked when they see this. Watch this. No, his smoke didn't break. They know that they're not there. See, the great thing about having smoke on the hero that's already in this is that you can check for the enemies without actually committing too hard. A lot of people think it's completely redundant and worthless, but that is not the case. Because you can know if the enemies are there just based on whether or not your smoke breaks without actually walking into the pit. Valkyrie getting closer and closer to a sheep. I am on the mend. Manta done on fear. Double it's a DD, that's an amazing rune for a morphling. He could be on the shrack. A lot of survivability on the Venomancer. Luna still with her uh, Manta and BKB. Not finishing anything else. Tied with the blink. Rubik with the force staff. Nothing stolen so far. He does have his level 2 ult. But you'd think that they would have tried to force an issue with the double damage on Morphling, just because uh, when Morphling gets double damage, since double damage only doubles the damage of your base uh, damage, and your base damage is affected by your base attribute, it's a really, really good rune to have on Morphling. And are they going to start it? Looks like they're going to try to rush. They've cleaned up any wards that the Radiant had, but Radiant is obviously aware that this is happening. There's no way that they could be oblivious to this, just based on the fact that everyone is missing. But they might have to just let it fall, but that isn't what they want to do. That can't be what they want to do. Yeah, they're going to show a fight for it, I think. IG kind of backing off a bit. This is what they've been waiting for all game. Both teams have just been waiting for this to happen. They kill the last ward. EG pressuring the tower just a little bit. IG doesn't want to let go of it. And EG may just decide to back off. I think that would be a smart decision, but... Fear really, really aggressive with this wanting to track people. And by fear, I mean demon. Fear decides he wants to farm top. Not a bad decision at all. He has a replicant out, so he can just join the fight whenever he decides he wants to. IG again, just checking Rosh. Does a ward down to make sure EG isn't doing it. EG throws out a tornado for line of sight. Wants to make sure that IG isn't doing it. And again, it's just a stalemate on the Rosh pit. It's it's very, very Chinese Dota E. And uh, looks like some weird artifacting happening around the replicant. It looks like the uh, animation effect for the glow on Bounty Hunter's weapons from his Janata is actually affecting things. Shadow decides, fuck it, I wanna go in. And if they kill this illusion, it's a pretty big deal. Because then Morphling has no way to occupy in the fight. He decides to jump in. And they get a turn into the EMP off, and this is gonna cause IG to wanna back off. They don't wanna fight, uh, back off out of the pit. They don't wanna fight or force a fight like this. But at the same time, there's not a lot that EG can do other than pressure the tier 2 tower mid to prevent IG from eventually rushing. 
It's a huge stalemate on Rush, and they know that either team who gets it is going to be ahead. Right now, it's a very, very even game. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Like Schwann wanted to find an opportunity to take uh, maybe Morph again, get rid of those 8 points of agility. But I'm sure he'll be happy with what he has now. And EG is backed off completely yet again. But once more, Morphling showing how annoying he can be with this Replicant up. Until a Sheep Stick comes out, they can't just Insta Sheep the Replicant and hope that Morphling will be unable to reoccupy the fight. Nice attempt by uh, Chuan to steal, steal track. But as this happens, again, Fear is just able to farm. He's slowly catching up to Luna because Luna has to be here. Luna can't leave. The more time that's wasted, though, the better it is for EG. Because Morphling is farming, and nighttime is slowly, slowly uh, leaving. And now they decide they want to go. Ooh, that's a pretty big pick. They can actually follow up with this. Oh no, Hi G is just going to be really aggressive about this. They have to force a fight here. Venom gets a really good ultimate. Ravage is also pretty solid. Fear is just laying into everyone though. This is huge. This is a great fight for EG. But Luna, as this happens, gets the fucking Aegis and gets out. So it was a good fight for EG, but the heroes that he killed weren't, uh, weren't that huge. Getting the Ravage and the Venomancer all to go on cooldown, really, really important. But... True to their Chinese ways, it looks like Big Money Luna just lets his peasants die for him while he finishes Rosh. He doesn't care about his team, no, he just lets him die. A real American team would have just fought. They would have, they would have, they would have never given up. No man left behind. Not these Chinese. But their overlords. Farm. He's right, the killing wasn't that huge. I mean, it was a really, really important fight. That kind of fight, would, like, uh, it really helps to define the game. Now that IG have the Aegis, EG is in a really, really bad spot. But EG has some room to move around while Ravage is down. So long as Ravage is down, they know that IG can't really take a fight. So they still have, like, another minute to just try to flex the map build they have. But after that minute ends, they're in a bad spot. I'm pretty sure the Jow has just completed a butterfly. <gasps> Sorry. And that allows him to right-click fight really, really well with Morphling. Also, a fucking Aegis. He doesn't need a buyout now. He doesn't need a buyout. He doesn't need, uh... He doesn't really need a lot. And now they realize the Ravage is coming back up. EG wasn't able to take a, uh... Third outer tower there. And this is good. This is really, really gonna be good for the Chinese. It's still nighttime. Ferrari bought something. I'm sure. Heart recipe, okay. But every single hero on the dire is getting so hard to kill. I'm gonna go ahead and say that IG is looking pretty well. However, it's still an incredibly even game, once again. But right now, Morphling can't right click fight Luna, and that's huge. BKB, Butterfly? Insane. And they know it too, they're gonna try to force this. Dude, that's a really, really nice meatball though. Erases those Luna illusions. Oh, he's not throw off the hill. Oh, come on. Big dick up, Rubik. What are you doing? He steals Shark and Toss. Not actually one of the best spells to steal. Fairly mediocre. Rubik gets his Blink. It's, not, it's a lot of mobility now for the Rubik, but... Based on the mech, they still don't have a mech. It's not pointless to have a mech at 40 minutes, it's just not nearly as good. Um, I mean, it's still probably the best item that Venomancer could go in this game, but again, it's just, it, it's not going to be as impactful for keeping your heroes up when everyone on your team has like 1500 life anyways. Pretty much everyone's sitting around 1400, with the exception of Luna, who has a good amount of life, considering his magic immunity and evasion. As well as uh, Night Stalker, who's just super hard to kill. 
I saw her really not farming that quickly, though. But he doesn't have to. He's doing what he needs to this game. I'm letting the Luna carry. Very, very, again, Chinese style where they center all the farm on one hero. But the the Radiant really doesn't have any heroes that completely shut down one hero that can sell the farm. The Fear has no TP, but he presumably has a replicant somewhere in the base. This is one of the nice things about Morphling, too. You can do this. If, you're, if you can't take a fight, you can just not fight. And Bulba may be getting picked here. Oh, good. That is very, very good that he didn't die. Demon with a BKB up now. They can look to go high ground, too. This Blink Dagger. He's not tracked either. They don't know where the tide is. Oh, Chan tries to throw back Universe. Universe gets picked off. Luna drops an ult. But every single hero is yellow. Everyone on Radiant is BKB'd up, and they can pick off the drop. There goes his Aegis. And oh my gosh, they're even going. Oh, Fear is running. He Mantas out. He mantas out of the silence, and he surges back to the base. Is he gonna get the? Is he gonna get the Venom with the illusions? Bit of a miss hockey there too. He grabs his hero with the illusions. Bulma, no. Mail, no. Oh, that pick on Mail. That pick on Mail and on Bulma was huge. They still have a fortify, but I don't think they can defend their axe now. Morphling finishes the Scotty, but that's really, really big. Ferrari, though, has his heart on the way, I assume. Dyer's bottom tower okay, now this is denied. this is really big though. Um, Warfling again, he has his Scotty, and for everything that Butterfly does in allowing you to right-click heroes simply based on the evasion that it gives you and the good good right-click stats, lots of damage, lots of evasion, lots of agility, uh, lots of armor as well. Scotty does a lot as well. Scotty lets you right-click people, but it, Scotty is better against helpless targets. Um, again, slowing the attack speed, and slowing the movement speed is pretty good. But it still lets him right click fight Luna a lot better than he was able to before. It's now daytime as well. And it's not gonna be a, it's gonna be a while before Morphling gets any stronger than what he is now. So they may as well try to make something happen. Oh, and she gets a Reaver, too. He's gonna be so hard to kill. Fear gets picked up, and this is like a desperation push from EG. They know the longer the game goes, it's not gonna get any better. Their spells are down. The Ravage is down. This is the best opportunity they have. Demon is gonna try to pick off Venom, and they're not able to get him. Oh, they finally get him. They blast him. Oh, and here comes, here comes Tide. A good, good, good deafening blast, though, from Bova. Might slow things down a bit. Oh, but Night Sarker still just gonna run him down. He gets picked up. Is he gonna get silenced? He's silenced up, and he is... Oh, he gets four staff away, though. Tron's in a really weird position, but so is Universe. And Universe is so fucked. Oh, Universe, you pathetic son of a bitch. Oh, your IX mic level now. But they only get Universe in the back up there. That was a really, really desperate measure by EG, though. Incredibly desperate. They realized that the game is just going to get more and more one-sided. Um, and they realized that Ravage is down, so they might be able to do something, especially if they can get a pick, but... Now, shit is looking really bad. He decides to go for a Satanic. There is absolutely no way that Morphling is going to win a right-click fight with this Luna. Um, when you get a Butterfly and a Satanic, you're one, you're a farming machine. I mean, look how much she hits for. She's super hard to kill. I mean, she hits for 281 damage. She also has Mantas that get a good amount of that damage. She has Magic Immunity on the BKB. Still an 8-second BKB, despite going such an early BKB. She's barely even used it at all. Uh... And the butterfly as well. Again, it's just so easy to not die. And she opts to sell her boots and pick up treads for the late game. This is smart too. She disassembles so she gets the most money possible out. They both give her mana. And now she has treads so she's more able to right click fight with the Morphling. And this is pretty much all that Luna's build is designed for. I commented earlier at the start of the game uh, that they probably picked the Luna. Uh, because one, one of their players is comfortable. And two, just as like a, a way to deal with Morphling. Sort of like how Complexity has their Tiny to deal with Morphlings. Um, because right now, the two heroes that you most commonly see picked against Morphling are Syllabare 
and uh, Animage. But this also this opens up uh, a couple more different options, I suppose. But at this point, Morphling is just so much weaker than Luna in these in these right quick fights. Also of note, Luna is going to have a really easy time killing supports, whereas almost no one on the Radiant side is actually easy to kill. Uh, Lush is kind of easy to kill if you right-click hard, but he's actually he has a BKB, so he's reasonably difficult. Uh, so I guess I'm completely wrong. Uh, Lush is actually really tough to kill. Demon is somewhat hard to kill, but sort of like Lashrak, he drops really quickly to right-click. It's not so much spells and such. Fear is obviously going to be hard to kill. Uh, Universe is like a free kill for anyone. And Invoker is sort of in that brand, in that in that same category as the rest of the heroes, where he's not that hard to kill. Um, Venomancer has a mech, so he's more difficult to kill than most of the heroes in Radiant. Tide has a pipe, 1400 HP, and there's a mech in play. And Luna is just a... Luna is going to be impossible to kill, and Night Stalkers are going to be impossible to kill. And due to how these heroes work, this lets them force their way into fights really aggressively. Like, Night Stalkers had this BKB forever, too. And look how passive the Chinese are about their BKBs. He's had this BKB for so long. He went Treads BKB, and he's only BKB'd once. Luna, still 8 second BKB, so he's only used it twice. Look at Fear, 7 second BKB. This is in almost every engagement. Demon, 8 second BKB. Mail, 7 second BKB. Big Ravage! None of them get their BKBs off. Oh, this is looking really, really bad for EG. Fear is going to drop for sure here. He cannot stand up with this Luna in terms of right click fights. And the Glaives actually kill this track. Boba tries to run, but there's a gem in play on Rubik. Boba is fucked here, he's gonna try to make his last stand. And Fear's gonna get away, but... Again, the sole survivor. Everyone in EG is so relatively hard to kill for the heroes on IG. And this is also a Luna who's playing for the 6th slot too, these type of items. Manta, BKBs, Butterflies, especially when you save the charges of your BKB Satanic. That's... This is a, this is a Luna who's playing with the long game in mind. What's the draw between AC and Heart? How do players decide which benefits you most? Um, in general, Heart is going to give you a little bit more survivability most of the time, especially if you don't have a lot of other items. Um, whereas AC has a lot of benefits to the rest of your team, though. AC also makes it harder to kill, gives you a lot of right-click fighting. But uh, in a game like this, the Night Stalker's goal isn't going to be to be a very strong right-click fighter. It's just going to be to be able to get into the thick of team fights and force people to waste spells on him. Like, uh, obviously you're not going to try to bring down the Night Stalker first in any engagement. But the thing is, uh, you're going to be forced to blow some spells. Like, Crystal Maiden will have to Frostbite the Night Stalker who just runs up on I'm surprised he didn't go for an Agus, though. But again, this is IG playing for the late game, where the heart is going to be better for the GG push than uh, an Agus. And IG Zhao just pops his BKB, tries to get the tower, but isn't able to. And he gets it with Glaives, so he's fine now. They can go high ground on the next wave. Swan does still track, but he's... Mm, I don't want to get too aggressive with this. At this point, IG is pretty firmly ahead. But not so much so that the game is unwinnable, but so much so that at this point, it's fair to say that IG is quite ahead. And it would be hard for EG to win. Whereas the rest of the game, it could have gone either way. And, oh my god, Universe 9 to fucking Glaives! These Glaives alone are a nightmare. Look at this. He's destroying fear with Glaives. Universe, again, just getting fucked by Glaives. Anywhere he goes, he just gets Glaived on. They all have to go back because of fucking Glaives. Oh, are they going to try to just GG it? All that damage, maybe. And look at how abusive these Glaives are, just climbing between the huts towards the heroes. Demon again has to heal up because of fucking Glaives. On heroes like Kunkka, a heart would be better than an AC, albeit none of those are items that you get until the super late game. Heroes like Silver, obviously you wouldn't be looking for a heart until like ultra late game, whereas an AC gives you and your bear a lot of benefit and helps to give your team a lot of utility. But anyways, Luna 7000 gold, really no way IG can win this. They tried to just end the game uh, the big dick way, but now they're going to go the small dick route. They're going to just go and ooh, that was a really, really good deafening blast into Meteor! Oh, but they're not able to get her. She has the Satanic, too. She can just heal up. Oh, she's just gonna, she's just gonna pop the Satanic? Is she gonna Satanic? Is she gonna, you're gonna Satanic, you dumb bitch? Do you, do you even need the Satanic? 
doesn't even need a satanic. Oh, you fucking whore. Fear and Bulb are gonna barely make a way. And Bulba maybe not so much. And this is where Eevee loses the game. She shouldn't even need to satanic that fight. 7,000 gold, she could buy whatever the fuck she wants if her team is still in. And that's it, this is how EG falls down to the lower bracket, along with the other American teams. Complexity. If I were this Luna, I would kill one more hut just so I could say I ended the game in the International 2000 gold. There, or 10,000 gold. There she does it. She gets 10,000 gold. The farm machine. And it was a really even game until the last couple of minutes there. That last Rosh fight. Where Lina got the Aegis, and the fights that followed immediately after were very, very good. In the end, there, Lina farming up a fuck or Luna rather farming up a fucking storm. Really, really hard to deal with any hero that has that much farm. And I wonder if we're going to see Luna get picked as a counter to Morphling from IG in more games. Hopefully, we do. It's a really, really interesting pick. Morphling's feeble attempt at being able to right-click fight with Luna was getting a helm of the Dominator, which is smart since the synergy with. Viking Bar and etc. Just not nearly enough though, there's no way he could have won a right click fight.